nerderotic.com. What's up, everybody? Wait. This What's is up? the last Friday Night Tights we can grift off of Az's death. So send <laughs> Super Chats. Yeah. Send Super Chats. R.I.P. Az. R.I.P. Uh, Az. His, his ghost has shown up a lot, though. But uh, yeah, not Keeps around haunting here. us. Yeah, not around here. Everywhere else. <laughs> He's but been literally here. everywhere but FNT. <laughs> <laughs> Just so pissed off at like Doctor Who he revives. He, he yeah. comes back. <laughs> he, he, he retweets almost everything I post now. <laughs> like, when you were alive, you didn't do this, you bastard. He, <laughs> oh, he has more free time now, Jeremy. That's why. <laughs> did, he, did he mention to anyone how he wants to be buried? If it's like at sea or cremation or on the beach i believe he said he wanted to be buried in a transgender woman's tits uh, <laughs> sounds accurate we will respect his final wishes welcome to the final fnt of 2023 we made it wow oh, what, a year. Yet. what a year what a year it has been holy wow. crap it would be a eight hour show to go over all of our victory laps to be honest with you yeah, but we can go over a couple for sure. <laughs> I'm totally open to it. So we will just get started. We have a lot to talk about. There's we have we have the most anticipated Marvel show of all time to discuss. Uh, two new trailer or two new clips released today. So we'll go over those. Uh, we'll go over the fall of woke Hollywood. We'll go over our top five worst things to piss off Steve Weintraub. It should be fun. Hi, Jeremy. <laughs> Hello. Uh, ready ready for the final FNT of 2023. Been an awesome year, mainly because of the amazing audience. So let's get this party started. I'm ready to rock and roll. Hell yeah. We have Ryan Kennel from RK Outpost. What's up? Not much. The last FNT of 2023. I don't know if you can tell by the look on my face. I'm very excited. Uh, so let's let's get into it. Let's do it. <laughs> You know, yeah, that's that just what it flows from your uh, happy face there. The all the excitement, enthusiasm. Are you still sick? You know, I thought I was over. Oh, right, I am still sick. I've still been fighting this fucking fever. This is the third day now where I've been like having to take Advil to keep a fever down below 100 degrees. So maybe I have HIV. I don't know. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say, maybe you got AIDS yeah. from ass. Well, we did just come back from Turning Point, USA. So yeah. I know. <laughs> I hear a lot of things. That's true. <laughs> I, I stayed away from that, though. Well, Chrissy had some weird language for Ryan. Send me the webcam stuff back. Is I what borrowed yeah, his that webcam was while I was live streaming. Because mine was true. made by Fisher Price. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Chrissy, had to, Chrissy had to borrow, like, everything. from. I, I didn't even have a setup there, but I just happened to have a bunch of, like, spare. I had a webcam. I had a fucking cord. All of Chris's equipment is literal fucking dog shit. Like it's <laughs> awful. It's uh, we we had to, man. How should I put this? Pretty much everything in our booth had to be the American Society of Magical Negro yeah. rigged. Rigged. Like, that's, how, that, like, that's how it was. The American Society of Magical Negroes. 
<laughs> so, but we worked. Yes, we got it. everything we got it was going. held together with hope and food stamps. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, we're Thanks. starting this one out great. BBT cards. <laughs> <laughs> to be Maybe. fair, it's a little toned down from even before we started. Like Gary was asking Chrissy to put things between her boobs. Yeah, like, it was, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. You know, and, yeah, <laughs> so no mics. Yeah, no I mic still want those this. assembled. <laughs> wasn't asking; it was more of a suggestion. Like because she didn't have her microphone arm. <laughs> just... I'm not sure that makes any better. <laughs> <laughs> Chrissy, can you put that between your boobs? Oh, yeah. It's a lot worse than what you said. <laughs> oh, no. uh, now I'm in business. That's a, that's a, that's a great way go. to put it. Yeah, it was Chrissy's, just, do, Chrissy's doing everything she can to get on a calendar. Oh, next year. Yeah. oh my God. <laughs> it's going to be my year 2024. <laughs> Somebody explain yeah. that shit there's, to me. The, finally, the time when there's a conservative women's calendar is like the time in my life I should not be anywhere near a calendar. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, you should do a podcast calendar. What I have to do? Yeah, what a squirt amniotic fluid to get into the damn calendar. What's a gal have to do? People were complaining there weren't enough babies in the pictures. So, you know. Oh my God, that was so hilarious. Oh, man. Jesus. Hi, Carter Black Garrett. Yo, it's nice to not be on Twitter. I, I got on for like two seconds just to see what everybody was doing for the new year. And uh, they were like, conservatives are mad about a calendar. I was like, all right. I'm Boogie's gone. pulling out his, his uh, FUPA. I'm out. <laughs> uh, his, his, what is it? It's me, his meat packet. Oh, that was apron. His meat That's sensor meat bar. His meat yeah. apron. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Apron. yeah, so uh, yeah, Twitter's just as bad as it was when I left. Uh, it's great to be great to be here. It was a great year, fantastic year, a lot of fun stuff. Went to the UK, saw a lot of you guys out in the chat and uh, in real life. And uh, Hollywood is burning because they did all the things we told them not to do. So it's been pretty good. Oh, well, uh, we tried to warn them, and now they're paying. They're the ones who like to say consequence culture. Just point oh, it out. Yeah. Yep. They're mm -hmm. experiencing I don't, I don't know about you, but uh, they've been doing exactly the things I've been telling them to do recently. So this is what. Oh, I'm well, yeah. yeah. There, see, there's a there's a point where you tell them not to do that. And then mm -hmm. two years, three years in, they're continuing to do that. You're like, all right, just continue I to do that. Do it. Double doing down. It and they've, they've been doing it and I've been loving it. And it doesn't look like they're changing. Like, oh. <laughs> they're projected. Give me Ray. 2024 is amazing. Make it happen. Echo is just around the corner. Let's now. go. Oh, Let's do it. Let's Acceleration. Go. <laughs> it's all about acceleration. What's yeah. up, Shad? Hello. Oh, uh, I'm hanging out for the acolytes, Gary. I'm hanging out for 2024. I'm hanging out for the Civil War. I'm hanging out for the destruction. <laughs> it's just let's let's go, baby. This is amazing. It's just so got... burning. Oh, dude, look what you have. Look what you have right there. That is that is a sexy looking book. Wow. Man. I've got a huge stack of Shad books. I'm gonna have to buy a new. Is that a, uh, is that a coloring book? It's a coloring book, yeah. Really? That's, that's <laughs> all I can read. Action Chrissy. coloring book, Chrissy. Action coloring book. That's all I can read, to be honest like with you. Oh, check out oh, that leather belt. That. That's the one. It looks nice. so oh. I'm assuming mine is still stuck in customs at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's the UK way. We do everything slowly. I've got a map. I got a huge stack. I got a huge stack. So, again, I need a new bookshelf. Well, I need a lot of new bookshelves. But thanks, Chad. I got all my oh, stuff. Mate. Thanks for I'm delivering. So high. Yeah, everyone sharing the books that they've been receiving on Twitter. I've just been, it's been so much fun. Very fulfilling. Uh, everyone's been loving it by the look of it. And like I said, I went out of my way to try and make the best quality tear books we could. And uh, people are noticing. So it's really good. You did. Excellent job. Uh, hello, Chrissy Mayer. Hello, I'm just now learning that Echo Chamberlain is not a born star. So I have to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> I have to catch up a little bit here. Um, happy to be here. I did an awesome one on one with uh, Mr. Jeremy here a few days back. Uh, oh, that also about... sounds like born. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that. <laughs> Mr. Jeremy. <laughs> yes, we uh, we talked about uh, is the right wing making any strides and in the arts and culture world and some baby as the steps as the, <laughs> as, as the calendar controversies in right. Twitter. And, and we talked about calendar gate uh, which, uh i'm amazed went on as long as it did but it's great to be here i'm excited to talk about our peaks and pits of 2023 
And I brought all of my pregnancy cleavage, so I'm ready. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thanks for doing that. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Race to a million, trying to beat Dan Vask any way possible, so anything <laughs> is truly appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, like an interview with him next week. He's like, I'm going to balance out the scales. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then we have Comics Division. What's up, man? Well, uh, you kind of stole my thunder because I was going to show off my Shad book as well. Oh, oh I thought you said you're, no. I thought you were going to say you're pregnant. Bring that up. Yes, yeah. my pregnant <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's, that's, that's I got news for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, they're using baboons uteruses now. So, yeah, there oh. we go. <laughs> I'm sure Peter will uh, like okay. that. Who's yeah, there? It's, yeah. Been it's been a it's been a crazy year and i'm kind of glad it's over with <laughs> and i am um, not looking forward to 2024 because it seems like it's probably gonna be a shit show too so it is uh, you just need to embrace it by now comics yeah. division <laughs> embrace yeah. embrace, embrace it and watch old yeah, content just, ah, i oh. do i do i i was actually watching uh police squad a couple days ago if you guys have not seen that is a fucking hilarious yeah. tv show from the 80s that spawned the naked gun series naked of gun. movies yeah. So just on that note, do you guys remember how like I got my kids off of the tree streaming sorry, streaming services and just gave them a whole bunch of DVDs to watch? Mm -hmm. That has been such an incredible success. I walked in the other day, my three year old, right, had put on Batman um the Dark Knight just on his own and he's sitting there watching it as like, that's my boy. It's gonna watch <laughs> random crap on YouTube. Because they I've curated their selection, they're watching Chad awesome stuff like friggin' Dark Knight and it's three years old. Yeah. And Some kids I'm, just want to watch the world burn. Yeah. I, you know, <laughs> yeah. Do you think he's watching it for Batman, not the Joker? That's the problem. Yeah. Everybody watches it for Joker. Yeah. Uh, and uh and my other son, he's just been watching Wreck It Ralph on repeat and is like, hey, I like that movie. Go right. right. to town. All of movie. And, uh, and seriously, like physical media, just re-embrace it, everyone. That's yeah. the way. That's I the popped movie. in I'm my great. Hellboy Blu-ray from like 2004, and it had all the cheesy intros and the in the trailers for old ass movies. And uh, I watched it with my son, and he was just like, just glued to the TV. He's like, "This is so cool." Hellboy was awesome. Um, yeah. God, yeah. It's true. Remember Hellboy. when you had when you had fucking advertisements for other movies? Yeah. And came with your fucking movie. Yeah. I don't miss. I don't miss that. Yeah. I will say. It was it was my favorite was the theft adverts. Like you wouldn't. Oh yeah. You car. wouldn't steal <laughs> this. I yeah, yeah. That you bought. That <laughs> was the piracy was, ones. Just cut it out. I was thinking about that because I was watching an older movie a while back, like older, like a '90s movie, and uh, I was thinking about the evolution of how it went from you would have all the credits and the stars and directed by. And how that eventually went away. And I was thinking about how YouTube has kind of evolved into that, where it used to be you do the intro, you'd say, Hi, everyone. I'm so now you do no intro, you just start. You know what I mean? There's no like, Hi, I'm so and so. And yada, yada. no, you just start the thing in yeah, the same usually evolution. It's, usually except it's, for FNT. No, no, yeah. Uh, usually, usually, yeah. Except for us. No, <laughs> yeah. usually, usually it's a, <sighs> I didn't want to make this video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I say that about every video. Uh, who, oh, people hello x-ray oh hello i'm so excited uh my brother is actually in the house right now he helped me move my piano in he's the one that introduced me to Mahler before i knew who Mahler was so that was kind of cool and uh i got to watch good movies this year because i watched a lot of old movies there is that go. the person whose facial hair you showed the yes. other like on twitter <laughs> i yeah, was wondering that was, that. that was brutal that was messed up what you did <laughs> For the stream, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was gonna say it either had to be like a relative of yours or like a generic fucking nineties like yeah. uh, kung fu villain, X-ray girl. Oh like uh, that's brutal. It's like Genghis Khan. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do him like that. Oh, he does it to say say f you to the army in a little sense. So you know. Uh, uh, X-Ray Girl's going to have an interesting top five list this year because there's a lot of movies she watched the first for the first time, like Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> that was like Jeez. my number one. <laughs> yeah. Was... Hey, good for her. She's trying. Yeah, just, just trying. Okay. Uh, back. He's been here all month, and we really appreciate it. Disparu. What's up, buddy? Oh, yeah, it's great. Um, just got the the um, the Doctor Who video out from the Christmas special. Um, oh, I, I kind of... It, it was kind of what I expected from the BBC. You know, it was a show all about eating babies. The most surprising thing about it was they were trying to stop it this time. So, um, 
It, 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 it was a really new thing for the BBC. Like to see they're venturing out into into new topics that they've uh, never or new positions that never considered before. They should have made the um, goblin look like Jimmy Savile. Well, I said it looked like Boogie in my review, so yeah, <laughs> I, was yeah, like, I was like, at least he's found a way to make money after his documentary. <laughs> Oh, that's brutal, dude. Yeah, there might I feel, be. Like, I feel like I feel like they're trying to. I feel like there's a little bit of an alternate like reason for them trying to save the babies. Maybe so they can do something else with them. Yeah. In the case of the new Doctor Who. So yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right at the start, they go. You know, babies the most in, important thing to all of society. This this is the most valuable thing that you can own. It's like, well, you know, five hours before you wouldn't have thought that, but now you know it's a brand new <laughs> brand new day for you. Well, unfortunately, it's still the thing you need straight people for. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, exactly. Uh, it's a drawback. <laughs> They're going to work their way around that, though. Uh, but yeah, I couldn't even uh, bless you for doing a video. I, I I wanted to ruin my my Christmas was going too good. So I watched it and it was uh, it was <laughs> <laughs> fucking awful. It was it, it was it, awful. It was as bad as Jody's premiere. So, uh, you know, well done. And the ratings show it. So. Uh, that was, I, it felt like this was a. I, I called it bedtime stories for adult children. That's what Doctor well, Who is just basically a turned into. Down on the timeless children. I mean, that's it. Yeah. Bye. Uh -huh. You're done. You're done. It's the the worst yeah. thing for me was that it, it took me like a, an entire day to get it through copyright, and it turned out to just be the singing section. So the amount of times I've gone through that section and heard that song oh, just stuck in my head now in a 24 hour loop. That reminds oh, me of uh, All Is Not What It Seems for the Witcher thing. I think I heard that thing like a uh, hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's still I, in my head. I had a I had an awesome Christmas. I woke up to my new channel being monetized, and I was so happy. And then I did a live stream. Wait, 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 wait. Another channel? And another channel. Jesus um, Christ. So I wake up to it being monetized. I'm like, oh, it's a Christmas miracle. We're going to go live and celebrate. So there was the glitch where when you get gifted memberships, it wasn't working. So I tagged Team YouTube to ask for help. And they demonetized the whole channel. Oh, um, <laughs> Merry like, oh sorry, we, Merry we didn't see that you had a monetized <laughs> channel. Or... Maybe I shouldn't have asked for help. Uh, for oh shit, is this guy demonetized? Yes, yeah, yeah, sounds like maybe I shouldn't have asked for help. Dude, I did get it. I got it fixed. I got it fixed. Weird stuff but... goes. They put the, they put it on vacation mode for a lot, and that <laughs> weird stuff does happen when YouTube goes on vacation mode. So that they was did weird. during the stream. They demonetized me during the stream as I'm like <laughs> tweeting at them to wow. go. Hey, can you help me out? <laughs> And all of a sudden, <laughs> sure. no, he, well, no, the problem is he got demonetized for reused content. And I told him they probably think every one of these streams is the fucking same because all you do is play Fortnite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what it, what, ultimately, what it comes down to is, uh, and this is for any YouTubers out there that are building your channel, like, this once the system, the system has to learn what you do, you have to train the system. Uh, uh, and so I did have similar thumbnails and similar titles, they weren't exact. But they were similar. And so the channel just got flagged for that. And it's a brand new channel. So there was no rapport. Once you build that rapport up, uh, it's kind of, you know, you don't have to worry about that. It's same with monetization. Um, you have to self, you know, kind of monetize yourself, you know, kind of uh, telling the system if you think this is monetizable. And over the course of time, it should fix itself. But mm -hmm. it is what it is. It was annoying, though, but we got it worked out. Good. I'm glad you did. Happy New Year. Uh mm -hmm. And now our very special guest, first time on the show. I have uh, streamed with him on Open Bar. Uh, we lose one Kiwi, we replace him with another. Echo <laughs> Chamberlain. <laughs> I'm sorry to have to be on the screen. No, it's uh, it's great to be here, um, <clears throat> Gary. I'm still fuming at you because you had your 20th anniversary Return of the King retrospective, and you had a Kiwi here lined up, ready to go. So I'm, I'm laying the groundwork to opening up myself to the possibility that I could open my heart to a process of forgiveness and reconciliation, but it's going to take time. Yeah, you know, probably about five years. When we get to the 25th anniversary of Fellowship of the Ring, I'll go. invite you, okay? If we're all still here. If the meteor hasn't come down or uh, our government hasn't killed us yet. I don't think we're going to make it to 2024, uh -huh. so I don't think you got to worry we'll about see. that. <laughs> I'm uh, not used to being with uh, this many rowdy Americans. So it was kind of a cool new experience for me. I kind of feel like it's one of those 80s films where like the nerd has somehow found himself at a like a frat party and he's <laughs> you know like everyone is really rowdy and jumping around and, and everyone's doing that thing that american thing that everyone else in the world doesn't understand where everyone is standing around Having drinking from fun. identical bright red cups yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's like real genius except without the genius 
So <laughs> that's, yeah, right. yeah. that's what that's what frightens real nerds. retards, <laughs> real retards <laughs> of the internet. <laughs> You'll find real out real quick though. We are retard. not cool. We are not cool. real retards. A genius. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are not cool. Who's retarded now? Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, I don't know what you're talking about. Not cool because we have a new calendar coming out next year. Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Just a beautiful calendar for everyone to have. Oh dear! I've sure landed on my feet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me go to the moment. Wow! And, and people are already Holy complaining about I, 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 I love that I'm the only one not fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why do I get a chicken? Holy shit. I feel like that's racist so in some way. Funny. Look at that I, I think God. we should sell it just like that. I think that's. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> thank you. Oh my people God. Like, I look like I am DTF, man. I yeah. look like I am DTF. I am ready. Oh, yeah. Ready look at it. To go. You got that finger going? <laughs> Get over here to this tractor. I'm ready to go. You got a pretty mouth, boy. I got Gary beat me to it. <laughs> right on the backhoe right there. That's right. I love that Odin looks like he's forced into this. Just like, hurry up. Do what you need to do. I'll close my eyes. I'm under contract. I have to do this. Oh, uh, no. Oh, my God. What does drunk 3PO think? Hey, drunk. What's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's scanning it out pretty good. Hey, drunk. Yeah, check it. Got anything to hey, say? Jay. Jay. Hey, hey. <laughs> Camera's he's on. So you. happy. He's so hey. happy. Hey, man. Give him a minute. It, 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 it's probably a delay on his internet. Yeah, it it probably is. Like, <laughs> this yeah. is like when I wasn't sharing the sound or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> is this just a recording of him? No, he's really he's really here, Chrissy. He's really <laughs> oh. here. He made it for the right, Jay. Into the hey. stream. Jay, this is your moment. Respond. Hey, man. This is your on moment. <laughs> <laughs> You're on Friday Night Tights, man. Come on, Jay. I thought it was Jay. Jay. Like a all like right, we got to kick him. Right. All right, I am. We tried. If he gets his internet fixed, we'll see if we can get yeah. him back in here. Sorry. Sorry about that. He blew that. it. He did. Love Jay. Love Jay. All right, I guess we got to start talking about Hollywood. Hey, let's start out with Echo because uh, I know uh, not a lot of people have heard about this show. And uh, mm -hmm. they wanted to drop it all at once in, in January to give it a leg up. Uh, oh. And I'm going to use those jokes until the end of fucking time. Uh, if you're not aware, it's a show about a deaf superhero with one leg uh so marks the cyborg can really see himself in this indigenous <laughs> hero uh so it's every box you could check i'm not sure if she's gay or not she she probably is bi she had a boyfriend probably. in hawkeye but uh things could change in this episode but she's yeah. definitely All science point indigenous she has a peg a woman she has a prosthetic leg and she can't hear and uh, yeah. they, they respect the character so much that they completely change the look and the powers from the character from the comic book. The, char the, the powers from the comic book are kind of cool. She can echo anybody's movements, anybody's fight style. It's kind of like the Taskmaster. But the director of the series said those powers were lame. So now she can, <laughs> now she recalls the powers of her previous ancestors and can oh, utilize God. them. And she wears Man. a costume that looks like uh, the most stereotypical uh, Indian superhero ever. And not like the country. I'm talking America. Well, yeah. When she actually wears a costume, most of the time it's just Ross. It's the clearance section. She's wearing hoodies and shoes and that's it I'm trying like, to oh, figure out what her like big weakness is gonna be is it gonna be fire water or is it gonna be tricking tricking her into like getting a smallpox blanket like what like what are we gonna do <laughs> or like echo's big weakness that's what i'm like well, the her... power of her ancestors so she's like a super indian is that is that what does her what she, does she her father feather does her she, well, she gonna be throwing feather. tomahawks feather oh. feather no yes. i don't think she will because that would be cool does her father trade her for land and whiskey that might be it. <laughs> Fire water. Fire water. Maybe. We want to be respectful, Gary. <clears throat> okay, because we really started out respectful on this one, right? <laughs> the American Society of Magical Negroes. If you think we're going to go soft <laughs> next year and sell out, don't worry, we're not, okay? 
<laughs> uh, we're not here. Let, you, All right. Let, do the trailer first. The, Let's the do the trailer. Let's do the queen one first. Okay. Oh uh, it's, it's, it, this trailer is called Time for a Queen. Slay Queen. Let's go, girl. Yeah. Now, and just real quick, like, I don't really know. They're going to reference that at some point. Is this mean like she is supposed to be like the queen of the tribe? I don't fucking know what they mean by that. I don't. I don't even know. They the don't have they queens. They don't have queens. Does it have yeah. to matter, Ryan? We was. Yes, it does. Just like for, for a reference point. Yeah. <laughs> and action. <laughs> Oh sure. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. I, okay. Right. I, I really I like. I believe she could. Do I, that I like how it looked like she came when she did that. Right. Like. <laughs> no, it looks like she's pushing out a turd. She's like, get it on. Or the dude's biting her nipple or something. Yeah, that, that, that is a oh. turd face right there. Yeah, but right after it, she definitely she just had oh. orgasm. Yeah, like, <laughs> that look on your face when you shit your pants. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Better out than in. Was she pregnant <laughs> when she did this? Uh, uh, no. Okay, so possibly she did. Reshoot. She was pregnant between. <laughs> she was. I'm kind of looking at her Hawkeye face in this, right? Yeah, yeah. Th there were um, weight issues with the costume during shooting, and that's what required so much extra time, oh, wow. so many reshoots, and uh, yeah, yeah. Which is no whatever on the actress. She took a role, whatever. She doesn't look anything like the Echo. Who's I mean. Quite frankly, on the covers anyway, it's a it's a Z list daredevil villain, quote unquote villain, uh, that's based on by David Mack anyway, Gina Gershon. Does she look like Gina Gershon? Young? No. She looks a, a little jowly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, just a tad. It's the holiday season. I like my uh, on screen heroines to be dressed in shapeless baggy clothes like Billie Eilish. I think that's really Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Me too. Mm -hmm. That's in now. Hashtag me too. You did better than even I expected. Maya. Of course you did. <laughs> Maya Lopez is one of the most interesting characters in the MCU. What? Stop. <laughs> okay, come on. Oh, stop. 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 stop it. Interesting you got Spider-Man, the Hulk. You got Daredevil. All these amazing characters. What makes her interesting is that she's the most interesting. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. And who was that? Oh, like, that was I get talking, it. And can she keep water in her mouth when she drinks? Can you go back I to her real know. quick? <laughs> what What I found hilarious about that statement, they're saying she's <laughs> the most interesting second. person <laughs> while they have shots of her looking like a plank of wood. She doesn't emote at all. She looks so bland and boring. And it's just like, into you know, interlay that with most interesting character in the MCU. Like, yeah, yeah, look, I get, I get what you're you're trying to promo it, right? I get it. No, no, no. Lie. Wait, wait, wait. This is no, a that... woman who said Echo's powers were lame. Yeah, but like her <laughs> her <laughs> definition of interesting will be she has the most intersections of any other character in right. the MCU. Yes. So to her, she's like, oh, it's got all these different aspects we can bring into it, and like nobody else Who's, cares. Uh... What is Lauren Bobert doing in Hollywood now? Uh, that's, <laughs> it looks like Lauren Bobert. It, it, it looks like Lauren had no Bobert, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks like Lauren Bobert if she didn't get laid as much. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Flat chested Lauren Bobert. That feminist yep. Lauren Bobert. 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 Most Bobert, interesting Bobert. characters in the MCU. Get the fuck out of here. She's badass and she's also deaf. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why are those two things related? Who oh, gives a fuck? They're not. They're not, they're not related. Yeah. She just has to look around more. It's in not a enough. Fight. It's not uh, enough to be Native uh, American and have a drinking problem. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Badass, and she's deaf. Jesus Holy effing shit. Christ! She got it around the wrong way. Like He's if you said, me, like be careful when crossing the street. God. She got it around the wrong way. If you said she's deaf, but she's also badass, that would kind of flow. But saying, you know, she yes. badass and she's also deaf. Like, well, the yeah. deaf is like yeah. the most important thing about her. So that's the reason why they're highlighting it last. Oh, God. Well, I'm trying to think of like the, the parallel, right, is with Daredevil. Daredevil Devil is a badass and he's blind. But that's that that's not what's cool about him. Well, I, I would say I think... it's cool that he's he's blind and still able to be a badass. That's what's cool about Daredevil. You, you know yeah, the, being blind is far more right, of a problem it's, when it's you're fighting the, and being okay. deaf. You know, what this, like, you, yeah. you know what this comes from, right? This comes from fucking Coda 
Do you, do you remember the movie Coda? Does anybody remember the motherfucking movie Coda? It won Best no. Picture. It won Best Picture. Oh, it had no. deaf people in it. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're oh, like, oh, that's right. Deaf okay. is so hot right now. We need to put a deaf person in this. And uh, do we have any deaf superheroes? And then we'll just say it's really popular. Like, remember when they said Miss Marvel was super popular? Yeah, Jesus Christ. Super popular. Holy wow. sucks. Mm -mm. Hey, you know. Does this character have... Is, does she have any other emotion apart from resting cow face? Because like, <laughs> that's the only emotion oh! women are allowed to have in Hollywood Whoa. these days. Chad. Oh, yeah, so. it just looks so uninteresting and boring and bland. It, if anything, this is just it's totally unfair to her. This is, this is you, you legit could swap her out with Cora from Rebel Moon, and you wouldn't tell the Ugh. difference. She exactly. she took the role, but like by the time this comes out, this whole trend is going to be two years old. By the way, which is by the way two weeks. By the way, that trend is two yeah. years old. This woke MCU fucking trend died a long time ago. It just took corporate Hollywood a couple of years to fucking figure it out. So it's it's not even fair to the actress who did take the job. But uh, they're not going to continue with this. They're not going to do anything with this. They had this was this was obligatory. They had to put this out. They tried to shit can it. They tried to fucking cancel it. Every which way. Uh, they couldn't reshoot it anymore. Please continue. Uh, it's it's resting Mary Sue, by the way. Resting Mary Sue face. Like are, these roles feel like they do the actors to such a disservice because. Uh, she probably would be able to act, I don't know, in another role, but this character just looks awful. Anyway, we can continue. Oh, she learned everything from a man? Well, that's breaking the trend. Hold up. I I'm fed up with action scenes where you can see other people who are about to punch her wait for her to, like, look around yeah, at them yeah. and they're like, oh, I can swing. Same thing was in Rebel Moon. Rebel Moon. You had the other people yes. running up, waited for her to turn around. But she he's, like, like this with his it. fist for about half an hour before she got, oh, by her the way, I'm just going to move you. Oh. Her name is Alaska. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, well, that's Chrissy. That's her name. Say yeah. It, say it again, Chrissy. That's that's literally what it would sound like if a deaf person were going to give a blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. What's her name? Uh, what what's was? Her what's her name? Like like Alaqua Cox. <laughs> Alaqua Cox. Cox is her name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Come on. Come on. So it's not Aliqua Cox. She stopped signing in an interview. <laughs> oh. <laughs> dude, dude, Kingpin got cocked at the end of Hawkeye. I know he nobody did. watched it except for I did. Did anybody watch it here except for me? Yeah, I, did. I watched yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Completely yeah. cocked. I, I actually like I think Hawkeye might be the best Disney Plus Marvel series, despite <laughs> them cucking Hawkeye. Uh, I mean, despite no cucking Hawkeye. Or, and yeah, Kingpin. sorry, cu cucking Kingpin. Yeah, both of them. Like, well, because that's the one I feel like they actually had the most respect for Hawkeye as a character until the end um, when he got his ass kicked by two girls. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, he got his ass kicked twice. Yes, and yeah. he needed to be saved by girl Hawkeye and, and twice, the, possibly three times. And the and the big climax was on an ice rink. <laughs> that was a so terrible. Good. When they just used all like the gimmicky arrows and shit. Yeah. Uh. Mm -hmm. These I like because at so... least at least Haley Seinfeld had like actual respect and cared a lot and like wanted to be like that right. guy, um, which is like she's the got charisma. Every she's... which is the opposite of everything else we see in all of these fucking shows. Mm -hmm. These, good these casting fight scenes too. are She's so uh, fight scenes are so tedious that I'm actually more interested in the in the progress of Carrie sanitation services. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering about that. I was like, is this a reference? <laughs> he taught her violence and fear. Take your hurt. Take your pain. Make it into something useful. It goes more towards a grounded series. Grounded is that so word? Yep. Grounded yes, it makes it better because it, no, it doesn't. Grounded is a nothing. It's how you execute it. It can yeah. be fantastic yes. or yeah. grounded. It could, that either could be good or bad. There's Sorry. a word uh, that Robert Meyer Burnett likes to use called verisimilitude. That's what they're looking for. There's a realism that Marvel has lost that they never had with the Daredevil show that they're going to try to emulate, which will be laughable. Absolutely wasn't this? The, wasn't this? Didn't what the first trailer for this like? Wasn't it somewhat interesting outside of the main character? Like yeah, it was a bunch trailer. of yeah, really well, it was a well shot. A well yeah, shot trailer. And, and, but the main you saw the main character in it. You're like, no, sh this looks like it. 
completely throws everything off because they're focusing on all the wrong things. A quote, a quote from somebody who worked maybe in or around this show said, nice trailer, not the show you're going to get. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> surprise, surprise, a bait and switch. Yeah. How uh, original. This is so disorienting. I've seen this, uh, the lead character has already had three different physique changes in yes. the face of a trailer. She's been huge and plump, and then she's kind of skinny again. It's weird. Is Maya good or bad? I won't let you bring a war here. <laughs> Riveting. Just Riveting. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you, but uh, sign language can really convey intense emotion. That, that, like, hmm. there, there might I'm be a reason for it. <laughs> audiences oh, yeah. to see how real this show is. It's intense, man. So they're putting it on Yay. Hulu. I want as to well. die. I want yeah. to die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they're dumping it all at once, putting it on Hulu and Disney Plus, which they're going to start doing, by the way. They're, they're going to start doing that at everything, everything that they can. And yeah. I think it helps them mask numbers a little bit as well. Probably. Because nothing, uh, there's no better sign of a healthy industry than having to mask numbers, <laughs> you know? <Yep. laughs> yes. Things are doing great. Well, they've been doing it for a while, so no surprise. When is it releasing? Uh, it says the January 10th 9th? here, but it's the 9th. It's actually the 9th. Uh, well, then that'll replace January 6th as the worst day that's ever happened <laughs> in American history. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we can just change all the. It's 9 yeah, 11. We, yeah. yeah well, 9 January 11, 9th, January 6th, January 9th. Part three. <laughs> Never forget. Uh, January 9th is my January 6th of 9 11. <laughs> <laughs> worse than both combined. Worse than both combined. <laughs> So okay, so this is a real. This is a real is with some with some authentic fan reactions. Uh, uh, the super fans. Super fans. Yeah. Super fans. Uh, -oh. mm -hmm. uh, I have to thank. Hang on, hang on. I gotta thank somebody who's for sending that to me. Don't be afraid. I won't be afraid. Thundercats. Ho! Thank you for sending that to me. There you go. Be afraid. Phenomenal. Really. Dark. Gritty. It's the new MCU. <laughs> uh. <laughs> is, the old okay. is that person deaf too? Does, does anyone they believe that be. those are legitimate like no. Marvel I, nerds? Like, what, come no, on. Well, no, I one hundred percent believe it. No, I one hundred percent believe that these people are what's left of the MCU fan base. <laughs> and that's, why said, really, that's why I said Marvel nerds are not MCU yeah. nerds. I don't know. I'm not even convinced they're real people at this point. So. They're probably AI. No, they're influencers. Oh, they're on a payroll. No, there's a couple more less being couples they're definitely mcu fans <laughs> <laughs> i wasn't going to watch this show but if there's a, a pair of uh cosmopolitan parisian lesbians who think it's good then i'm, I'm gonna go watch it oh yeah i'm in now i completely agree you've convinced me i think it's a fresh take from marvel you know the gritty side of marvel that we haven't actually seen in a while and i'm really Except excited to see what they do with it <laughs> yeah, just leave that there. Pause. <laughs> yes, this is how we all feel. What a frame. Totally like, fresh, you know, uh, totally original, except they're yep. just completely copying Daredevil, <laughs> which we did, you know, almost 10 years ago. Only with a girl. Oh, this encapsulates so much like her, her life is being threatened and she could not give less of a crap. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, just like the audience. Resting <laughs> yeah. Mary Sue face. <laughs> when do like, I get paid? It's like they put more effort into the fake actors that pretend they like it than the actual shows and movies that they produce. <laughs> that is true. That, that, that it's it's there's more at least is depth and and character well, development with these fake they, people uh, than Jeremy, the fake show. They have an advantage; they can talk. <laughs> yeah, and here, true. most of them. <laughs> God, this is so embarrassing. I love the fact that the main character was deaf and that I got introduced to a whole Why? new world. It was American Sign Language, it was indigenous history, so it wasn't just an action show. Uh, you know what, Native American every, Sign every Language. fucking Marvel fan, uh, you know, I, I just remember this hearing year after year at Con. I need some indigenous history and sign language in my Marvel. I just oh, need yes. it. Yeah. When I'm watching John Wick 4, I wish if only this had the indigenous history, this would be a way better right? film. Mm -hmm. It really yeah. enhances uh, the action scene. It really does. <sighs> Uh, 
Here we go. At, as a, very, um, hmm? re rewind that a little bit, because we got to get this. This is uh this is a uh, your, your famous as a this person as a this identity. I feel represented. I, I saw myself represented and seen, but not heard. Go on. Indigenous history. So it wasn't just an action show. As a gaff person, I feel very. I'm proud to see that on screen. Proud. Nice leading lady vibes. She's very cool. Oh Why would you feel proud for something you haven't done? Violent. And the <laughs> right? Like, if they wanted a real deaf superhero, let's see a gal with no hands and see how good she does mm. with her sign language. <laughs> no, just, right? just, no. just thumps. <laughs> This yeah. brings up a great point in all seriousness. Why in the fuck would you feel proud for somebody else's work that you had nothing to fucking do with? Just because, seeing something on screen. she's a woman, and the Reprising. other person's a woman, and therefore they piggyback off the other person's achievements for some reason. I don't know. It's, yeah. it's because they have an element of the intersectional. They go, yeah. I'm, I am part of that, so that is me, so I am proud. If you scroll back and actually look at that woman who said that, um... You can see why just a little more right there. If you look and oh. see, this is why they have nothing to be proud of in their fucking lives. So they're, <laughs> <laughs> they're desperate to bring on to something else that someone else did oh. so they don't fucking kill themselves. That's actually uh, a 2024 really Ben in Black. Like, <laughs> even the uh, even the, the French Parisian lesbians are looking at these two and going, geez, tone it down. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> I want to make this show interesting. Re bring Edward Norton back. Let him let him pretend to be a retard like he's done in many movies, and so he can bond with her. And then he, what was that movie The Score? I think with Robert De Niro, or, or he he would pretend to be a retard, and then Primal Fear, right? <laughs> in Primal Fear, he had that stutter. Uh, have him pretend, and then in the end, he just you know clotheslines her and kills her and turns <laughs> into the fucking Hulk. I would watch that all day long. This but is I, so terrible. I, I love this, this woman in uh, The Grinch Who Stole Brooklyn. She was great. In <laughs> <laughs> she raided a thrift store. Yeah. <laughs> the Grinch Who Gentrified Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Lady vibes. Nice lady vibes. Cool. Uh, a bit more, more R-rated, a bit more violent. And the action sequences were absolutely insane. Well, honestly, I was not expecting that at all. Beautifully choreographed and immense like they're just so exciting someone's signing in the middle of a fight <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> ryan's right this is just what's left of the mc oh my god the fuck? <laughs> signing in the middle of a fight so oh, empowering so incredible empowering and badass so well, they god. literally we're gonna meet them in the tardis next to find these people is they looked at who was talking bad about the fnt crew on twitter and they reached out <laughs> <laughs> and this is them right here. This is why uh, I get upset, right? When you guys sometimes call these accounts like bot accounts. These are the actual people, right? <laughs> <laughs> these are the people that are running those things. They're real. I mean, they're fucking losers, but they are real. No, I, I, I agree. With, uh, I think they have multiple accounts. They're not bots. They're human bots. NPCs. Yeah. Yeah. These guys are so weird and wimpy that I can. I imagine the Amazon. Rings of Power super fans looking on and going, geez, these guys are pussies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I find quite interesting about this, Disney is so desperate to cater to everyone else apart from the core fan base, right? And yeah. if they want, if they, if Disney is desperate for people to buy into this whole intersectionality, I need to be represented bullcrap, right? According to their logic, they're saying, because we're not representing the average fan anymore, you're not represented, therefore you should not be watching this. That's their kind of underlining logic and through line that's being pushed by there. Now, that's not true. You don't need to have people look like you to identify with anything. I've enjoyed Jackie Chan movies my whole life. He doesn't look like me, but that's the philosophy they're promoting, right? And if they want to push that philosophy, no one here so far, like, uh, do I feel like, you know, is anything like me in on any level, or well, just like a regular fan? Right. Sh Sh well, they despise that, regular that, fans. That, they that, despise that, nerds. Mm -hmm. They're going for whatever's trendy, whatever is interesting to the mass population, supposedly. Uh, and it's it's a facade. It's fake. Well, it's, it's also, the same thing with the also, super fans. They just also, went for the same thing. It's also they buy into their own fucking. They they huff they huff their own fucking farts. So, yes. So they yes. made a bunch of bad shit, and their male audience abandoned them so they're 
They pay company marketing companies a lot of money to tell tell them whatever the fuck they want to hear. And these marketing companies keep telling you, your male fan base has abandoned you. You have to go look for the modern audience. And they don't <laughs> look to why. They abandon you because you made mm-hmm. shit. And your modern audience doesn't have money. They're looking for a freebie and they're lisping that they like sign language in the middle of a show that they would, wouldn't even bother to pirate. To be honest with and, you, uh, and yeah. they said it at the start of this. This is the new MCU. They were talking about the fans mm-hmm. as well as the show. It's all all new, all different. There you go. Wow. You can have it, baby. <laughs> well, I, I want to go in a little to, uh, a to that, if I can. The um, proportionality, like Coda, you were talking about, Gary. That film had a sweet soul to it, and you had a character who's very vulnerable and sensitive and grows and changes. Um, and there was that episode of The Last of Us where it's the um, uh, the, the black older brother with his younger one, and, and he's deaf and that had a sweet soul at its core at its, as well but this the deafness and the diversity is the whole point of everything else and it overshadows everything and there's no creativity originality or heart or soul to it and so it's absolutely. just kind of zero that's absolutely correct it's not there's no problem with having deaf people or blind people or disabled yeah. people or anything like that it's when you are building everything around virtue signaling around their disabilities which is exactly what marvel has done with people's race with their sexual orientation with their core identity that's what they center everything around and that is what we criticize that's what we're going to continue to criticize um because that's one of the most uh pathetic things you can do to a human being is define find them off of things they can't control and marvel Mm -hmm. and hollywood has decided to do that with every single person that's not a straight white male and Mm -hmm. if you don't line up with their narrative they will disown you they will get rid of you because they're disgusting people so that's what that's the problem great stories about people that have disabilities are not the disability is not the defining factor of the person it's their ability to overcome, overcome that yep. what? and what they they flip that nowadays in modern media where their disability is them yeah they're it's not their entire being it. uh what's yeah. the best thing marvel has done in live action period daredevil uh last yep. time i checked can't see uh, it's a disabled character. Has been. It's a popular book. It's been around forever because people like the character. People like the fucking character. That's all. That's all that matters. Uh, there is no character with Echo. I watched her get introduced in Hawkeye. She is indigenous deaf woman uh, amputee. That's what she is. Yep. So it goes right. Let's watch. This. Marvel fan. This is a great way to be introduced to oh, yeah. the Marvel universe. Great ways to be introduced. Let's see what's this. Introduced. <laughs> introduced. It's been they know for a few years. Introduced. Uh, it's because everyone's jumped off because they know it's bull, like just absolute dog crap now, and so they're just like, we need to get new fans. So. <laughs> oh, look at look at all those fat fucking Indians back there. What the? Fuck are they eating? <laughs> no. It's a corn-based diet. <laughs> a lot of starches. Oh, this is Native American, not America Samoa. What is what's going on over here? <laughs> <laughs> if you're not a Marvel fan, this is a great way to be introduced to the Marvel universe. Why is that she dressed like Disney April Plus. O'Neil? She is April <laughs> O'Neil. <laughs> She's the new April O'Neil. She says, no. that's did the you one say April like O'Neil? April. Or I did O'Neil? say April O'Neil. The yeah. fat <laughs> one from the new one. Yes. Yes. Just want to make sure everyone heard that. I just can't get out of my head. Just they should rename it. Just indigenous uh, deaf woman amputee. Just that's the name. Yes. 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 To be honest, that's yeah. a more interesting name than Echo. No offense. <laughs> I think so. uh, no, that's fine. That's, that's all they've talked about in this entire thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is a great way to be introduced to the Marvel universe. <laughs> Echo is streaming on Disney Plus January 10th. Watch it. I'm not counting the fingers to work out when she said it was on. Yeah. Wow. But they, they messed it up because they're trying to, they got two things clashing at the same time. They're trying to emphasize, look, this is hard. This is gritty. This is hard edged. And they get the most pussy ish people in the world to talk about all this other <laughs> stuff. <Yeah. laughs> pretty gory and violence. That's what those yeah. people like. Yeah. And it's also, yeah. it's also really lovely for me to watch because there's nice stuff. So <laughs> <laughs> they're also trying to say it's the best way to get reintroduced into the MCU while it's also what? Is it going to be a hard R like violent everything? I don't think kids are going to be watching this crap. So you had me at hard R, Shad. Nobody's watching this. <laughs> I don't think anybody's going to be watching this. So it's going to collectively bring everybody together in apathy, which is mm-hmm. uh, which is yeah. really good, which is what they've done. That's why they're dumping it in January. Remember, it was supposed to come out in uh, November or end of October. It was supposed to come out end of October. Uh, yeah. but they, January is historically where you send movies, shows to die. Uh, yeah. That's, that's uh, how they've always been. That's like it's the dumping ground. 
yeah, yeah. and, and that's still good for everything even like a lot of youtubers uh they that's the month they take off um uh, you know there's no idiot youtuber would take december off <laughs> I ask, uh, but uh, <laughs> <you know. laughs> he didn't right. take it off of everything else. Just our <laughs> show, <laughs> our show. Just so our when show. people don't watch Echo, are they going to call them ableist? Yes, probably, <laughs> probably, yeah. probably race sex articles or you know, the, you know, the usual. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be dead on arrival. No one cares about this character, and it's, so it's a character no one cares about that was introduced in a show that no one cared about or watched. Yet. And so this is dead on arrival. It is. Yeah, I don't even. Why they they know it. Keep doing it, Disney. Yeah. It, it, it could be why they've made the trailers how they have, because they know no one's going to see the show. So the only things that they will say, well, you know, we, we, it was a really gory thing that also told a lot of people about other's history. We had all these fans, which are the fans you really want. Uh, look at the virtue of them all. These are the people that really liked it. And so people only get the impressions of the trailer and then will never see just how awful it really was. Mm -hmm. But I will. Well, I was I was stunned by the lack of uh, overt LGBT representation in that trailer. I didn't see it. So, uh, big well, uh, it's because everybody was gay. So uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was all of them. Echo will probably end up being bi or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh, definitely a a asexual. Now <laughs> uh, oh, she kind of had a boyfriend in Hawk. I don't know if that was really her boyfriend though. No, I was thought it was a brother a or something, was it not? Probably yeah, some platonic relationship. Her worker, it's like her bro, it's like her bro. Yeah, <laughs> so whatever. Don't, uh, don't hey. be silly, Gary. They don't have straight relationships anymore in Disney. Marvel is saved. <laughs> Hashtag Marvel is saved. Safe from being good. <laughs> and they only have uh, what a couple shows coming out next year. And one movie. Sony has more Marvel movies coming out than Disney. And they all look bad. It's not they necessarily all good. They bad. all look freaking Well, horrible. Venom 3 would probably just be lame. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, you know what I mean? It would be lame like Venom 2 was. And but, Venom 1. <laughs> I didn't yeah. like Venom 1 either. But uh, Craven the Hunter, I really don't know what to expect from that. It's going to be super fucking violent. So I guess that'll be cool. Obviously, it Madam Web looks like dog shit. It looks like it's on the same <laughs> level as Madam Web and uh, Morbius, like yeah, that same low quality. Well, the, Spider Man ish with no Spider Man. To be honest, so these movies are all uh, Morbius is made for like eighty million. I think Madam Web's like eighty million. Like at least those, when they fail, it's like, hey, we spent yeah. eighty million dollars on this thing, not three hundred fucking million like the Marvels. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> No, so I mean, right now, out of all the comic book films that are slated, the only one that seems, if I'm not missing something, the only one that seems like it might do well is Deadpool, right? Yeah. yeah. And maybe maybe mm -hmm. Joker. Joker could. Is, Joker, yeah, Joker's yeah. going Joker's to be a weird one, man, because I just don't feel like, I mean, obviously, okay. Joker's a follow-up to the most, the most successful rated R movie of all time. But I don't know, man. I, I don't feel the excitement for Joker, but I guess we'll see as we get trailers and things like that. But yeah. it, it just Joker felt like a one off. It, it felt like a small contained movie that was lightning in a bottle and it was phenomenal. Well, that's exactly what it was, so, Jeremy. It, oh, no, I, I know. And then they decided the because they're yeah. making sequels. Yeah. It's actually yeah. really stupid. Yes. Yes. And I don't like the idea of the sequel, but I'm personally not looking that forward to it. God, Although there is a little lands. Yeah, no. there is. a Yeah. Borderlands. I don't know. Anything. Borderlands. No, like, that's not going to be good. That, that's going to be no. a train wreck. Probably is there is. really not? Is there really nothing released in January other than Night Swim that was worth mentioning? <laughs> no, there. I'm sure there's other things, but uh, the Beekeeper, Beekeeper. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna watch but, that. It's yeah, just Jason that? Statham. That's Jason yeah. Statham being like a fucking secret on, agent. Badass. On this on this list, there's so I, I'm looking forward to Argyle. I think that looks really good. Yeah. Dune is gonna be that's my most anticipated Dune, movie yeah. of the year. Mm. Uh, Planet of the Apes uh, is definitely a, a big one that I'm looking forward to. Outside of that, I mean, Deadpool, I guess I'm looking forward to Deadpool and then Sonic. And then I guess on interest, I'm interested to see what this Karate Kid movie is, although I can't say I'm excited because I really don't know what direction they're going to go. And I think that's about it. Uh, this is like what most, the story most, 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 most of these Some, are sequels. <laughs> most of these are sequels. Yeah, I know. War they're of the Lord Hero is the only one I give a fuck about, to be honest with you. Uh, I mean, yeah. Of, yeah. Uh, Some of these I'm shocked at seeing. Like, it shows they, the desperation of Hollywood. They have no creativity at all. So they're desperately reaching out to anything that they haven't, you know, just 
like they're, milked death. And so Twisters, they're doing a spinoff of Twisters. Twisters. I don't like, know. I, I, uh, is, so uh, If is Gladiator the only original two? movie on here. Everything Gladiator else is a two. sequel G- or Gladiator, requel or... Gladiator 2 is the most ridiculous fucking sequel on there. <laughs> okay. Insane. Yeah, it's insane. No point <laughs> to it. That's like a Tropic <laughs> Thunder trailer fucking movie. Something that's like... It, <laughs> Bad in, Boys TV inside why? out. We're like, what is uh, going on? That's like they, they, this Jesus is, too. That's a four. It's <laughs> it's like, Beetlejuice too. Yeah. Like, it, if you want to see like history of the world part two, like, yeah. this is scraping the scraping the bottom of the barrel personified. This is amazing. It's really some bad. of these look like some of these look like actual jokes. Like Gladiator Two looks like literally the, looks like yeah. Like, yeah, the actor's going to be in the Why? stadium. Are you, you not entertained movie? again? <laughs> if I'm know, asking, right? if I'm asking everybody on the panel, out of the movies that we see right here, what's the highest grossing movie of the year? Deadpool Despicable 3. Me Four or Despicable Deadpool? Yeah. Don't forget about. Uh, I'm, I'm. I can't believe I'm saying that. Don't forget about Mufasa. I'm gonna forget I, I, about I just, Mufasa. Lying. I just don't. I, I, I think, think that in this land, that in this landscape, I hope so too. It. It's I just, just I still, I still can't believe the first piece of shit made 1.6 billion dollars. I cannot believe that. It drives me crazy. If I'm predicting, I think the but that the, was the when we were in a good forward. economy. Oh, That's when we were at 100%. the peak of Disney. Like yeah. there's a lot of things going for it at that time. So, I, I, I think your two billion dollar movies this year are Deadpool three and. Well, Deadpool three is going like, to be it is going to be rated yeah. R, though, as well. Yes. So it, it's going to yeah. be tough. But I like my two that I'm looking at are like my billion dollar threshold are Despicable Me four and dead. The, the best you're looking at this year is two possible billion dollar films. There'll be a surprise one, but that's horrible. This is I want fucking Despicable terrible. Me to follow like the Fast and the Furious model. Like I want them to do 12 and I want them to be like too despicable, too furious. <laughs> hang on, hang on. I think uh, Echo, it's going to be Echo. one of those things. It's going to be oh, one of those things where uh, um, there'll be the biggest selling ones don't necessarily have the enthusiasm with you. So I think it could be the Ghostbusters one, but it'll have a Rotten Tomato score of like 60%. So that's my kind of pick. I, I, yeah, I, 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 about I, Ghostbusters I, is Ghostbusters Afterlife didn't do did not shit do at the well. box office. Yeah, it did not and, do well. And I, 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 I thought it got a lot of hype, and a lot of was that because of the last thing and them reuniting and everything, which is cool. I just, I just didn't think it was all that great of a movie. And I don't know what the sequel is going to do at all. We could be looking at a year where there is no billion dollar. Yes, films. yes, that's what I'm. I, could I, be. I, that is a real possibility. Mm-hmm. Uh, like even Beetlejuice two, I think will do well in its opening weekend. Just curiosity well, he, factor in the cast and uh, Tim yeah, and I, back. I, and, even like, and I, I, I don't think I've seen any of the Despicable Me movies, but like, didn't the third one do like nine hundred and fifty or something like that, Ryan? Dude, I they're huge. Made a billion. Oh, really? Um, they're huge movies. I remember yeah. you very, very close. Well, it, it was well, very close. Close to a billion. Well, yeah, because I remember when we were talking about Mario. I think you kept referencing Despicable Me three, and I could have swore it was like <laughs> nine fifty or something like that. Um, and so this could well, be Minions a year Rise when, of Gru. Oh, that's what it was then. That's okay. That's the one I was thinking of then. That's the one I was thinking. Yeah, Despicable Me four made over a billion. Bro, okay, okay. When you're when you're relying on the the fourth sequel of your <laughs> fucking animated series to like drive the market for the rest of Hollywood, you are so incredibly fucked. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the weird you thing about how the two is screwed. The, the weird thing about how they're doing the sequels for this as well, like if you look at Twisters, the guys come out and said, it's not a sequel, it's not a remake, it's not a reboot, it's just its own story that has nothing to do with anything else in the series. <laughs> it's like, so why have you called it Twisters then? Just name it calling it else, it's not a sequel. How about Tornadoes? <laughs> <laughs> Just the thought. Sorry, I will tell you what I'm really excited for, War of the Rahim. War of the Rahim. That's, That's the only what one I'm, I'm actually, to. like, I, I, I think I'll like... Uh, but uh, Deadpool three is gonna do good. Joker's like the big mystery in this. It could go. That's really, wild. It card. could be cool as hell. It could go really wrong with yeah. Lady Gaga. And I saw a couple people asking it like Sonic three. Sonic three is not gonna make a billion dollars, but no, it, fuck it, no. it, it'll probably yeah. make five hundred million if it's good. Yeah, it'll Sonic make two made it's like what? Back. A little over four hundred yeah. million or mm-hmm. something. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. If they can look get at that selection. In there. You look Dude, at that. Has selection. anyone heard anything about this alien movie? Not much. No, I've heard no. jack shit from <laughs> I had I had no idea they were even making another one. What what were you saying, Echo? Oh, just saying that you look at that selection, there's nothing in there which really gives you the vibe of having the potential to be a sleeper or breakout hit. They all seem right. very contained. Uh I also trust my instincts more these days. Like Joker, the original Joker was great because you're watching a character viscerally evolve 
into who he mm. is on the screen in the first yep, one. Yep. It came out of nowhere. It was exciting. So there's nothing to be gained from a sequel because you're just going to be stuck in the same mm -hmm. pattern now because we know who this established character is. And Lady Gaga has failed upwards for 20 years. I have no... Mm -hmm. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. I, I, can Thank anyone you. sing a, a Lady Gaga song? I don't know any. I could. Think... She's a witch. Well, Poker I, Face is the only rah, one I know. Rah, 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 rah. Well, rah, 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 rah. I'm also, a uh, uh, as a comic as the comic book fan, I'm also really fucking over Harley Quinn. Like, if I never Dude, see Harley so Quinn again, <laughs> that, that would be too soon. Fuck Harley I, Quinn. She's I a agree. terrible character now. I, I, I also was the she idea of, great. The, the idea of the way Joker ended with, like, the city in chaos and all this shit, mm -hmm. it, it was just really left up to your imagination what happened to the city after all of that. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the perfect way to end it, yep. this, like, little encapsulated story. Yeah. That oh, did and, not and, get equal. Now and all the questions like, all and was is it, it real? Was it real? Did any of it really not? happen? Yeah. Right. Didn't yeah. Joker only do well because it was like a sleeping hit? It had staying power, word of mouth. There was also a lot, a lot of media. media. There's a lot yeah, of media yeah. stuff yeah. around that, it. That's true. Joker it. two. Right film. Yeah. It Joker did motivate. Two. Yeah, it did motivate machete attacks. Oh wait, no, that was Frozen Two. That was Frozen Two. Yeah. Well, and also to be fair, that was in fucking the UK, so it could just be another day. <laughs> <laughs> it was just London. Yeah, there's a lot of migrants that came in that day. <laughs> but with uh, with with Joker, there's the scene in the bathroom where he goes into that. He's killed the people in the subway. He goes into yep. the bathroom with the flickering lights, and there's he goes into that dance, and it's that eerie metamorphosis that you're yep. enthralled by. Yeah. And you're not going to have that in the second one because we're already exactly. There. Because it had word of mouth that carried it. Uh, Joker 2 will only do similar numbers if it's as good and people talk about it, tell people to go see it. Yeah. It's not going to be successful based on the success of the first one. That's just I saw some of the set photos and it's just her dancing on that same staircase. And I'm like, is this movie just going to be Joker again i was i was going to say that gary i, I, I think not the but... same movie but with harley quinn instead. it's also a musical yeah yeah yeah, yeah i'm not I, so, i'm not so what is uh transformers one is it generation one i'm I mean, not sure what they're doing I, I haven't seen the most recent Chris one Hemsworth so really... is voicing optimus what yeah. really what really? i believe so you can't, oh, that's I like Chris Simsworth, but that's weird. What? Yeah. That is, he's he's going to have an Australian person. accent still. Uh, Isn't it uh, I'm just, I'm just that... making shit up at this point. But. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Isn't it I, it's sad believable, that a, a, though. A cheap 80s cartoon where Optimus Prime dies yeah. has more emotional resonance hey. and impact on me yep. or anyone this, than this camp these multi-billion dollar <laughs> But this can't be like this can't be a, a live action though, because they just had a live action. There's no way they're turning around another live action this quickly. So this has got to be an animated movie. Well, I mean, some of these movies on this list, Jeremy, aren't done. Like Deadpool three, they're not finished. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll see. We'll see how many actually stay on these release dates. Right. Uh, Furiosa is on like on this like prime release date, dude. Right around Memorial Day, nobody's gonna fucking watch that. Uh... That's Star no. Wars release date. That's what that is. Yeah. May 24. Close. It's close. It's close, close. To, to the real Star Wars day. Yes. Uh, I'm really wondering know what, what spin they've put on the Karate Kid. Like, what angle are they going to have? Yeah. He's black. I mean, he's, he's, again. <laughs> he's, he's Chinese. He's Chinese. This, it looks what? like a reboot. It's, it's the same font as the original Karate Kid. Is yeah. No, it's, just well, gonna... All right. So this is going to be uh, Ralph Macchio and Jackie Chan are both going to be in the movie. They have already confirmed. Really? So it's a uh, it's an extension. Obviously, is it going to be collab. related? Is it to the off of the show? Is it going to be is the Cobra Kai universe going to be part of it? Like, no, I, I don't think they're going to really tie any of that in. But who you know, they, they haven't said they haven't had any specifics about it. I don't like how this sounds on the surface. That is uh, terrible. Yeah. It sounds mm -hmm. fucking terrible. Cobra mm -hmm. Kai season what the final season comes out this year anyway, right? Yeah, doesn't yep. so, mm -hmm. sounds like cash this grab. This holiday season, the Karate Kid is an indigenous deaf. Paraplegic. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, they, they, they put out a casting call. They're looking for someone of Chinese descent, and it's going to take place in the on the East Coast. That's, That's not what we know karate. about it. Yeah, yeah, the Kung so Fu is it a white guy teaching Wait, him? What do you mean it's not karate? Daniel LaRusso ain't fucking Japanese either. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> no but, but Mr. Miyagi was. But Mr. That's, Miyagi that's was, issue. yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, but it's the, it's the problem with Jackie Chan. It would be kung fu, not karate or whatever, wushu or whatever. It's called the kung but fu. Daniel kid. LaRusso's training people fucking karate too. He ain't he ain't fucking. But he's Japanese. actually teaching karate though. That that that's that's my point. Is the origin of karate is Japanese. The the issue with it, the whole thing with Jackie Chan is that he's Chinese and karate did not come from China. Is yeah. he playing? Hey, nobody cares he about play that. a Chinese guy or not? Or <laughs> I care about Chinese? this stuff. Okay. Uh, I just don't want to see wokeness. Ryan all right, that's all I care about. <laughs> I imagine that it's so politically correct that they have uh, the character is actually missing a limb, and so at the end of the film, the guy says, "Sweep the leg," and the guy says, "I can't. It's already gone." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what they're going to put in. That Mufasa. would be insensitive. Uh, I I thought Echo Chamberlain was uh, memeing when he said the Mufasa is then I look closer and it's really there. Like, no, it's real. Is, is that a joke? What no. are they going to do with that? Je Je Jeremy thought it was the sequel. Uh, <laughs> on Geeks and Gamers Daily. <laughs> First of all, I didn't say sequel. I said follow up, meaning is it in that universe? <laughs> Like is, it, is, it, is, it, is it tied to that to the live action John Favreau? This is how yes. Mufasa is, rose you know. to power. Because that's the thing. Like, it is a prequel, yeah. yeah. If this, if this is a, if this is an animated film that has nothing to do with the the live action Lion King, then I, I, at least. But if it has any ties to that bullshit, then it's dead on arrival for me. Yeah, it's it's um, a prequel to the 2019 movie. Yeah, and uh, and oh. I hate no, which is a remake movie. of no. the. 1990s oh. cartoon, which is a yes. remake of the 1980s Japanese anime. No one gives a fuck about that one, though. <laughs> you know what it is. All I care about is the Lion King Disney movie. I don't sure. really care about that. Make oh. new shit, Hollywood. <laughs> fuck. So we got. Um, so they yeah. the yeah. I don't care about what. Yeah, I don't. I don't care about whatever African folklore thing it was stolen from originally. About some. I, I don't care. <laughs> Lion King. It's cool. <laughs> How, how yeah, many? Wasn't it, isn't it based on Hamlet? How many original yeah, Hamlet. stories are on this list? Like that are not. Uh, what is it? I don't know what Night Swim is. Argyle, I think. Uh, like based Argyle. On a book, yeah. I don't know if it's. So that's I think it's adapted from a. There, it might be adapted from a book, but it it, we haven't seen a movie about it. It's um, about socks. Uh, then if is an original like John Krasinski. It's like some hybrid CGI live action thing about somebody's imagination coming to life. Ryan Reynolds is in it, shit like that. Um, yeah, they're missing than, the point, though. Yeah, a lot of these movies have black people in them for the first time ever, and that's the most mm -hmm. important thing to take away. So your originality is that black people are finally being recognized and represented in movies in 2024, and that's what we need to take away from this. So move your toxicity aside and appreciate representation. Yeah, um, other than that, there's nothing else. I mean, Borderlands is obviously a video game franchise, but we've never mm -hmm. seen it. We never seen an adaptation of it, so take that. Gladiator Two is going to have Pedro Pascal. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, no. He's, in it. <laughs> he's the Viper. Oh, and isn't Denzel Washington in it too? And Denzel Washington. <laughs> oh, no. Who's directing? Hang on, they're not bringing back Scott? the other. They're not bringing back the other character in it who survived the the black guy, who was in um. He's too busy Rebel with uh, no, Rebel it'll Moon. be Paul Mescal. It will play the lead role of Lucius. Connie Nielsen will reprise her role as Lucilla. Glad yeah, hasn't this movie been in development hell for like 25 years? 20, or something? Yeah, since the first movie came out. Yeah. Like it was going to be like time travel movie and stuff, like all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah. Weird. Um, I'll pass. Yeah, I'm a hard pass on Gladiator 2. <laughs> hard pass on like 99% well, I, I, of these. I mean, I'm pretty interested in Gladiator 2, even though I think it'll be really bad. I, yes. I want to see it. I think it'll be um, horrifically bad. Alien. I want Ridley yeah, Scott no to just rest. Just stop yeah. making movies. Rest. <laughs> yeah. You're old. Because you're not. It's you, not getting you've good. Done some good stuff. You haven't done Great some good stuff. stuff lately. Just yeah, enjoy your retirement, Ridley. Yeah, yeah man. We respect you. Just stop. He doesn't make good films anymore. Just good scenes. Yeah, but. The, the 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 only film that I have no real reservations about outside of just standard is Dune. Dune is the yeah, movie Dune. that I think is going to yeah, be yeah. awesome. So Dune. it looks pretty badass. Yeah, yeah I think I, it's going to be great. I think Dune, War of the Rohirrim. Uh, I'm trying to find something else that I might like. Ghostbusters, Sonic Three, come on. Sonic Three. I guess it's the only one. Sonic Three. That's I'm excited it. for movie facts. <laughs> one <at the> <laughs> <laughs> that might be the best thing. This year. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, and, and plan, I think Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes will be good, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I yeah. think that'll be good. Looks all right.
looks all right. Nothing's going to blow anybody away. And I guess what we talked about in the beginning, uh, the biggest takeaway is there potentially could be no billion dollar films this year. Yeah. 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 I mean, because I don't think Dune has a shot at a billion. I don't think it has a shot. No. As much as I think I'll love it. And I think most people will probably enjoy it. Uh, the first film, what did it do? Three, four hundred million worldwide. Um, I, I just don't see it getting to a billion uh, off of whatever it did on that first one. I don't know. I you guys, it's not on the that. list, but I think this one might be a million dollar movie. The American Society of Magical Negroes. That's right. <laughs> it's coming out next year. It's not. A, why is it not there? It, if well, the, the color purple is, if the color purple is any indication, it'll open big then drop off like a fucking rock. Because uh, <laughs> Red Sonia also purple. comes out, and uh, so does Fall Guy. Fall Guy, yeah, I want to see that. that yeah, that's an original one too. Sonya. I like that. Well, that looks no, cool. it's based on a TV show. Yes, it oh, is. Oh well, whatever. Yeah. Fuck it. I still like them. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Fuck it. <laughs> no, it looks good. Fall Guy actually looks okay. I uh, like the vibe of that trailer. It looked fun. Red Sonja is going to be terrible. Did yeah. you see what the writer said? It was, yeah. Just yeah. Abandoned. Didn't you feel you'd seen the whole film in the trailer though? Like you kind of had everything you needed from that film from that Fall Guy. Minutes? Yeah, yeah, it was kind of long. Kind of told you everything you need. Yeah. What about uh? What about uh? Yeah, but... Rachel Zegler's Snow White. When's that coming out? Two thousand twenty-five. Yeah, yeah. So I got pushed back. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> is Fall Guy gonna be? Is Fall Guy gonna be the the prequel to Winter Soldier because it comes before <laughs> Winter? <laughs> and then midsummer. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even give a. I couldn't even get. I couldn't even get a courtesy laugh on that one. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, I I read the the leaks on it. it I heard it's good. Awful. Who, who's playing oh, the lead God. in that? I don't. It was like a million different people. It was like uh, Tom Skarsgård, Hiddleston at one Skarsgård point. from uh, yeah. Ooh, Skarsgård. Yeah, apparently it doesn't dawn the makeup actor, until the very but... end, and it's like they're going to be drug addicts. Nice. That's how oh, they meet. Hey, they, they meet I can in see rehab. Myself in that movie. Yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> it's going to be. It sounds awful. It sounds absolutely fucking awful. You know what else has been a great year for? Uh, establishing that Miles Morales is Miles Morales. Uh, oh, uh, as I as uh, put up, the, you know, he's dead. The ghost of Az tweeted up, got like three million people, <laughs> or somebody else tweeted it, I guess, and it hit Reddit. Uh, I just want to put the final word on this. Can you zoom in on me real quick? This is an actual product from Hallmark that says it all right there. Uh, Spider Man. Could, could you move it further away, please? I'm trying to keep it in focus, okay? There we go. <laughs> Moving it slow. Yeah, right, Spider Man and, Spider -Man and, and Miles, Miles Morales. Morales. <laughs> Argument is settled. Uh, it's a statement of fact. It's been a good year for like uh, R.I.P. Doctor Who was trending, MCU. Uh, it's been established. Grace Randolph had to admit it. Mm -hmm. And Miles Morales, as Miles Morales got written about in Yahoo Finance for fucking some reason. <laughs> it's, it's so funny. You know how ridiculous that is? Okay. Miles Morales, the reason I put it up there in the first place is we were fucking around on a real BBC. And I think uh, we were talking about uh, Miles Morales, what if, or something like that. And I just said, what if Miles Morales was Spider Man? <laughs> and, it, <laughs> and it pissed off a bunch of people. And, uh, it, it's it's a joke. It, it's supposed to be a joke. It's an objective truth, and it fucking triggers so many people. It's so funny, dude. It is it's hilarious. So funny, and people a lot. So many people don't get it, and that's the best part of it is they just continue to get triggered over it, and that's why it keeps happening. Because every time you tweet this out, it goes freaking mega viral. <laughs> it's so funny, and then people accuse you of going, "You're only doing it for the hate clicks." Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> a thousand percent. <laughs> of course, it, it's what. It's it, all it's an, the internet. It's an interesting thing though, because it's exactly what they've done in everything else. Like yes. mm -hmm. changing um, mother to like womb havers. Mother has a load of a meaning behind it, whereas womb haver is just. It, it, it's a. 
it's a neutral term whereas they want spider-man because spider-man means something he stands for something he he's the prestige thing and if he's just the person he is then he's not taking something for somebody else and he has to be a character on his own right and they don't want that they want what the other guy had so it's, like, it's like the politics of envy and they, they uh no, they, they need that. And that's the part of the thought experiment. It's about projection. It's 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 a it's a an ob, it's an objective truth. Miles Morales is Miles Morales. So when somebody starts throwing in racism, they're they're telling on themselves. That's the whole fucking point of the tweet. Because they need Miles Morales to be Spider Man and they need him to replace Peter Parker. Why? Because of his race. So yep. you're telling mm -hmm. on your fucking self, and uh, that's the whole point of it, and it's worked so well. So uh, I love to see it go out in the world and grow, and uh, keep well, doing uh, it. Gary, I mentioned this to you when we were on uh, Open Bar. My my theory of iteration and also, where now you've got um, like mainly diverse characters who are not just an iteration; they're also the character. So you've got <clears throat> Miles Morales is also Spider Man, and you've got uh, this other character is also Captain America. And this other character now is also um, uh, so it's just this this new kind of thing in the culture now. So it is. Sense is a theory? And 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 the reason okay, Miles Morales exists as as Brian Michael Bendis, the co-creator, said to to give to give uh, marginalized people a Spider-Man to root for instead of creating a whole new superhero. So they so. They felt so little of them that they had to take another superhero's name, a derivative name, which there's multiple ones already. And they're like, look what you look what we gave you, little Pat. Imagine them patting on the head. Marginalized people. <laughs> yeah. Instead marginalized... of giving them the brown recluse, which they deserve. Right. <laughs> which Jeez. would be a better which would be a better. That's name. a better name. Yes. A great one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> which would be a better name than another Spider-Man that we're just going to call Miles Black Morales. Spider's cool. <laughs> Kid Arachnid, which Kid I Arachnid. Is, there's also rights issues down. behind it. There was a lot of things behind it. Yeah. But uh, it, you know what wasn't behind it? Uh, trying to like give give a character to marginalized people. It's just a bunch of fucking lip service. They don't really care. They don't nope. really care. They just want to. It's been signal. successful when they've created marginalized characters like Static Shock. That was mm -hmm. a great character that was yeah. created. It's original, and people love Static Shock. Great Shock. cartoon. It's a great cartoon. Yeah. So it can be done. You just don't want to put the work into writing can... a good character. You just want well, to steal. Also, Black Panther, it's because Peter, which Park, is weird. Peter Parker's problematic. Gary hit the nail on the head. They have an issue with his race. That's the core of it. Mm -hmm. They want to replace the problematic past with their new diverse utopia. Yep. Yep. Just like they did with Doctor Who, just like they're doing with Star Wars, just like they did with Star Trek, just like they did with everything else. Instead of just creating a new character that everybody can give. I have no problem with Miles Morales at all. Uh, but uh, I, have a, I have a long box full of his first appearances that, uh, you know, they, they didn't sell. They sold. They're worth money now, but there was a lot printed. There was a lot fucking printed. And uh, you'll see the, the value probably come down. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, talk to me in 80 years when he's been around for 80 years and he's sold millions of comics and they've given him five different titles and he's the world's biggest superhero. Then he can replace Peter Parker. Until then, he's Miles Morales. Deal with it. Uh, we, I have an interesting article that I went over with Chris on the Nooner that I want to go over here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to share the screen on this one because I have uh oh Uh-oh. We know uh -oh. how this goes. <laughs> we know how this goes. Yeah. Uh, this should go okay. It's always a struggle. It's this always should... a struggle. Oh, my struggle. <laughs> oh my <God. laughs> it's real. <laughs> Gonna shift the screen, but okay. Gonna zoom in on that. Yeah, I'll zoom in. There we go. Like I'm actually reading it. There we go. That's that's better for me. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so this is a Substack. This was sent to me by one Frank Gore. Hail Frank Gore. Hey. Hail. Uh. Of course, Frank Gore had to preface this. This is not uh, some alt-right guy. This is a very progressive Hollywood dude who just looks at numbers, and but at least he doesn't like lie to himself about stuff. And he's looking at uh, 2024 as we just did, and it's looking pretty bad. By the way, later in the episode, we're going to do our top well, – these guys are going to do their top five worst shit. I'll do my best. I have Your a bottom five? Out. Yeah. I got a, the bottom. Uh, so – uh, it's the hot button by David Poland. David Poland. Uh, it's 
it isn't terribly promising. Oh, I should read the headline probably first, shouldn't I? Uh, a look into 2024 at the box office. It isn't terribly promising. Uh through the first eight months of the year, 34 weekends, there are only 42 new wide releases, uh, wide release films on the schedule at this point. Last year, there were 77. Uh, how can movie theaters even try to compete with 2023 with 46% fewer movies? 2023 took uh, in 1.5 billion. 20 a 21 percent leap over 2022 which was uh, uh you know because of covid there was a lot of delays it, not hard to do as some writers love to squeal it still isn't what it was in 2019 or 2018 the number one and number three highest grossing domestic years in history pre-covid but the increase this year suggests a pretty full recovery in the marketplace but not of the amount and range of product being brought to the market. Consider also uh, 910 total releases in 2019 and 993 releases in 2018 versus 498 releases in 2022 and 581 releases this year. So 2023 will be just 27% off of 2019 grosses with 33% fewer films in release. See the correlation? Uh, yes, we do. Uh, it is fair to look at the top 10 of 2019 and 2023 and see that this year still uh, was still a billion dollars off domestically from that 2019 group. However, 2019's top 10 also had top end franchise IP, whereas the last two entries in 2023 top 10 are standalone Sound of Freedom and Taylor Swift, The Era's Tour. And as great as number five Oppenheimer did, it is still a standalone. Uh, remember when Hollywood just made standalones? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Those days. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, the are they taking inflation? Because inflation of the last three years since their thing is like 30%. So we are talking massive amounts of money differences just in a few years. So if they're like, well, it dropped 46%, but we've had a 30% inflation, you've barely clawed anything back at all. No. Yeah. No, and they, they don't account for that, but they do talk about ticket sales, and they are being pretty realistic about it. But, yes, the inflation is actually much different than it was 2019, thanks to uh, <clears throat> Joe Biden. Uh, in the second half of the top 10, 6 through 10, the difference between Captain Marvel, Spider-Man, Far From Home, Aladdin, Joker, and Jumanji 2 versus The Little Mermaid, Ant-Man 3, John Wick 4, Sound of Freedom, and Taylor Swift was $766 million. Mm -hmm. Of course, in the end, none of that really matters so much. It is important perspective, as so many journalists misguide the public about that the status of the theatrical, uh, what the st status of the theatrical is. But the bottom line, ask, uh, line asks no questions. I do seven very specific questions, which I think are pretty good. Hang on, where, where am I? Fuck it, fuck it. Uh, is heading there... for a million subscribers, everybody? He knows what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> he knows what he's I doing. am a professional. <laughs> like, can most, like we all get in that point in streaming where we're like, we have to kind of, you know, like, oh, we have to fill a gap in time. Between... Gary's like, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> 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 I gotta do it. I gotta do it. Say, hey, Ryan, I need to fill about, you know, diversity and inclusion. And Ryan will go on a 10 minute rant for you by right. all the time you need. So. Just ask Jay. He knows how to do it. <laughs> well, most of the time. Well, yeah, yeah. With the dead air, maybe. But sometimes it'll be like, I'm desperate for Jay to like take it because I need to either do this or do that or change something. It'd be like, what do you think about that? He'd be like, I don't know. You, he'd be like, you, you said it. <laughs> you said it. You said it. <laughs> no, Jay, I'm, I need you to fill please, in like talk, two minutes please. for me. Yeah, yeah you kind of said it all, Ryan. You said it. I don't know how to say anything better than that. <laughs> well, I'm going to need you to. <laughs> oh, we got Jay back. He's back. Hey, all right. Hey. What do you think about all this data that we just read? Yeah. You get your internet working? Thanks, Jay. Appreciate you. Uh, <laughs> uh, is there a $100 million domestic movie on the schedule before Dune 2 on March 1st? Can the beekeeper or Argyle become the Megan of this January, February, or at least close? How uh, much juice is... What was that? That's <laughs> much air air smoke that was that somebody's uh, fired. Is that literally <laughs> me? 
Gary's get, get, like getting, getting Gary's distracted by everything. Squirrel, squirrel. <laughs> I like, changed my batteries. I, it, it did. It did not sound like someone's uh, like smoke detector chirp. Yeah. It sounded different. It was yeah, a different beep. Like yeah. I was just scary. wondering if it was in my head or not. I, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know what. Did everybody else hear that, or is it just me? <laughs> Thank you. Just you. Do you smell smoke? There might be a problem. Uh, uh, that just means I'm gonna have what's a that toast. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like oh, toast. No. Uh, Gary, did you think you're going into lockdown? <laughs> yes, uh, my brain goes into lockdown quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> how much juice is left for the squeeze in the Kung Fu Panda, Ghostbusters, Godzilla slash, slash Kong, Alien, Saw in September, tra or Transformer franchises? Is there much uh, there for returning ver uh, versions of hits Mean Girls, The Omen, Garfield, Twister? <laughs> Uh, Beetlejuice and Smile. How big can the films being counted on uh, to be home run hitters be? The Fall Guy, if Kingdom of the Planet of the, De Planet of the Apes, Ballerina, which is uh, uh, a spinoff of John Wick. Yeah, uh, like if you're counting on, like, I don't know if you can count on these things to be hits. Like, Ballerina is a spinoff of John Wick. It does feature Anna de Armas, but it's like, you're, you're counting on that to be a fucking hit? Like, what are we doing? The right. Fall Guy looks cool. Are we counting on it to be a hit? Mm. If a new fucking, a completely new IP? I, I don't know. You're right. The, the way Hollywood is set up, I mean, people go, you just talk, uh, for one, I talk about pop culture. And the part of the pop, what drives the pop culture uh, is what drives the entire indie market. So the indie market should be scared shitless right now because the driver of your market is blockbusters, is tent poles. That pays for everything. Uh, and without that, you're fucked. You're absolutely fucked. And you cannot, Hollywood, you cannot have another year like the, the COVID year because this is going to go, This these delays are going to go two years in. Two years in. So uh, that six months you were on strike, hope it worked out for you. Really do. Um, Ballerina, Inside Out 2, Bad Boys 4, A Quiet Place, Day 1, Despicable Me 4, and Deadpool 3. Uh, five, Kevin Costner is betting the farm literally with a pair of, of uh, by the way, completely screwed over Yellowstone for this. So hope it's worth it, Kevin. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Horizon and American Saga, which hey, I like a western. Uh, mm -hmm. It's going to be two parts. One's coming out in June and August. This sounds like streaming service shit, not movie theater Again? stuff. Yeah. And how long it's are they? It's a Rebel Moon be? issue, man. Right. Yep. Uh, how will they be box office smashes that he expects? What will the movies? Uh, that seem not so quite as commercially significant as they hope, such as Madam Web, Bob Marley, One Love, uh, Arthur, The King, The Challengers, and Civil War. Civil War! <laughs> I like how you said Bob Marley, One Love, like it was two different movies. <laughs> two different yeah, movies. Bob Marley, <laughs> One Love. I had to breathe. I had to breathe. I'm old, okay? <laughs> Not enough lung Jesus space Christ. for Bob Marley, One Love. When a guy, the Beatles, A Hot Day's Night. <laughs> it's, it's my favorite thing about... Um, <laughs> the whole this is the best car in the world from Clarkson. He says people think I did that deliberately. No, I smoked a lot, and so I couldn't finish my sentence uh -huh. and had to <laughs> pause to breathe. <laughs> I, I have been watching a bit too much Top Gear, Grand Tour, and Clarkson's car, so maybe I'm start that's starting to rub off in the world. Uh, another issue that is about uh, the market, but not about the health of domestic exhibitors. The international market is recovering slower than the U.S. Canadian market in 2019. International was 70% of the income for the top 20 movies, delivering $1.9 billion of Avengers Endgame total gross, $1.1 billion of The Lion King experience, uh, experiences total, and $973 million for Frozen 2. In 2023, the highest international gross was Barbie with $806 million international. Holy shit. Uh, am wow. Amazing for Barbie, not so exciting for the overall market. There are already a bunch of re-releases being scheduled across the year from the Pixar movies that went straight to D-plus. I love that he called it D-plus right there. That is beautiful. <laughs> uh, to Sony Classics rescheduling Amelie for a return, which I'm sure will make them hundreds of thousands of dollars. I mean, I liked Amelie, but come on. Uh, there will be more. Sorry, I got to scroll down here. The, the interesting thing about those stats, the 70% from international, uh, one thing I felt is that... Um, um, 
Hollywood has been getting more and more American based with American culture and American ideas. Everything's for the American market, or well, specifically Californian market. Yeah. But the more you niche into that, the more internationally nobody likes it because we don't know any of this stuff. You talk about Trump in a movie, we don't care. It's got nothing to do right. with us. And so if it's that big of your box office, you would have thought they would have made more of an attempt to um, make it relatable to the world rather than just specifically, you know, their local town kind of thing in California. One of the big things in that that I think is kind of, it's not as big of a deal maybe as it appears to be is the loss of the Chinese market. Yeah. Like the, mm. the Chinese market is nowhere close to what it was before. I think there's a couple reasons for that. But at the same time, it's also not as big of a deal because you only get 25% of the proceeds from those. So if you, if you have a movie that makes $400 million in China, the studio has only seen $100 million of that which obviously yeah. is a good chunk of change, but it's nothing compared to if you're making $400 million no. in the United States or in Europe or wherever. But, but, it, does, it, gives, it, but it gives the yes. appearance yes, exactly. that these yes. things are massively, massively bigger than they really were. Right. So it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword when you yep. look at it. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because if people hear that a movie made a billion dollars, that's going to automatically go, oh, well, I need to see this movie. And it doesn't matter if it 400 million of that was in China, you know, yeah. it, in terms of the marketing side of it. Uh, but it, it is weird. I mean, look, I've liked a lot of movies this year. Uh, a lot of them haven't made a ton of money. It, and to me, it's the weird dynamic of what Hollywood is putting their efforts into. And it shows you, like, I, I can name, like, 10 movies this year that I've enjoyed a lot. And a lot, a lot of them flew under the radar. Gran Turismo. Who, no one saw that fucking Gran Turismo. That was good. I loved Gran Turismo. It was fantastic. Tetris. Uh, uh, Tetris Air. was excellent. These are good uh, Air. movies. Great like movie, that. Iron Claw, which I don't know if the Iron Claw is going to, I hope it's going to be profitable, but it's certainly not going to be like, a, you know, $100 million, $200 million movie or anything. And it's like Hollywood's putting all of their effort behind these things that they have completely hijacked. And there's a lot of good stuff that's out there that are, are being seen by a, a much smaller audience. And then you, you do have your, you know, lightning in a bottle like um, Barbie and Oppenheimer that no one saw. Uh, no one thought that either one of those movies were going to do as well as they did. And then Mario, which I, I don't think a lot of people assumed it would be uh, it, the success it was. I did and a few others did, but it's not that big of a surprise that Mario was. A, that's not a surprise. Yeah. Barbie is a surprise because no one was predicting that Barbie was going to be the biggest movie of the year. Nobody thought that. I, I, I don't did. think. I don't think. Did you? <laughs> no, <laughs> um, I, thought, I, 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 I was gonna, saying the whole time I thought it was gonna be massive. I, I didn't think it was gonna well. be the biggest. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and, and with Oppenheimer, no one thought Oppenheimer was making nine hundred fifty. Nobody. Um, no, yeah, no, 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 no. Meme culture. But, but, yeah. um, what's what's? Of course, there's there's good stuff because they released more stuff. So there was some good stuff. But this, there was so much bad that even Barbenheimer, the biggest, the biggest weekend they've had in years, right? Uh, do you remember back to last time they had two movies released on the same weekend? Like, damn near make a billion dollars? I can't. They usually uh, don't yeah. do that. They just try to stagger them out, but they went up against each other. We're not going to see a weekend like that ever again. It didn't help either of those studios. It really didn't, especially Warner Brothers. I, I can't speak for Oppenheimer. Well, it's universal. Well, I mean, it, the bucket it, from all their other it, hold on. It, it certainly It certainly did help them, right? Like, if they hadn't have made... <laughs> If they hadn't have made a fucking five hundred or six hundred million dollar profit on that movie, imagine the state of where they'd be. It'd be even worse, right? It'd be Universal, worse, but it wasn't like, great. I, I'm interested to see <clears throat> Universal's final numbers when it's all said and done because they had Oppenheimer, nine hundred fifty million dollar yeah, total good this on a hundred million dollar budget, and Mario, a hundred million dollar budget, one point three or whatever million. But so it I'm did, interested to see what their year it, end it, it looks like. It didn't help the industry overall. Like, oh yeah, Hollywood was fucking devastated this year because yeah. their leader was Disney. That was their driver, the driver of the market. That was their leader, and uh, they they had an abysmal fucking year. And now you have know, you guys, uh, have you guys ever heard of uh, Daoban, the Chinese review site? They uh, mm -hmm. review like American films and things. Here are some of my favorite ones. Uh, reacting to the Marvels. So this is from the Chinese market ah, yeah. and their reviews. 
It's hard to say how bad it is, but the script does not look like it was written by a carbon-based creature. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's hilarious. I like this. It's like an Irish Times review. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> after, the, after the movie ended, there was a complete silence in the hall. The faces of the audience who had not yet left showed more numbness and confusion. <laughs> Hell yeah! That's uh, accurate, man. Uh, that that is how you know we're all the same around the world. Okay? That was yes. written better in the Marvels. Yeah, uh, yes. A, a third one is uh, many times it is not even worth watching a pirated copy while you eat very ordinary. Staying up all night for nothing. I was surprised to see a movie with a vacuum in its core. So universal <laughs> ideas. But, uh, it just, it just appeared up its own black wow. hole. Uh, all right. Awesome. So uh, as of now, Universal has eight films scheduled wide through September. With two more from Focus, Sony has eight plus one from Crunchyroll. Lionsgate has six. This is for this year, by the way. Paramount has five. WB has five. Disney has four. And the three uh, release uh, re-releases from Pixar, MGM UA has three. That is a little bit... Well, 20th Century also has like three, I think, which that that's Disney. Yeah. So, yeah. So they have seven. Right. I think I believe that's the number for Disney. That's still pathetic. Right. Uh, oh, yeah. Here is the list of what 2023 looks like versus 2024 based on the wide releases. Eight months on the list, six different studios with top release. That may be the most <laughs> hopeful part. Uh, in January 2023, seven new wide releases, total uh, new. Uh, the total of the new release is one point. Uh, we won't get in the numbers, but uh, uh, compared it with so January. 2023 had seven. January 2024 has six. And if we go to February 2023, they had 10 wide releases. February uh, this year or next year, six. March 2023 had 10 wide releases. March 2024, five. April 2023 had 14 new releases. April 2024, four. Four. That is brutal. Holy shit. Uh, May 2023, 10 wide releases. May 2024, 6. June 2023, 9 wide releases. June 2024, 5. July, the biggest month of the year, arguably. 8 new releases from uh, 2023, 2024, 4. You're noticing uh, it's looking Everything's like cut in half. Everything's cut mm -hmm. in half. Everything's, and in August, there's 9 new releases. Uh, for last year, for this year, next year will be 6. And that's if they all make their release date, that's the right. biggest thing. Uh, if they so, don't get pushed. Uh, yeah, there's going to be delays, pushbacks. And on top of all this, there's going to be massive flops and bombs amongst them as well. So yes. uh, 2024 looks like a glorious bloodbath. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It yeah, really, but what about it's movies? the industry contracting? Yeah. Oh, contracting. I thought you meant the world in general, but yeah, the movie <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll believe that as well. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> the silver lining is they won't lose as much money because they won't be able <laughs> right. to put as many things out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, which will make things like Civil War and uh, wait, hang on, and the American Society of Magical Negroes stand out. <laughs> I wasn't delayed at all. <laughs> Trim delay. Was we, oh, I thought we were bringing Jay back on. I didn't. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. I, I don't know still... if they're ever going to be able to recover. This is. It's going to be brutal. Like I've already, I've always said, industry was already going down before 2020, and then that just exacerbated the whole problem. And I don't think it's ever going to get back to the peaks that it was at. Uh, and the strikes... It's just going to continue to decline. The, the strikes dragged on because they were like, oh, well, we've got to preserve our careers. We've got to preserve our jobs. This is coming to take our jobs. And even without that, they've now cut th their potential jobs in half. So, yeah, you, congratulations. You, you hung on for a few more months to get a 1% pay increase to kill half your industry. Happy I hope you're proud of yourselves. Well <laughs> done, idea. Hollywood. <laughs> that, that deserves a the clap. service industry, though, a lot of new employees. <laughs> Well, not in California because uh, the twenty dollar an hour minimum wage you're going to be uh, ordering at a little uh, iPad, yeah. basically, and being served. Oh, to I by forgot a robot. about them. Yeah. They, yeah. Thank God, finally. Imagine, <laughs> imagine being like a, <laughs> a, a, sh a shitty Hollywood writer that gets laid off because you know, the jobs are cut in half in Hollywood. So you take your happy ass to fucking Pizza Hut to get a job there. 
just to get, get fired. You get twenty dollars an hour, and they fucking fire you yep. and replace <laughs> the computer. You you were worried about AI taking your job there, but it took your job at Pizza yeah. Hut. And- yep. <laughs> you don't even get fired by a person. It's also a kiosk. <laughs> no, one, no one's happier about that than Ryan. He's hey, it'll probably it'll probably do a better job than the humans. Yeah, just like the works. anime localization. Yeah, I was gonna bring yep. that up. Yeah, oh, replace hilarious. the people at the teller. Replace the people in the kitchen. Replace all of it with robots. So, Shad, would you like to explain the anime localization uh, drama this, that was going on, which I thought was yeah, hilarious? This is, this is hilarious. So they are, localization is the process of taking a foreign language piece of media, not only translating, but the actual true intent behind it should be because translation is difficult. A word for word translation sometimes misses context, misses subtlety, misses culture, because there's cultural references in, in one kind of, if you like, there's jokes that are culturally based that will not translate well if you do word for word. So you need to try and find a good replacement to have the same kind of uh, intent and impact for the audience in the other language. That's what correct localization should be, right? But what's been happening, because a lot of the companies that do localization are filled by woke activists, they have been uh, putting progressive pop- propaganda in their localizations. And so you have these animes coming over where a character might have said, I'm just wearing something different because I didn't want men to look at me so much. They have put in, I just changed something different because of the patriarchal gaze that's all been, you know, through. And so really, really woke stuff. Um, and people have getting, been getting fed up with it. So it turns out that some anime companies are actually looking at getting AI to localize, translate their media instead of the companies that are doing this dog crap propaganda based, you know, um, localization instead. And uh, because people are fed up with the propaganda that's been going on with these uh, anime translations, localizations and stuff, they're all on board. They're like, good, if, uh, mm. if AI is going to do a better job and keep out your uh, woke ideology, all power to them. And I'm, I'm on board with that as well. It's like, if it's going to do a better job and uh, stop people from injecting their bull crap do it all yeah. power to them. yeah they literally it's a high trust did this and worked well. themselves out of their own job which is funny mm-hmm. yeah. it, it's a high trust like industry because you're translating something and the customer that you're employed by they don't know whether you've done a good job because they can't speak it in the first place if they could they'd have done it themselves mm-hmm. so it takes a long time to this to filter back to the people who are suddenly find out that you've been ruining their entertainment on ruining yes. their product for years I would be pissed, truly yeah. pissed, if I found out that someone was doing a localization thing or something that I made and they changed elements in it to suit their agenda, their propaganda. Oh, boy. And so Japan is not on board with this woke crap. Like, I can nope. just have a look at classic anime and stuff like that. They love sexy women and stuff. And it's, and it's kind of funny because Japan is at the same time pretty based but at the other opposite end of the spectrum it's they've also been pretty progressive in terms of having trans representation in their media and stuff like that in cross-dressing and everything anime has that like uh, there's a classic anime i loved as a kid called techno man i'm not sure if anyone watched it right and so so techno man actually the japanese version has a cross-dressing uh male character in it and uh, but to sanitize it for the kids' audience when they localized it, they did change that, um, that I guess, the trust expressing character just into a female character. Um, but but that stuff has been in Japanese media for ages, so it's kind of a, a, an interesting uh, contradiction there. But anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, it's been going on for a while. Japan isn't on board with a lot of... It's funny, they are with some things, but, but that's been like the case for ages. But other stuff, they do, they are not on board with. Um, and they love traditional heroism. They uh, love sexy women. They love the, you know, a lot of the classic fun stuff in pop culture that the West has abandoned. And so people are turning to anime lots, but that's problematic. And so the current localizations have been trying to take away even the stuff that uh, people have really loved about anime for a long time. And, and now they can't. Because uh, they're losing their jobs. They're going to lose their jobs. Oh, no. And they deserve it. Mm-hmm. But at least they're still present to fight their corner, whereas the Roald Dahl estate, they take someone who's dead as an author and then mold and take the language, which is deliberately grotty and dirty and, and kind of gleeful and has like a manic energy to it. And then you take that out and you you soften the language so it doesn't offend anyone. So Roald Dahl isn't around to fight his corner, whereas yeah. thankfully these people Wait still Wait a are. minute. 
tragically. Wait, what's going on here? I see something. We've rolled out. I no. I see oh, a ghost. No. I see a ghost. A disturbance in the forest. There's a disturbance <laughs> in in the farce. Uh, what? Oh. No! Oh! 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 <laughs> what the? He's fuck? alive. What is going? He's ghost alive. of Christmas past. <laughs> 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 He's not alive. It says dead in his oh, name. He's okay. dead as. Oh, okay. I, I, or he's dead, dead to us. Dead so as. I'm going to mention him. the obvious parallels. I haven't seen the chat pop like that since CM Punk walked out, which is what <laughs> oh. As is wearing a CM Punk shirt. Look at the chat go crazy. CM yeah, Punk also respects somehow, trans women. Uh, <laughs> somehow As has returned. Somehow. As is never really gone, is he? So... <laughs> Well, not really. He's on every other fucking stream except for this one. Hi, Az. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Uh, I'm doing. I'm doing good. I just wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> god! Oh. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> what? Oh, too short. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, oh, he blue balled us big time. On Damn. That about and he waited game? there for a long time, too. <laughs> How can you not love that bastard? I love it. Holy crap. That was that shorter was than an ass wink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeez. That was about 38 seconds. I do yeah, want to get a count. Look, if he was here for 38 seconds, that would be incredible. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> I feel like it was less. It feels yeah. less. <laughs> and, well, Ryan's pretty aware of what 38 seconds is, too. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. I didn't have for me. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> not another dime has gifted 50 neurotic memberships. Hell. Oh. That's a lot of dimes for $50. And Drunken Emerald Arrow Galaxy Express Media has gifted 10 Nerdrotic memberships for $50. The members, thank you. And if you are Jaloja, which we're going to change to the fellowship someday, right, Garrett? I yeah. put out the request. Oh, and they've just That was like you. a month ago. Jesus Christ. Um, and uh, it, you could see a preview of my top five woke Hollywood disasters. We got a little snippet for the members there. Uh, but you know what? Why don't you pull up that? I put the link in the private chat of Steen, Steve Weintraub's tweet. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, Jeremy, you read it. Uh, please stop writing the worst movies of the year list. No one sets out to make bad movies. So many people work their asses off to try and do the best job they can. So let's not celebrate when something doesn't work. Mm. It, it, it's funny because mm. I think when we talked about this last week, I said like that, that he sounds like he wears uh, nail polish. <laughs> <Is it something laughs> <like that? laughs> Somebody found a screenshot of him. He has fucking nail polish. Of on him course. Go <laughs> <laughs> oh, figure. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, the whole point is that he's right that no one sets out to make a bad movie. So it's when people try to make a good movie and, and fall on their ass, then there's a glee in that and everyone wants to, to pile on. That's part of the fun. Yeah. Yeah, mm. like I wonder they yeah, they don't sit out to make a bad movie for their kind of ideological perspective and audience, but they do set out with malicious intent to destroy what they see as problematic. And and so in that sense, I think there's actually a lot of intention behind the crap. And that's what we've been trying to call out. It's like Wheel of Time is a classic example. They were very upfront about injecting their feminist agenda into it and stuff. And so there's a lot of purposeful intent behind the crap we've been getting hey and man don't stop it, making these historical videos about the nazis they were working really hard okay <laughs> yeah. they yeah. worked really hard making those camps look let's 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 call it like it is it, it, part of a uh, fandom for as long as it's been around has been what's your favorite what's your least favorite of the year what's the worst of the year what the problem is is there's not a lot of good right now there's a lot more bad going on with the Marvels, the DCs, the Star Wars, and everything like that, because it's been hijacked by corporate, uh, you know, these companies, these corporations. So there's just a lot more bad to talk about with the big tent pole movies. And so there's a lot of more negativity being discussed. If you want more um, nuanced discussion with best and worst, make, make some better shit out there. You know, it's really not that that difficult of a situation. But the best part was when Gary screenshotted like Collider 
uh, having their worst movies of the year. Uh, you know, it's like, yeah, right there. <laughs> <laughs> Written by the same guy. <laughs> yep. So. <laughs> Hang on. I'm looking for a clip that I could probably share if there is one that kind of describes like critics have been around forever. Plus, if you read any of the letters between uh, H.P. Lovecraft or Robert E. Howard or any other writer, that they're Tolkien, fucking roasting even. the shit out of each other. They're roasting the shit out of each other. Yeah. It's not unusual. It's been around as long as fan... Yeah, here, let, I'll get this to you. Hang on a second. But I, I also don't we'll think that's the intention this, behind this. Care. The, the intention behind this is to shame people so that you don't say the stuff is bad. Because mm -hmm. if, if the reason why it is bad is the reason why it was made, it's because it's got all their values in it, which nobody likes, which is why people don't like the movies, then the own, they need you to shut up because they need people to go and watch it. As That supports that, that, that is the point of the movie in the first place. It's not to entertain. It is to uh, push the stuff. And so it's the same as anything. The, the idea is to shame people, to play on other people's goodwill in order to mm -hmm. silence them. Yeah, then you can't say anything bad about Trump because I don't think he set out to do a bad job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> but right. for Steve Weintraub, this is his whole career is based off of being buddy-buddy with, with Hollywood. So if Hollywood goes down, he goes down. So now he's like, oh, uh, please stop saying bad things about Hollywood. Please, because then people will know, and they'll stop watching it, and then I could stop making money off of the articles. The The reality is that talking about how good a movie is means nothing if you can't also talk about bad movies. Exactly. Right? Yeah, if there is, exactly. It, 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 will, it will mean nothing if to say, oh, this movie was great. I, I think this movie was really good for these reasons. If you're not also talking about movies that you think are bad or subpar or for this reason or another really disappointed you. The, the whole, well, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't anything at all, that's fucking for three-year-olds. It's gay as shit. So shut yeah. the fuck up, say whatever you think about a movie. They're, yeah. It's not going to get any better. That's the thing. Bad movies aren't going to get better if people don't criticize them. No. Yep. Right. Yeah, there's, there's, a re there's a reason that people... And here, in a cave somewhere in the North American continent, about two million years ago, the first artist was born. <laughs> oh, this movie. <laughs> and of course, with the birth of the artist came the inevitable afterbirth the critic. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Is that caveman named Gavin? <laughs> He'd be pissing on his own uh, painting. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's funny. That is funny. I'm gonna get hit uh, that. I don't care. The real question is, Gary, were you there? I was there. <laughs> I was there. I was in the back. Oh my god! I was in the back. He was in the. That was when he was still working. He was mining that cave for Tesla at the time. <laughs> that was. Uh, that was the the yard of Gary's third high school. Record. That's right. I'm so old. I was there opening night for Birth of a Nation. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, so uh, no, go, going back to that tweet, that. it just. Yeah. Uh, going back to the tweet, it just reeks of the whole participation award bullcrap. They mm, put in effort, yeah. so therefore they deserve credit. So I was like, like, no, that's how you ruin quality. It's how you ruin merit. And of course, that's what the left have been trying to do for ages, to destroy right. meritocracy. Everyone gets the uh, uh, participation award. You are a winner because of immutable characteristic this, unless, of course, you're white, then you're, you know, uh, this or that. But that's what they've been doing for ages. And it's that philosophy just continually being espoused that you need to push back on because it is pernicious in what it's actually trying to convey and seep into people's minds but he would also have no problem with somebody like critiquing critiquing your book this is oh, literally yeah, exactly. don't take don't do it to our side is essentially yeah. what he's saying exactly. it's not everything is like it's it's not a a principle for him it's just a defense mechanism yep mm -hmm. cope it's a, this has been the year of cope 
for the access mm-hmm. media who are like, I can't even believe he still has a job. I can't believe Collider's still around. Because, uh, uh, you know, Clownfish has done a great job on this because they have an ad, a website. They know how the ads work and they know how, like, how much mo- the money is just drying up. And uh, the digital media, shit. But, like, what we do have, the big, the, the three main trades, right? Variety, Deadline, Hollywood Reporter, all owned by the same company. Mm-hmm. All owned by the same damn company. So that part's falling apart. And now you are seeing people who even work for those big trades going to Substack and stuff. But what... The fact is we're just telling each other. We're talking to each other now. That's what yeah. they cannot compete against. That's what Hollywood can't compete against. I have that clip in one of my strike videos of Tom Hanks talking about, you know, while we're on strike. And he's, he, he was trying to talk from the producer's per- perspective because he was a producer. He was kind of in the middle of it on the strike. And he's like, listen, guys, um, we are competing against something that's free. We're competing against mm. YouTube. We're competing mm. against TikTok. We, we can't compete against this. Uh, and no, you can't. That's why, you, like, Hollywood, we, we talk about, like, Star Trek losing a generation. Comic books have lost two generations. Hollywood's going to lose a generation. And, oh, yeah. once, and, yeah. and then once that happens, you start aging out and you start dying. Uh, and it and moves on to something else. They they're, need they're to also- look inter- internally and go, what is wrong with the products that we're putting out and why is it waning? And they don't do that because everything to them is everybody else's fault. It's you're racist, so you don't want to watch my movie. Right. You're sexist, so you don't want to watch my movie. You're whatever insert name there. So they need to look in and find out why. And we all know why. We've all said yeah, why. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, and they're, they're not going to do that though, because that would mean admitting that they're wrong. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, and also. Yeah, they'll never do that because they're ideologues. Uh, But in addition to what Gary was saying about who they're competing against, I'd also say that they're competing against their past selves, their past better selves. Yes, yes, absolutely. Because there is a lifetime's worth of great media, and we don't need the current crap. We've got, like, my kids, they have everything they would ever need for entertainment. And and if there's something good rarely comes out, I'll, okay, yeah, I'll watch that with them. Um. But the fu- but it's so funny because we've been getting all this crap and it's like, all right, well, I can watch Stargate SG-1 again or Person of Interest or Star Trek or like, oh, there's just mm-hmm. such great stuff that you don't need. And, and so, yeah, 2024 is going to be like a bloodbath when it comes to good entertainment. Well, guess what, everyone? You don't need anything that's coming out in 2024. No. Look to the past, find the great stuff, rewatch it, or find stuff you have. There's so much stuff that I haven't watched yet that yeah. it's got a great, like, yeah. falling down. It, it, goes like, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ghostbusters. All that stuff. Exactly. Falling down's X- great. Yeah. X ray goes, but I haven't seen Falling Down yet. And so that's on my list. Fantastic and, and just, movie. Exactly. So there's great films that I haven't seen that I'm going to look forward to watching for the first time. Dude, X-Ray Girl has been experiencing this for herself, for a great film she hasn't seen. And so 2024 doesn't need to look bleak in terms of entertainment. You have a lifetime. So it's wealth not. Of entertainment. What are the most watched things on streaming services? By far, are old sitcoms. It's like The Office. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I, Older shows. And by the way, The Office is friggin' hilarious. I was re-watching it not long ago, and it's just funny as hell. So there's great stuff, and you can be fully entertained, mm. and you don't need Hollywood. And and that uh, and so, so so funny. It's like, because current Hollywood is a shadow of what it used to be, and at the same t- sense that they're, there's sing- things that are very the same with Hollywood has always been, because it's been a degenerate hellscape for ages. But they did make good stuff in the past occasionally, and they're competing against that, and they're failing, because they're got well there's no one with real talent anymore can i go on a, a tear about this with the yeah, one trail of please? course okay congeniality and wholesome togetherness and niceness and supportiveness is the death of creativity creativity flourishes and is at its best when you've got people who are intensely rivalrous when you have strong rivalries and people are trying to fuck each other over because it hones people's skills and it sharpens people you go all the way back to the beginning with mozart and salieri trying to screw each other over You go to Beethoven in the salons of Vienna, where people would have to contest against each other by playing a known piece and then improvising over the top while the the ladies are are fanning themselves in the background, checking out the male players. It's rivalrous. You go into Louisiana in the 20s and 30s and you had piano players and they would try and screw each other over by being more dynamic and trying to win the crowd round. And and the news would travel for miles if a king had been knocked off his throne. And when Johnny Cash and Jerry Lee Lewis are touring through Canada in the 50s or early 60s, and Jerry Lee Lewis 
would whip the crowd into a frenzy because he wanted to be on the top of the billing. And when he finally got to the top of the billing, he walked past Cash and said, nobody follows the killer. And in the 60s, people would try and screw each other over, steal each other's girlfriends. They would try and up their levels of technical proficiency in the studio between the Beach Boys and the Beatles. Jimi Hendrix and The Who, they had, uh, they had to argue over who was going to go first. And, after, and Jimi Hendrix finally decided he was going to go first. And so he pulled out all the stops and set his guitar on fire and whipped the crowd into a frenzy. And in the 70s and 80s, rap battles would, would happen in the inner cities and you had to be on top of your game and you had to, to, to win the crowd and defeat all your rivals in order to get there. So by the time you got into the studio, you were so sharpened and so honed that you would deliver great content. So people fucking each other over and being rivalrous is the engine of creativity. Can I add in the the great modern rivalry as well that we should need to we should acknowledge? Uh, Nerdrotic versus Dan Vask. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is true even today. That is, yeah, is, yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep. uh, yes, it's... yes. How's he, how's he doing? By the way, I know he's like simping in the chat right now, saying you should just watch Dan Vask videos for the rest of time. I think <laughs> Dan, Dan, you've done such a great job, buddy. Uh, I say, you know, take six months off, just relax a little bit. I'd say wait till you know. Rings of Power season two, that's yeah. over <laughs> to come back. And you'll be rested and drop more songs. On top, that's his standard fucking schedule. That is, yeah, that's how he sure. operates. <laughs> and don't send super chats, please, because I'm tired of going into the negative every time you send your dog shit. Yeah, you know what that does? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, you know what that does to our tax forms, dude? It's terrible. It's fucking it's terrible. awful. And yeah, it's tax it, 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 coming up. and everybody acts like it's a big fucking deal because when he sends like twelve dollars, it's hundred. It's red. It's, yeah. red. Like, oh, it's red. So nice. I know Look, it's, it's red. Good. It vadered. It vadered. <laughs> 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 But uh, Chamberlain's point, rivalry, Absolutely. yeah, it does play uh, like the, yeah. the celebration of merit and drive to try and make something better. And uh, absolutely, that seems to be a lot, uh, not completely, but there's a lack of, lacking of it where, especially, have you seen like the, the whole actors interviewing circle jerking each other and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, it's and, fucking and, hilarious. Like, mm -hmm. Well, now they're focusing yeah. on equity, which is the exact opposite of that. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah, now, yeah. Now now they go into the Everybody studio gets a and trophy. they all... Okay, uh, I can identify as gay, even though I'm not really gay. I'll just say I'm gay. Uh, I'm quarter black, and uh, you know, my, my I, I have autism. I can just say I have autism, so I can. Sure. Say, well, you just well, that would them. be correct, wouldn't it? I, 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 <laughs> oh, did I just describe I go to Hollywood. Black Garrett? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm gay, I'm quarter black, and I'm autism. <laughs> That's your I day. need to be in Hollywood. <laughs> I host uh, Normal World. <laughs> I used to work with Steven Crowder. Yes. Yeah. Like, oh, if you weren't gay before, know. you will be after. Uh, <laughs> the Crowder motto. That's right. So, uh, d do we have our lists? Uh, the lists ready. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if a lot of people responded, so I don't have oh, a full I'll, list of everybody. So I, have say I mean, attention. I have mine here. I have mine here. That yeah, yeah, I mean, just say the people who responded, we can have a list. Uh, and if the people who didn't can just make one up on the fly. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I didn't I've got see, my list ready. I didn't submit I didn't see, it. I didn't see I most of the dog shit this year. So the Marvels <laughs> is the worst movie of the year. That's kind of the easy one right there for me. <laughs> I've got a top 10 best movies. All right. I've well, also got I, a top five best as well. I think yeah. my I my know. worst movie of the year is going to be a hot take. So all right. Ooh, well, okay. Good. Should we should we go like everybody's number one, then everybody's number two, yeah. or should we go number two, like number one I to think five? Count down. Five. I think we should count down. Okay. Don't start yeah. with number one. Yeah. Ooh. Wait, so this is the worst. You mean right? start with your worst? Okay. So the top five, it could be. <laughs> yes. You no. You start, we start with <laughs> five and then count down. No, no. Best or worst list. I'm yeah. my best. Jesus best Christ. Best. Highly organized. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right, let me, let me, I'm going to go through five, and give four and three, two, pick. one. There you go. Five, okay. four, three, two, one. There yes. you go. Yes. Oh, and then we all say it at the same time. <laughs> We're all, are we all going through five no, first? No, 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 no. Are we all no, doing, no, giving no, out number no, five? No. All right, Let's everybody's going to give their number Garrett, five. Garrett. All right, starting No, 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 no. That's a terrible way to do it. Let's just. Five, One person at a time. Are we okay, going yeah, yeah. one, two, three, go, or do we <laughs> go on three? <laughs> Who's on oh, no. second? <laughs> uh, ask the chat. Ask the chat. Take right, it to I'm, the I'm chat. Gonna, How do you want I'm going to fucking give mine right now. All right, this, right. Is, this is my view. All right, 
I could not pick a singular DC movie out of the four terrible ones we got. So my honorable mention is going to be the entire DC universe as right, the, right. the sixth biggest is that. It's my honorable mention. My fifth is Little Mermaid. And even though it made more money than any of those DC ones, I think that Little Mermaid, from the perspective of one, showing these Disney remakes are fucking dead in the water, and the just clear race baiting and like vitriol against anybody that didn't see it and the labeling them of, as a fucking racist or whatever, I think that did a lot of damage to Hollywood, especially with mm -hmm. everything Disney put into that movie. My fourth is Mando season four and Ahsoka. I'm putting those together <laughs> because they're both part of the same universe. And after the nightmarish Obi-Wan Kenobi that we had last year, Book of Boba Fett, people were hopeful that it would rebound and it was worse than ever before from a ratings perspective, from a fan reception perspective, and from anybody that did have hope in Star Wars for some fucking reason. It should have been extinguished after those movies. My third is Secret Invasion. Not only did we have a girl boss to end all girl bosses who literally gets every fucking power in the Marvel Universe, uh, but you also, any goodwill Samuel L. Jackson had in that role as Nick Fury just got completely and utterly destroyed. Secret Invasion was a nightmare. My second, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Um, all of that money put into that movie. And despite what people say about Crystal Skull, people still did have good feelings about Indiana Jones, about the franchise, about Harrison Ford in that role. And everything was just fucking ripped away from in every possible way by Phoebe Waller Bridge. Um, one of the biggest box office disasters in Disney history until the top of my list, which is the Marvels, the worst, the biggest disaster of Hollywood this year. That's my list. Good Wee. job, Ryan. Good list. Thank Thanks. you, Ryan. <laughs> Hell yeah. And I think I forgot that The Witcher released, by the way. Yeah, everybody oh, yeah. did. Every, so Everyone did. Everybody <laughs> did. We submitted our list for our uh, for our video, and nobody, I, I didn't even put it on. Like, we just completely forgot it, it existed. Oops. Whoopsie doopsie. We fixed it, though. Uh, okay. Uh, Jeremy, you want to do a top 10? I'll give you my top 10 favorite movies of the year. Godzilla Minus One is the best movie of the year. Um, it's... It's like I've only seen it the one time. I want to see it again. Um, I did not think I was going to like it as much as I heard the praise. And I'm like, there's no way this movie's this good. It is that good. And it's not really about Godzilla. It's about the human element within Godzilla, that, or the, within the story. Um, and it feels, it feels it's got Jaws elements to it. It's, it's just a phenomenal film and a, a phenomenal achievement. Uh, Oppenheimer number two, which... I thought it was going to be my favorite movie of the year, being a Nolan movie, but Godzilla minus one just topped it. But I thought Oppenheimer was fantastic. Rated R, biopic, three-hour movie, makes nine hundred million, insane. I loved, <clears throat> I loved Oppenheimer. Thought it was fantastic. The Iron Claw is number three, which I anticipated would be my number one after I saw the other ones. I was like, Iron Claw will be number one. Iron Claw is really good. If you know the story or if you don't know the story, it's still gonna going to to hit home with you. It's one of the most tragic sports stories you'll ever hear they did take some creative liberties within iron claw which will bother you if you know the story um but you can also understand it from a storytelling standpoint as to why they didn't go there and i won't give any spoilers um everybody kind of knows the story with the von erics though also the the portrayal of rick flair was just fucking offensive on every level it was <laughs> awful um if you know anything about wrestling if you know anything about nature that was the worst thing they could have done. But the Iron Claw is still a fantastic movie. Zac Efron, career-defining moment for him, and uh, not an e easy movie to watch. I'll run through the rest of them because it's kind of a jumbled mess here. Um, Super Mario Brothers, which I think is like a 7.5, 8 out of 10. It it's a good movie, solid. Not the greatest movie I've ever seen, but it was good. Tetris was fantastic. Five Nights at Freddy's was fantastic. Gran Turismo was might be the best video game show slash movie this year that i saw gran turismo was fantastic now some people argue that it's not truly a video game movie i think that there was enough elements because it's based on a true story but i think there's enough elements and enough um little nods to playstation and to gamers in there to make gamers really appreciate it from that perspective um mission impossible dead reckoning a movie that failed this year um did not perform as well as a lot of people thought it would but i thought it was a damn good movie and uh sound of freedom and guardians of the galaxy 3 that's mm -hmm. my top 10 right there so there you go right on 
Well done. Thank you, Jeremy. And the Marvels, the Marvels is the worst movie of the year that I saw. Uh, yeah, followed followed yeah, by horrendous. I, I'm be honest. Somebody asked me of this on Geeks and Gamers Daily. I don't know if I've just blocked it out. I don't remember if I saw The Little Mermaid. I really don't know. I think <laughs> I did, but I don't remember because I didn't I think care. You I think did. I did. I think you did. I, I, I think did. I probably I, fell asleep in the theater. Um, I remember watching it because I looked different than everyone else in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> um, Top Gun Maverick didn't come out this year. Does Top Gun miss? No, no, that was oh, that's last, year. That was last year. Yeah, because somebody said yeah. I missed. Oh. Yeah, um, but uh, the, but the Flash is the other. The Flash was terrible. Flash was awful. Oh yeah. But I didn't see a lot of like I didn't see Aquaman. Um, I didn't see a lot of the MCU stuff, but. Yeah, the Flash was an awful movie, and uh, but the Marvels is easily the the worst thing I saw this year. Easily, I have a question about a couple of uh, you know shows, movies, whatever. If they came because they might have been the end of last year, but I can't remember. Uh, Disparu will help me out. How it, was Willow? Like last uh, the year. last two episodes last were in January. Last two episodes were this yeah. year. So can we put Willow in the list then, or is it? I mean, I guess yeah, so. Yeah, that's all I can. You can make yeah. whatever list you right. want. So, <laughs> so oh, thank you. What about Blood Origins? Is that this year? That was last year uh, as well. That was last year. That was this is last. But it year, comes out it was like, like right six. Because I've got something on my list that came out at the end of last year, but I didn't watch it till this year. So it's on my list for this year. <laughs> yeah. And, and what about Velma? Was that this year or last? That year? was this year. That was oh, this year. Holy oh, shit! I forgot about that. Uh, yeah. I, I came close to putting that I one didn't. in mine. Yeah. That's basically saying my oh, entire shit. list. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Hey, Perry, about that. Perry, Perry, if you're out there, I got to add an honorable mention. I forgot yeah. about Velma. Yeah. Got about Velma. It was so forgettable, but it was one of the biggest dumpster fires ever. Wow. Uh, but, okay, because then I so might need much, it in my list. There's so much from this year. It was really fucking hard. Yeah. This year, to, that's to, what she said. Yeah. I sent Lady Gravemaster like two or three <laughs> lists because I kept thinking of new things. I'm like, oh, yeah, you oh, wait, no, this in it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because now I need I I I have All to. All right, have what's your list? All right, I, I some some got actually bumped it bumped out of the top five then, so I guess that'd be honorable mentions. Um, because I got to throw in Velma because that was just next level, and so I think my uh, list at the moment, uh, number five is actually the Marvels. Uh, it is a terrible, terrible film. But it wasn't overtly Ike woke. There were, it was intersectional, uh, and that's a, a, a strong work element. But um, and so I'd have to put Marvels. Then, uh, or uh, I, I actually no, but Marvels gets knocked off because I got to put Velma on the list. Velma is one of the worst, and I think Velma is far worse than Captain Mar. Sorry, the Marvels. Uh, then Indiana Jones. I think that's an obvious one. Um, the Wheel of Time season two, because wow, and I, I think of course our lists are going to be curated by what we actually watched. And I was one of the few people that watched Wheel of Time season two, whereas like I didn't watch um, uh, some of the ones that uh, probably could have made the list. Uh, but so yeah, Wheel of Time is definitely. I couldn't believe what they did with Wheel of Time. Then after that, Willow. Yeah, uh, if Willow's on the list, Willow's one of the worst things ever made it's amazing how bad willow was in a hilarious way uh my number one pick and i think this actually wins by a country mile in my opinion if you actually want to uh, rate the worst films by how insanely woke they are um and how much propaganda was shoved at it i think this one is the most woke bit of propaganda so far so far it was actually a bit of a face-off that um it even looked a bit Anti woke because they were so honest about it. And picking Barbie, Barbie, yeah. Barbie, Barbie <laughs> yeah, was just, <laughs> I to me, it was the most insane piece of woke propaganda that got pushed so far that it was even a self report on themselves. And people were like, This is actually saying how bad feminism is because of how far it went. But the thing well, why wasn't, I think this deserves what, it what, what, wasn't the fucking point of the list, the top five biggest like disasters I thought that in was like just entertainment worse. and pop culture. I don't know. I was just the worst films for me, whatever. Um <laughs> and so I think the argument for it is because the people who made Barbie were unironic. They everything that they put in there, they didn't mean to put in as a self-report on themselves. They actually they meant everything that they put in there as a type of <clears throat> promotion for feminism and stuff and that's why i think that takes the crown as the most woke insane piece of crap that came out 
this year. That's there you that's go. My... And Ryan, you're, you're saying right. you're saying Barbie. You're saying Barbie. 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 Yeah, he said Barbie. Barbie. I mean, I haven't seen it, but I haven't seen it either. Uh, so yeah. so the it. fact that like yeah. as <laughs> as many of them have a list at all, I I'm not gonna like get. <laughs> I'm not going to get bogged down with the details. It was supposed to be the worst. Uh, no, the fact to be that, fair, there was like three different titles that, that I saw in the chat alone. It was like biggest disasters, biggest no, flops, no, I, worst I, movies. But I, what I said is it, it could be TV shows or movies. You can like make yeah, it all yeah. one list. Yeah, but then Lady Gravemaster said it about four different I know. times. Right. <laughs> like, we, we don't Grave, know what the fuck right. we're doing. Lady Gravemaster. Highly organized. Highly organized. Highly organized. Highly organized. Lady Gravemaster is weaponized autism and pointed the right way. She's amazing. She can... Yeah. <laughs> Get a little confused. Ain't that right? She's back there right now. She's on my, my bed. <laughs> oh, I did forget to mention Rebel Moon was a piece of shit. So oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Zach, it's I haven't the, seen it yet. You know so what? I didn't. It's, it's, it's not the worst piece of shit from this year. It's yeah, there's way even, worse stuff for sure. Yeah. There's. Oh, man, it's. Uh, I, I well, think I, again. It, I haven't seen. It might make an honorable mention. I, I would say it wouldn't for me. I I would actually rather sit through fucking Rebel Moon shit. By the way, don't get me wrong. But I'd rather sit through that than a fucking nanosecond of Disney Star Wars of anything they fucking make. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that, that was kind of my view. Like, like as bad as Rebel Moon was, I think I enjoyed it more than any of the ones. Any that I put fucking on my Disney list. Star yeah. Wars. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. That, that, that's that's what I with. Oh gosh. That's what right. I struggled with. Would leave the world behind. I considered putting it on the list, and then I like, no, it's just a nothing movie. That I I don't even feel like there's content there to actually. No think but about no i just wanted my two hours back is the only thing I but thought it about was afterwards. watched by twice as many people as rebel moon <laughs> oh <laughs> so, really yes oh, i didn't know that bit. yes wow uh, uh so i'm gonna do my number um I, I have a best of as well so i'm gonna do the worst first number five mandalorian a lot of the same reasons ryan said because it, it was just like it personified the fall of disney everybody thought that disney star wars was back when Mandalorian season one came out and then season two came out and then season three is just a dumpster fire. It actually parallels the three movies very well. Uh, <laughs> number four, Indiana Jones and the dial of dysentery again, loved Indiana Jones. I, the character's awesome. The movies are fucking legendary. Harrison Ford's great. And, uh, Phoebe Waller bridge is, uh, just a, cow so that <laughs> i don't know I where you're gonna movie. go that that <laughs> um, more as a horse dude but, uh, that, my, yeah, hate, yeah. my hatred for that movie knows no limits like dude <laughs> it's it's <laughs> an abomination the heroes are trying so to much. save hitler it's just fucking trash three is the marvels because of obvious reasons uh marvels horrible movie poorly edited poorly acted poorly written poorly everything it's just bad the cgi uh, was good and I was going off of the disasters, not the specific movies what? or TV shows. So <laughs> number two is Hollywood Strikes because it was just horrible for Hollywood altogether. We've, we're seeing it in 2024. Everything's like half of what it should be. Good job, Strikes. And number one is Disney. You did it, Disney. You destroyed your entire brand, including all the different verticals you have. Marvel, Star Wars, Pixar, Disney itself. Good job. Number one. Worst disaster. And then my best is Godzilla, number one. I'm just going to start from one, one to five. So Godzilla, One Piece, Jury Duty, which was a surprise because I watched that randomly. And Jury Duty is that show where they have, it's all set up. They're all actors except for one guy. Uh, that was a really great show. John Wick 4 was really great. And another one that kind of came out of nowhere that I just randomly watched was Thanksgiving. Great slasher movie by Eli Roth. Highly, if you like those kinds of movies, go watch it. That's my number five. That's it. Thought you well, were gonna say Thanksgiving or Thanks Killing. Remember Thanks Killing? Oh, yeah, Thanks Killing. <laughs> <laughs> That's He's a sequel. Is, That's yeah, a sequel. Two. Right. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to Disbrew's list because his list of most enjoyed and the list of the worst yes. are gonna be exactly the same. <laughs> <gonna be> <laughs> that, that, <laughs> my number one is literally because I couldn't get any entertainment out of it, rather than it just being normally bad. So, all right, comics. What's your list? All right, I typically go the good, the bad, and the ugly route. So my good, okay. uh, number one is Godzilla minus one, one piece at number two, Psychopaths, Providence, which is a anime series that did a movie. Fucking phenomenal if you like it. Uh, I think it's probably one of the top five animes. Sisu, uh, also phenomenal action film. And uh, Picard season three. Uh, for the bad, Ahsoka, 
Uh, number two is going to be Mando season three. Uh, number three is Velma. Number four is the Little Mermaid remake and uh, Ant-Man three. As for the ugly, number one is going to be the Marvels. Number two, Secret Wars. Number three, Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. Number four, Rebel Moon. And rounding it off is Indiana Jones. Man, I forgot about Ant Man. That was so bad. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was pretty awful. There's a lot was, of shit this it year. It was bad, but it's it went it, Like, remember earlier in the year they were saying like, "Ooh, this is the year of the flop buster." <laughs> yes. It got so much worse. It got in, so in much ja- worse. In like June, worse. there was an article written in yes. June that's like the new normal for Disney box office disappointments. Blah blah blah. Right. That was after Quantumania, Little Mermaid, and Indiana Jones, and then it just proceeded to get <laughs> even <continued>. worse. <laughs> yeah. This year's been amazing. For yeah, it's been crap. great. I guess. <laughs> amazing. Oh, yeah. All right. So who's next? We're gonna go with Chrissy. Yay! Okay, do you want to hear my good or my bad? Whatever you good. want. Your bad. My bad. Okay, bad. I'll start from five up. Uh, I was very disappointed by Asteroid City. Uh, mm. I, I just thought it was weird, and I, I wanted it to be a lot better. Uh, Blue Beetle was pretty was pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I forgot about that, too. Uh, oh. <laughs> it's just very... Everybody very, did. Uh, we talked we talk owed about it. Uh, yeah. A little, <laughs> yeah, little we did. Mermaid. Little Mermaid, of course. Uh, just because that was one of my favorites growing up, and they just took it and fucked it. Uh, tied for <laughs> the second to last... Second to last worst, Ahsoka tied with Cocaine Bear. I couldn't even finish. I couldn't even finish Cocaine Bear. Cocaine Bear stuck. I couldn't even finish. And then Marvel's is the worst, in my opinion. Just hearing you say uh, those two together is funny. (laughs) (laughs) Cocaine Bear was terrible. Uh, A top five that I liked. Okay, number five was Barbie. I truly don't believe that it was woke. (laughs) I don't think it was woke. I think the feminist commentary was a result of just the realism of the of growing up in the 80s and 90s and it was commenting on on that. I don't think it was trying to be woke. Uh, Sound of Freedom. I really enjoyed Megan which was the movie about the the creepy doll that killed people. Yeah. Uh, Should have killed more people. That was my Should complaint with that more movie. more people. And then tied for second to best, uh, Mario slash Five Nights at Freddy's. Because I think with Mario, they were initially going to make it like uh, a Princess Peach girl boss no. uh, movie. Yeah. And then I, think that's a, I think that's that. a fake news rumor. rumor. That's what I, I, don't, I don't buy fake that. News? Um, well, I'm I glad they did it. There elements of girl boss in there. Absolutely. I, well, I'm saying and, is I don't um, buy that Nintendo, the, like, Nintendo stepped in to fix this woke disaster. I, uh, Nintendo would have never even let the, it get to the point of having to step yeah. in. Like, they're too protective of their IPs. So whatever and, they are did, yeah. or they did. Go ahead. I'm sorry. And Oppenheimer was good, of course, but I knew somebody else would say that. So my favorite was Godzilla minus one. It is. I think that's yeah. the undisputed movie of the that's year. That's top I, of like yeah. four yeah. of our yeah. lists. Everyone. So far. Yeah, it really was a phenomenal Everyone's movie. List. Top of my list. Just to spoil it right now. It's not like I've been saying it all year. It, uh, it, it, it just it, it was <laughs> like or since it came I, out. I, I the hype for that movie is like sometimes there's things that just go out of control. Like like Godzilla minus one lives up to it, man. It really does. Mm-hmm. So everybody needs to go out and see it. Is it still in theaters right now? Is it still yes. doing yeah. okay? Mark is still watching doing well. it right now. Yeah. Well, the it's funny fantastic. thing about Godzilla minus one is that most Godzilla movies people complain about the people in the movies. Where this yes. one, everyone's like, dude, the people right. were great. People made the movie. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. the best part. X-ray girl. What's your list? Ooh, okay. So the worst uh, with number five is the Little Mermaid. Number four, Indiana Jones. Number three, Ahsoka. Number two, uh, New Doctor Who. This, you know, specials were horrible. And number one with the Marvels. But uh, I'm excited for my top list. So number five, I watched it on the plane this year. Greatest beer run ever with Zac Efron. It is an awesome movie where he goes and gets beer for his friends in the Vietnam war. He actually goes to Vietnam and delivers them beer. To based on say, a true story. Yeah. Based on a true story. It's really good. If you guys haven't seen Did it, that come out this it. year. No, uh, it was last year. I checked okay. September. It was on, and then I, I'm going to watch it on a bigger screen, but I was like bawling on the plane. Cause it was so good. Uh, really? Uh, you didn't love it because it was a story about getting copious amounts of alcohol. No. <laughs> in Vietnam. 
<laughs> no, she she I, loved it because she watched a bunch of Americans die. She's Vietnamese. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, it, was, it, was. It, was it Tiger Beer? Was it Tiger Beer X-ray girl? <laughs> no, it was American Beer. He was delivering okay. American Beer, <laughs> which they can also get in Vietnam too, which is funny. So, um, and then number four is Sound of Freedom. That one came out of nowhere, which I really liked. Um, and then number three. Doctor Who season one to three and Torchwood season one. I'm going through it slowly and they're just so good. I can't wait to wait watch till every you get episode. to Torchwood season three. Oh, so excited. Some of the greatest, of the greatest television ever written. Oh, I love Captain three. Jack so much. Oh my God. What a great character. And it's so much better than everything else they did. It's so crazy. <laughs> it's so much better than all the other seasons. It's weird. Yeah. Uh, I, I still remember what was it? The. Was it the female cyber woman? That <laughs> had like a love story. Have, dude, I'm like, what was that? Oh I, my god, I just watched that I episode. Have that that action so figure. Weird. It's one of my most prized you? action figures, is the cyber woman. <laughs> She's in like a cyber metal bikini. It's freaking great. <laughs> Very random. I love it. Uh, uh, number two, Ghostbusters, because I watched that this year. I know it's like a 30-year-old movie, but uh <laughs> it's on my top list. And number one, Godzilla minus one. Yep. Well done. Well done, X-ray girl. Maybe next year you'll see Bridge Over the River Kwai or you know, Jaws. <laughs> Jaws. Godfather. Yeah. I, I need to watch Jaws. The, the Ten Thank Commandments. You. Yeah. Yeah. Ten Commandments. Ah, that's a great movie. Uh, thank you. Now we're gonna get to our guests. Uh, we'll start with Disparu. Okay, so uh, I've got two honorable mentions. One for Blood Origin. Wasn't this year, but it was close. Uh, next one was for the biggest disaster, which was Willow not getting a season two. I mean, I'm with I'm you, sorry. Like, well, this, <laughs> this is what we need. My heart hurts <laughs> for you on that one. This is it the does. 2024 announcement we need to save Hollywood as um, him getting another job in Wales. Uh, uh, my favorite part about that story was the fact that Warwick Davis didn't even know it was off Disney Plus for like eight months. <laughs> yeah. right? like, uh, it was like people just keep coming up to me and saying, where can I watch it? I was like, uh, what? Yeah, the dozens of people that watched it told me it got taken off. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, number five comes in at Valma. Uh, probably one of, if not the most hateful show about just everything. It just hated everybody and literally ends with Valma covered in gore twerking over Fred's mum's corpse in front of him. <laughs> and I'm like, this this is horrific for a cartoon. I don't know who, why it's that way, but either way. Uh, Robin Hood, the, the guy who, uh, the Canadian who said, nobody cares about Robin Hood. It's not as if it's a, a big part of anyone's nation's history or anything. And then turned the show into just a load of people thieving from a guy who worked for his money. Uh, he was the hero. Uh, like, and this was the most random show ever. They're literally in prison and then a bunny rabbit comes up to them and just start attacking them. Bizarre. Uh, you look goofy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's even without all the external stuff that went around it just yeah. as a show yeah. i don't want yeah, you to do that yeah. oh then he's got his dancing scene so I, that's probably my favorite moment of any television from 2023 it's just oh prince dancing to randomly at the end of the, at the end of a bunny scene um number three milf manor the the show about Oh, I forgot about I can't, that. I was not. I was not expecting to have that brought up. On <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, <That's> hilarious. <laughs> just, just put, just put yourself in their scenes. So it's like the, the the son meets the mom. He's like, I'm going on a dating show. She's like, that's weird. So am I. So, like, oh, where's your going? I'm going to Mexico. When? It's the same. We're going on the same. We're going to this dating show on the same day to the same place on the same flight. You don't think we're going on the same one, do they? And then they both get revealed. Of, oh, we never saw this coming. Uh, <laughs> after that. It was just creepy. One guy went around. There was a, um, a Jimmy Carr joke who says if he's ever a father, he's going to walk around the house wearing a T-shirt that says, I fucked your mom. And that's what that show was. <laughs> wow. There was literally just a Spanish guy going around with an accent who just pulled everybody and then went up to their sons and humiliated them in front of them. He could barely speak English, but it didn't matter because he had an accent. And, and that's a lesson everyone should know around the world. Um, number two, <laughs> Doctor Who. The, not uh, it only got worse uh and after after david tennant's first episode making it worse than the christmas special was particularly impressive but uh they managed. If we weren't warned yep. I, yeah uh I, I still don't know what the dancing scene is and i've still got it in my head so I, I i hate that show just for that alone and number one would be wheel of time simply because everything else on this list is bad 
but at least I could get some kind of enjoyment out of it. And that was the easiest show to make. You had everything done. You had a script in the books for you. You just cut out the, the description paragraphs and do that and cut it for time. Instead, they made up their own story, changed things which even in the books would have supported their worldview and still changed them to make them even more bizarre um, and crazy. not entertaining at all. And they went out of their way, literally out of their way, to rob the hero moments of the male characters. And then, well, uh, uh, the male character, he can't save you. So they had him get saved three times in a row by the women characters. He was <laughs> that it shouldn't pathetic. surprise you that the producer of Rings of Power is fucking the producer of Wheel of Time. Because they're married. And they're all fucking Ooh. the audience at the same time. <laughs> 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 well, well done, Disbrew. Thank you. And uh, I don't know. Did you have a list? Did you echo? Do you have a list? Yeah, I've got uh, my top five in random order. Um, Godzilla minus one, just because it wasn't a masterpiece, but it was just at that time of the year where I just felt so good being in a cinema where I didn't have to like brace myself to flinch against something frustrating on the screen coming at me. <laughs> so that would, it was like when you come in from the snow and you feel like your fingers start to thaw and tingle. That's like how my soul was watching that film. So I had a good time watching that. Uh, Blue Eye Samurai uh, is this really cool um, kind of anime show. And it's the most gorgeously rendered thing just to look at uh, and to watch with these beautiful spectacles. So check it out for that reason. Killers of the Flower Moon. I, I love the aesthetic. Uh, it's Scorsese. Um, three and a half hours. It, there was no problems with the time for me. Uh, what else have I got? Uh, Anatomy of a Fall is my film of the year. Probably no one's ever heard of, but it's the most gripping film I've seen in years. So check that out. And my last one is a bit strange, but uh, Rick and Morty. I thought uh, when Justin Roiland left, it was just going to disappear or fade or lose its magic. But I laughed my ass off throughout the whole season of that. So I had a great time with that. Uh, my bottom five, this is kind of a weird mixture, but uh, Doctor Who with, uh, I think, one episode which contains a um, colorblind casted Isaac Newton the historical actual character who's Indian. Uh, and then you've got the companion who's uh, transgender. And then there's also someone in a wheelchair who can fire lasers and explosives <laughs> out of their wheelchair. So uh, it just almost got to such peak inclusivity that I thought it was going to go into its own anaphylactic shock from just overloading <laughs> on itself. So that was strange. Uh, Robin Hood. And in particular, Director X's doomed publicity tour started off with him <laughs> talking to, to Mirabal Face Guy, which still is one of the most accidentally, comedically beautiful things I've ever seen. Where <laughs> he would say that you have to be serious, you have to be profound about this, and then cut with exquisite timing to the guy with the mirrorball on his face. Perfect. Uh, Perfect. And then that whole tour culminated with him disastrously opting to go on um, an interview with uh, Mr. H Reviews, and that was the slowest, most uh, painful dissection of another human being that I've ever seen, where Mr. H would just sedately and calmly break him down. It was so precise in its dissection. It's like when a cat uh, wants to impress you and it brings you like the remains of a mouse and puts it on the doorstep and it's like one lung and one other bits and pieces cauterized and cut out. That's how the, what happened to this human being. Uh, Willow I with its lesbian couple. The, uh, the lesbian couple just shunted in there just because lesbians are, are cool and modern, so let's put them in there. and Let's have them be lesbicious and lesbianized in lesbicious fashion because that's cool. Just shunted in there. Uh, Aquafina's rap in The Little Mermaid. Oh, which, uh, God. Just about, uh, Good God. Perforated my eardrums. Good God. <laughs> it uh, sucked so much ass that we're uh. if the, um, the suction device in, in Saw X had been taken off the eyes and put on the collective rectum and just caused a, a massive colonic hemorrhage <laughs> for the whole culture. Uh, if they, you know that film um, Event Horizon, where they found that lost footage of the um, of the the former crew. Yes. It's like if there was a, if there was a soundtrack to that. That's what <laughs> 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 oh. And uh, and Rebel Moon, just because it started off with it was promoted as a mixture of Kurosawa, Star Wars, and heavy metal magazines. When I heard that, I could almost hear like the Jaws theme, like this is going to be awful. And it turned out to just be a randomized postmodern goo slopped into our faces with no heart, soul, or meaning. So that's my list. Well done. Well done, sir. Thank you for making the list. Thanks the for the interesting thing about the Robin Hood director is with a lot of Hollywood, I kind of think like 
they they hate the audience and they're doing it deliberately and they're deliberately they're trying to piss people off he felt like he had no idea what he'd stepped into it was like hmm. why doesn't everyone believe with me like oh, his entire world had been people had agreed with kind him kind of rock tyler yeah and this was the first time he yeah. like was felt like genuinely hurt that somebody didn't like what he'd done like he'd never faced it before but it was you know unique. that's that's happened before and what happened uh we'll just say with the director who reached out to a couple of us, um, they reached out to us behind the scenes and just wanted to chit chat and say like, what's going on with this? Like they asked like real questions. They gave their perspective. I gave my perspective and it was a really good conversation. Uh, they didn't want to like run out and fucking promote anything or make any like bullshit about this on stream. They just wanted to talk about it. And uh, I gave them my perspective and I said, listen, I, you know, these are all my opinions. Uh, I have some, facts that i found that are publicly available to everybody uh and uh we had a good conversation i wish we had a whole lot more of that but yeah you look it looked like his world was just absolutely rocked uh mm. and oh well oh well but then so, he came out and he did the exact same playbook about calling people who yes. disliked Robin yeah he did racists. it's <laughs> and then he walked it back on mr h's um podcast did he yeah he did yeah I, I think it's literally he had no other it, he couldn't comprehend that somebody would disagree it's with factory him. And so settings. that's the only reason he could yeah. defaulting yeah. but the i factory think it's settings that's all you do yeah. when you're and you're, your mind is blown you just go ah racism <laughs> <laughs> misogyny uh so i've got um my top five woke disasters and honorable mentions will be out sunday uh garrett and uh well perry's been working on it for perry's like, doing most of it 90 percent of it right 99 percent of it you're just yeah. coming in and sweeping the floors basically yeah, yeah, uh that's yeah that's good for the you know quarter black and you gotta take somebody's gotta magic. take the trash out okay quarter black magic <laughs> um you could be my quarter black uh magical <laughs> <laughs> magical <laughs> screw the american society of magical negroes that's what happens. Is I, I get a oh, little down. I get a little down, and Quarter Black comes in in a janitor's uniform, going, "You need That's some right. help, Mister Gary." <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you do Sorry, another uh, take, Gary? Right, you feel right. better about it. If we had to pick who amongst our group out the in the fellowship would qualify as our magical person of color, yeah, would it be Quarter Black, Garrett, or Ripper? <laughs> Ripper. Uh, I was going to vote for myself. I was going to say He's Ryan. Got more points. <laughs> He's got more Ryan. Points. Ryan. I mean, yeah. I'm black from the waist down, so I get to qualify. <laughs> so, you there you know. go. Um, I get... <laughs> and I'm well, not scared of saying magical Negro either. So I think. I know, well, I <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that gets you in there. I'm scared I'm to say it. into the meme. It's Neither just is John Campia. Okay. Neither is John Campia. So, <laughs> John, hey, John's braver than me. Love that name. Woke, woke. Uh, you're faster than me. Good job, Garrett. Good job. See, you're getting That's there. That's magic. By the end of the year, you actually hit a clip on time. That's that magic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quarter black magic. He's proven it. He's our magical Negro. All right. So I have kind of like my top my top TV shows and movies. So you'll see the worst in the video. So uh, not necessarily. Oh, no. This will be in order. And we'll start with uh, we'll start with movies. As somebody who, who came out with Oppenheimer and said, you know, came out. I, oh, okay, I didn't. You, I, pa you paused there for a minute. You paused, you paused I've come out. Whoa! After after watching Oppenheimer too, it's weird. Wow. <laughs> sure, wasn't Barbie that did it? <laughs> no, it was Oppenheimer. No, and I said I said I, I'm not that into biopics. Like honestly, there's a three way tie with biopics <laughs> so this year. They were really good. Oppenheimer is one of them. wasn't my favorite movie of the year, but like it's Nolan, and it was really fucking good, and people liked it. Uh, Air and Tetris; those were all three of those movies were fucking solid. And uh, and uh, Gran Turismo is on my list too, and that's kind yeah. of yeah, that's a biopic too. Mm -hmm. um, John Wick Four, Equalizer Three. I fucking loved Equalizer Denzel, Three. Baby. God, Denzel. that was such a good movie. Uh, the Killer. And uh, my favorite movie of the year, obviously, Godzilla Minus One. Uh, TV shows, which I watched far more of than I did movies this year. I watched a lot of fucking TV shows, and 99% of them were absolute shit. But here are my top. Here are my top TV shows. Uh, and it was this was tough. This was tough. Now, I got to count one that came out at the end of the last year that I watched this year. Uh, so as far as my top five TV shows, number five was Euro Crash, The Grand Tour. It's fucking amazing. It was a special that came out a little while ago. 
Uh, uh, number four is Clarkson's Farm. Uh, it's a fucking fantastic show. Everybody should watch it. It's fun for the whole family. Uh, number three is Tulsa King. Tulsa King oh. season one was the shit. Tulsa King uh, is excellent. Jack excellent. Posobiec's favorite TV show. <laughs> he soft blocked me because of that whole Did interaction. He? I, yeah. took a I took a. I took a. Well, I mentioned him in my Rebel Moon video because it looks like it, yeah. the, her boyfriend who dies looks exactly like Jack Posobiec <laughs> <laughs> in Rebel Moon. Uh, uh, so that's number three. Number two, Picard, season three, and obviously number, number one. one. One piece, baby. So yes. that's a good year. For that yeah. Stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How do you count Reacher in there? You've only seen five episodes. Well, okay. So Iron Claw, I have not seen, which could easily go into my top five movies. Another biopic. Uh, <laughs> I'm not finished with Blue Eyed Samurai, but that would go in my top five too. Uh, and mm. Reacher, I would say it's looking that way, even though last week's episode, a little weaker, still better than most everything I've seen this year. And it's been a good season so far. It's been a good season. Re Reacher, yeah. Um, we're not going to finish it till next year, so it's going to have to go into next year. There you go. No, I mean, One Piece is uh, One Piece is so good, and I've watched it multiple times, and it, it just it holds up. It's fantastic. Have you stopped and, thinking uh, about it? Huh? Have you stopped thinking about it? <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah, the whole <laughs> meme there. Like, uh, I, I can't stop thinking about Godzilla Minus One, to be honest, at this point. I want to go watch that again. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. One Piece is really, really good, and, and it holds up. And I know, like... Um, people that are t attached to the the anime there are some people that do have issues with it and i think that's valid that's 100 percent valid sure. um and um it'll be interesting to see what they do moving forward with some of these live action adaptations because uh expect more of them now with all the success from one piece expect a lot yeah more. it'll be interesting to see how many people watch actually watched it when netflix uh releases their their list for the end of the year i think in six months uh because nobody watched the witcher Nobody watched The Witcher. And uh, and then, like, when it came out part two, even fewer people watched it. It was, like, Jeez. way down the list. And uh, wow. The Night Agent was their number one show for the first six months of the year. So my wife really liked it. I didn't watch it. But, uh, yeah, and the video will be out Sunday. Uh, and, uh, yeah, sorry, Steve. We're going to do our top ten worst every fucking year. I'll do it every month. Oh wait, we can't. <laughs> Don't be we mean. Can't. Oh, it's pretty easy. A lot of trash. Point. Don't be mean, Gary. They they work really hard. Based on the release, really hard attacking the fans. Don't attack them. Um. Yeah, the the, the fans work really hard for the money. It's okay to call them toxic all day long like that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, Steve White Again, not only paints his nails, he he sounds like he sits down to pee. So. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> what a loser. <laughs> There's a reason these guys used to be relevant like six, seven, eight years ago, and now they're they're not very relevant uh, anymore. I, I, I don't. I've only like seen a couple of things, couple little interviews with him. But I mean, he sounds like he gets fucked in the ass so hard you can't even hear it when he farts. Like that's <laughs> what the dude sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Fro wow. Frosty, his, it, it, Frosty has he was well known back in the day. This is kind of pre TFA. Um, him, you know, because they had the whole Collider movie talk thing, and Collider has always been a pretty big entertainment website. And him and Slash Film, and who's the other guy from? Um, I know Chris Gore. I was trying to remember his name before. Peter uh, Shitretta? Is that who you're no, talking about? No, Slash? no, but that's the guy that's from Slash. Slash Film. But yeah, that's Slash Film. Peter Shitretta. Uh, that's from Slash Film. Uh, he's fat. Um, and then there's the guy. Um, Head Geek is what he called himself on Twitter. Uh, Ain't It Cool News, I think, is what he ran. Um, oh. and, and he was kind of... Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Ain't it cool what's, that guy's name? what's that guy's name? Yeah. Um, I am blanking. Like a, oh. If somebody's... Harry Knowles. That's Harry it. Knowles. James in the chat. Yeah, 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 me, got no. Me too right off yeah. his own website. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I, yeah. I, got a clip, I got a clip that describes all of these guys. Now, what I've got here is a scrotum and nothing else. <laughs> uh, but yeah those guys kind of dominated the the nerd sphere of yeah. online discussion before the force awakens and um it kind of all imploded after the last jedi because the majority of them started to call uh all the criticism of the last jedi from racist toxic fans and that was the beginning of the end for them taken seriously now they still have their corporate um overlords that they suck up to but 
that's not as uh that's not as uh successful as it used to be and that doesn't keep them as relevant as it used to be busting their ass being a fan you know that's right five years <laughs> five years baby five years five uh, years that was baby face off moment right there <laughs> to get out of yourself uh it, yeah it really wasn't a good look and uh, they're all out trying to make it on their own and god bless them uh but uh it's well, tough. I mean, then they, they're all like, they all have like, uh, again, I used to watch a lot of those guys and it really just comes down to, um, we are in the age of your audience is who you work for. You don't work for mm -hmm. the corporations. No, you don't exactly. work, you work for the fucking audience. And if you start talking down to the audience, the audience literally is going to do to you what you do to movies. The, the audience is going to criticize you. They're going to critique yeah. you. It's your job mm -hmm. to say, okay, am I going to listen to this criticism? Am I going to listen to this feedback and at least apply it where I think I can? It doesn't mean that you have to well, do everything, but at least listen and hear people out and try to apply some of those things because even if people are coming at you um, really aggressively, there's still good points to be had if you're able to just look beyond your own ego and hear the criticism. And a lot of those guys... They haven't they haven't figured that out yet. They haven't. So no, they haven't. And uh yeah, the the screen froze. Sorry, folks. Oh, okay. The See, a lot froze. of people try to tell us, hey, be more organized and be uh more, <laughs> more you know, we just can't we can't do it, you know. Nah. How it is. No, that's how makes, it is. You know what makes it a lot easier? Being honest. Because when you're yeah. honest, you're yeah. gonna get criticized, but you're gonna go, Well, I mean, that's that, that was my honest opinion. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. like that's it. Uh, yep. When you're not being honest and people start criticizing you, it starts to bother you. It yep. starts to get to you. And you can only keep up that front for so long. And how many times have we heard? I mean, there's multiple cases now of the access media going, yeah, yeah, we're a little softer on the studios. Well, yeah, because you're making no shit. <laughs> you're making your shit for the studios, not for the audience. That's where the access media lost their way. Yep. I mean, comic book websites used to make used to be for the fans. They used to yeah. be for the fans, and then they forgot that, and then they started looking down their nose at you, and you can you can tell the way they act. It's like I get in free to a comic con. It's like oh okay, well you saved good for you, good fucking, fucking cares. for you. I've been <laughs> I've been on that press pass too. Uh, you don't get shit. You get in for free. You get to hang out in an empty room. You get access to some B level fucking reviews. It's not that impressive. I would rather pay my ticket and just go around, and I'd have much better time. Uh, but the, no, the, it's it's about it's about their self-worth coming from what the studio hands them right and mm -hmm. and we're just like i'm gonna I, I we jeremy has it right the only people we're accountable to is our fellow members of the audience that's it that's all that matters that's and if you do it. right by them you'll be just fine and uh, a long go ahead go ahead disagree a long time ago, there was a thing in the gaming industry where it came out that, I, I can't remember who, who admitted it, but it was one of the websites. They were like, yeah, you know, we'll give better reviews because we sell direct advertisements to these people and no one's going to buy the game if we say it's trash. So we kind of have to say, you know, it's, it's not too bad, it's quite good, because otherwise we'd have to rely on third-party advertisement and that's what gives you a lot less than direct sales. Um, and you, you, you get the same thing with the movie industry. It is like, if you want to see it first, if you want the access, if you want them to uh, keep giving you all the benefits and pay for the advertisement on your website, then you're going to have to start saying it's good, otherwise they cut you off. That doesn't happen in YouTube, wow. specifically because there's such a wide breadth of advertising mm -hmm. on the platform. It doesn't really matter what you say about it. As long as people watch, that's all that matters. And people watch if they like agree with you or like you or think you're being honest. One thing they despise is if they think you're lying to them. And so yeah. the only thing that matters is that you're actually authentic and it goes from there. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's very important. Really important. Well uh, let's well get to said. the people, shall we? Shall we get to the people? The people. Agreed. The people. Uh, our the fellow, people. Our fellow people. The people. The people. Uh, Matthew Bogard for 350 Zardozes. <laughs> that's south african money uh it's z-a-r so i just call it a zardoz uh thanks for an epic year of content gary the whole fnt crew the dead kiwi the long uh welshman it's been a shit year for disney but an amazing year for south africa uh rugby world champs 2023 baby uh, congratulations now uh nice <laughs> You might want to get the hell out of your country, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're white, yeah. 
totally I'm nothing going on, on over the there. Tone. Yeah, th- those those are the immigrants we won't let in, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> We're fine with everybody else. Uh, they're also hold up tur- the swatch. You're like, mm, too well, white. Christie's saw a bunch of them the other day in Phoenix. You did? Well, yeah, you're well, in not South African ones, but a bunch of migrants. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, Chinese? No. Uh, no, Haitian the, and Venezuelan. Yeah, the yeah. I was gonna say the South American and and also some from Ghana. Know how they got here, but hey. Oh yeah. Well, Ghana is about to get invaded by Venezuela, possibly. So they're going to annex some of their lands because the dispute with the UK over uh, God, I can't isn't, remember one. Isn't Ghana in Africa? No, am I thinking? Was Venezuela? Are you, are you thinking of the Falklands? No, there's what's the country? I'm sorry, I'm, I got to confuse with the country that's right next to. Well, there's Ghana and Guyana. Guyana, well, I think that's a different. Country. Yeah, one of Guyana. the one of the shithole countries. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought you were about Argentina and the folk because he's on about. Oh, we we won that place back because we did taxes now well, <laughs> after he got elected. Uh, Argentina. No, it's it's uh, Ghana or Guyana, whatever borders uh, Venezuela because of oil rights. There's massive coastal oil, oil rights, and oh. Venezuela is going fucking broke. That's why everybody's leaving. But they're losing all their yeah. skilled people. They're actually losing all their skilled people, and they're fucked. So they need to annex or retake the country they feel like is theirs anyway, so they can get those oil rights. Something, something to that effect. Fun, fun. You know, I know you come to geopolitics. Friday Night for geopolitics, <laughs> where we can't kill <laughs> Ghana from Guyana, okay? Uh, That's Anna, that Star Wars girl's guy name. Guyana. Oh, yeah, Guyana. 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 Uh, <laughs> That's post, That's post-op. Uh-huh. Uh, no, these guys these guys were Africans. <laughs> they, were, they were from Ghana. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Uh, Drunken Finn for 50 euros. Happy New Year. Uh, now that we have enjoyed as is RIP replacements, the English lesbian and eldritch Welsh monster who was supposed to pay for the uh Maury's who oh the Maury's who perform as his funeral haka. I mean, they must be annoyed doing it once a week with uh for the whole month. I don't give a shit. They got to do it. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care, but yeah, it is. It's getting expensive. Thank you, Drunk Finn, for the fifty euros. That's almost proper money, almost, but not quite. Not a British pound. Uh, Raider three for one hundred and one ninety nine, and all this says is hail, 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 hail. hail to hail. you. Thank you, thank you. Ministry of Wrong Thing for forty nine ninety nine. <laughs> Have to admit, I saw something with Jennifer Lawrence. I actually liked. Possibly the best thing she's done. Some artsy piece. I believe it's called The Fappening. <laughs> so emotional. <laughs> I went through a bo- <laughs> so emotional. I went through a box of tissues. <laughs> Truly top tier uh, jerking event. I thought he was going to mention that Man film tears. she was in. What was it? No hard feelings. No hard feelings. Well, I yes, think it- that was actually pretty good. I, I heard people were only seeing it for one scene specifically. Yeah, her naked martial arts. Scene. Yeah, she gets Happening. completely. She gets completely naked. Ooh, well, good for yeah, her. Like, like full frontal. Yeah. yeah, it's not like we hadn't seen it before. So full frontal, like running, <laughs> fighting. Full naked. frontal, like yeah, like well, like power walking and like body slamming people and shit. Like yeah. Viggo Mortensen just getting yeah. down in that in the bathroom fight scene. In the bathroom, just yeah. like that. Yeah, this yeah. is just Eastern in the middle promises. of promises. Uh, Great this, movie. This is in the yeah. beach. That's where this one was, yeah. Uh, that we have sand everywhere. Uh, Matthew Bogard once yeah. again for three hundred and fifty Zardozes. Two thousand twenty. South African peso. I could say that. Uh, Two thousand twenty-four is the year we beat the Brazilian to number to one million. You're in the lead, Gary. So how we've got? Uh, so now we've got to keep the faith. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Lord, we got to keep the faith. What are you saying? I'm gonna fall behind. He's not gonna make another video for six months. I got him right where I want him. He made a he made a Christmas song. Christmas is over. Nobody's gonna listen to that song. I don't care if it's got half a million views. So you know, well, it's kind of a lot. But um, <laughs> I don't care that he's like. You know, closed it, closed the gap of <laughs> ten thousand subscribers in like a week. I, I'm not worried about a thing. <laughs> not worried about a thing. I got that. 
He's going to be very busy running from gangs of murderous children who want to steal his food and kidnap his family members. Okay. He's going to be a busy, <laughs> mm-hmm. busy guy. Uh, Alex uh, Merchenko for $100. Hail Friday Night Tights, and thank you for taking the bullet of garbage that was two, uh, 2023 media had to offer. You saved me more than this super chat is worth. Gary, I regret nothing after fracturing my ankle skydiving, but you slash this wonderful community keep me uh, company while I'm recovering. I miss the skies. You're fucking crazy. Yeah. Hey. Wow. That's cool. That's cool. I will. That is something I will never, and I repeat, never fucking me do. Skydiving. Yeah. <laughs> what? You, who said me too? Is that X-ray girl? Yeah. You're more likely to kill yourself in a fucking car accident than you would skydiving. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. But I, I actually had a coworker that would head first into a post after a bad <laughs> dive, so it does happen on occasion. And when it does, it's pretty fucking bad. Hey, Garrett. Well, um, yeah. No shit. Yeah. No shit. <laughs> he lived oddly enough he lived uh can cannonball run do you think we can do it this year oh i'm Lots down dude i am so down we gotta we, we need to get it's some gotta be sponsors. small it's gotta be yeah. small we, we gotta get some sponsors for that yeah we yeah that's, we that's, dude, i yeah. want to do that so bad cannonball run if you are mm. interested in sponsoring a cannonball run email. Well, what is that like I mean, a polar bear club I, I have a pitch i have a pitch that i, I will pitch somebody with money. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we need uh, to get GoPros and the cars and yeah. Uh, somebody get Eric July on the phone. To it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah, I, I, won't, I won't refund your donation. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, that was whatever. Uh, Duke Devil ninety five is gifted twenty neurotic memberships for one hundred dollars. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Eric's been having some fun on Twitter. I had a little fun, too. I had a little fun, too. You had a little Uh, fun. You know what? It's kind of like the Miles Morales tweets. Uh, If if, if that particular tweet about uh, indie publishers pissed anybody off, uh, you told on yourself. You just simply told on yourself. Mm. (laughs) End of story. That's it. it. Uh, Never tell me the odds for $50. Hail FNT, after an absolutely atrocious year of entertainment, I can honestly say I do know what you sacrificed for us. Happy New Year to the FNT crew, the chat, the 199, and the fellowship. Happy New Year to you guys. Happy New Year. Oh, my God. This is, this is six parts. Yep. Let me, uh, let me get this right. Hold on while I whip this thing out. Excuse Let me, me fill some time. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, AJ, hey, what's your top five? <laughs> what, what, what's your bottom five? <laughs> Is your he's internet got still em- not working, Jay? Uh, go- he's got enough emotional expressiveness. Oh, yeah, he's yeah, and a Marvel uh, person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, could be a, <laughs> he could be a Marvel I, main character right there. Yeah. yeah, I will. I will help. I'll tune into Friday Night Tights next week. We're gonna see if we can get his internet fixed because it's just yeah. it's it's just not connecting and he's not hearing oh. us. I don't think so. We'll we'll get him. We'll get him on here though. Subscribe so to Drunk Three PO. Yeah, he's gotten more shout outs this week. <laughs> the entire year. We saved up the whole year just for today. Though. Just for Jay. Oh yeah. Has he hit 100k yet? Is he still? He's getting there. there. He's getting, he's, there. Getting He's getting there. there. He's getting there. He's getting there. He's, getting there. He's got to make videos. I mean, making videos. <laughs> hey, hey, he makes more videos than Jeremy. Aww. So, hey, that's not well. I'm not live streaming. I live stream like four times a day at this point. It's fucking crazy. Uh, Duke Devil ninety five six parts for three hundred dollars. Duke Devil. Crazy. On the Streamlab side, circumventing Papa Susan. Thank you. I hope everyone enjoyed their mm-hmm. holidays with their family and friends, be it Christmas, Hanukkah, or Ryan's favorite Kwanzaa. There were a <laughs> lot of ups and downs in 2023. The biggest down, of course, to one surprise, was Hollywood's downfall. Of course, 
Far more tears were shed over FNT's loss of As. I hope I'm hopeful that 2024 mm -hmm. somehow As will return like Palpatine. I hear AI tech is advancing quickly, so maybe we'll see As 2.0. We kind of already have. He's been kind of building himself. Mm -hmm. The 2.0. Did someone say AI? Yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> Shad got excited. Uh, I which did. I am. I did. Which I imagine will be uh, Svelter than the original. For me, I had quite a few ups turning 50, surprisingly positive. Yeah, 50. 50s are totally the new 40. Ask any 50-year-old. Um, making partner. <laughs> <laughs> making partner at my law firm. Congratulations. That's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Good job. Uh, is your law firm uh, Wolfram and Hart? Sorry. Been watching a lot of Buffy and Angel here. And starting my own channel. And I really uh, have to credit F&T for the last one. Without the meetups, I would not have been able to meet so many people uh, who have helped me and let me join their streams. That happened because of FNT and the fellowship. And I, I think I'm finally getting the hang of it, too. Uh, since I got called a transphobe and a homophobe. Oh, welcome. That's that's, that's yeah. your initiation. That's all you got to do, oh, man. Hey, you're doing it. For my Doctor Who reviews. Yeah, well done. I got the same thing. <laughs> I must be doing something right. You are. With 2024 a few days away, I know we're all looking forward to the craziness that will happen as the simulation continues to glitch. I know some of you uh, have sworn off Dr. Shooty, but I'm excited for new episodes of the Gallifreyan Society of Magical... Mm. Garrett? Mm. He grows. There you go. Oops. Uh, some word got cut off. Anyway, can't wait to learn what new names I'm called for Dr. Shooty reviews. As always, thank you for all the great content and hours of laughter. Hail FNT. Hail the chat. Hail the fellowship. Happy New Year and see you all in Vegas. See you in Vegas, baby. Yeah. It's April. Fantastic. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. God, we did a lot of meetups this year. Yeah, How many do you do? Yeah. Dallas, Vegas, UK, uh, Wisconsin. Wisconsin, Wisconsin, LA, LA, San Diego. It's like six. Six. Is that it? Yeah. Wow. I feel like we're for, I'm forgetting one, but uh, a lot. Houston. Yeah. Houston. That was kind oh, yeah. of a meetup. So we were in Houston. Yeah. yeah that was oh, fun. Yeah, that's right. That was fun. Looking forward to our Egyptian meetup. I wonder how many people yeah. will show up. <laughs> so, Meet us at the Sphinx. I mean, was Meet it. us at the Sphinx. What about, what about an Australian meetup next year? Dude, that yeah. is Australia a real place? Is Australia a real place? Honestly, I'd rather go to New Zealand. Yes, exactly. We'll meet you in New Zealand. We got Hobbiton. We got Hobbiton. You got everything you need. Come on. Yeah. And don't forget, we do have MegaCon. Uh, so I know Geeks, Gamers, and Ripaverse going to be there. I don't know if Gary is going to be there. If I don't go to Egypt, oh. I'll be there. So yeah, so we have MegaCon early February in Orlando. Ripaverse. Oh. G and G in the house, and uh, we have panels, and we're gonna do we're gonna do quite a few uh, things. I think they uh, still got to get all the full details. Uh, I was talking to uh, to the guys from Riververse yesterday, just working out all the details. But it's gonna be a really big uh, event, so we're looking forward to but it. But it's at, inside the con, right? Is, or yes. are you gonna do yes. one outside? The, okay, we're we're still looking at those options, but yeah, everything like we're seeing if we can get some space in the con and everything to do a separate thing. But I don't have that confirmation yet. Uh, Vegas will be same, as far as I know, same place. A uh, couple nights. We're doing a, a special screening thing, and it's during CinemaCon. I, if I go, I go. I don't care, honestly. I don't want to hang out with the. I don't want to. I don't want to bump into John Campia. <laughs> or maybe I do, <laughs> but he is invited to the meetup. Open invitation Ooh. to John Cam Campia to come to the meetup. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Caboose Mobile for fifty dollars. Hail and happy new year. Today is the 10 year anniversary of this job. Hail. Uh, I'm thankful for all that I have, my job security and those who have been there for me during stressful times like I would be for them. I can only hope next year isn't too bad. I don't, you know what? Uh, everybody's predicting the end of the world. I'm not. I'm not. I'm going to be the one who isn't. 
I, yeah. I don't think. Uh, I think yeah, we're good. I think 2020 is is going to be way worse than 2024 is going to be. So I think you've already been through the worst. I hope you're right. Uh, I think 2024 is going to be pretty fucking ugly. <laughs> I mean, I think it's going to be pretty it's fucking be ugly. crazy, but tw- yeah, 2020 I, I, was crazy I mean, we're already, like, to we're the max. Already, yeah, but I mean, I, we're not going to go down. I'll talk about all this on Cobracast later. Like, they've arrested Trump four times. They, they've take, taken him off fucking ballot okay, right now. That's, that's, now you've got that, the Republicans. That's one guy. To, that's one guy, but you had the nation shut down for yeah. a fucking year for a fucking And the riots. And they shut it down everything. for that one guy. They shut it down for that one guy. Okay, and that yep. one guy is still <clears throat> here. And they can't, and they're going to do and something. And they can't shut wait for the next again. one. So at least we won't get shut down again. But uh, <laughs> that's what you think. Could Bernie we have Sanders like a just, just we won't get shut down by we'll the way. No power. <laughs> Could we do like um a Friday Night Tights bunker somewhere? Yeah, like yeah. Dip in. A content yeah. bunker. Content yeah. bunker. Yeah, there we a go. Content bunker. Screw your content, content houses. Yeah, what a content uh, bunker. Yeah. Yeah. Constant vigilance. <laughs> no black yeah. shells. And and, and and Bernie Sanders just did his NPC tweet about uh, he caught COVID. He's Who gives isolated. A shit? I got what, my twelve booster. Is he booster. isolated? Is he isolated? So I've got wait, eight wait, wait. boosters. Is what I'm I- saying is that's how it begins. Is what I'm saying. Is like, he isolated it, in one of his three mansions or is it so, four now? Yeah, the I know. Socialist. They're gonna yeah, try some that. shit. That's all I'm saying. So sure get they ready. are. Mm-hmm. Sure they are. But uh, you know what? More people are way more awake than they were four years ago. So let's hope so. But you know what? Yep. Show up to that election. Vote local. Oh hell yes! Fucking vote local. That's yeah. that's your most important thing to do. Uh, you know, what, presidential politics are one thing, but you know what? You know how you know how the progressive infiltrated everything locally. Local. Fucking local. Yeah, and yeah. pay attention to culture. Mm-hmm. Follow the process they, too, because yeah. it was the processes by which these states randomly changed their laws that allowed this crap happen too. Yep. 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 And mm-hmm. get on Twitter because that's about the only place that's a mainstream platform that you can yeah. actually see the true stuff going on. Yep. It'll be that's certainly, it will not be boring. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, so the DJ has boring. gifted 10 neurotic memberships for $50. <laughs> <laughs> Smooth the DJ for uh, now 50 more. That's actually euros. Thank you. Says, hey, Gary and crew, can't be with you all tonight as I am super busy in the hospital shift going on. That's cool. However, I wanted to wish you all Happy New Year and hopefully uh, start 2024 with a bang. Much love to you all. Hail to the fellowship. Lock it in. Yay. Yay. (laughs) Uh, Smooth put up a tweet. I I think it was right around uh, Christmas talking about how he was attacked. He was attacked and left for dead uh, in his home really? country. Yes. Yes. Uh, beaten almost to death and survived. So he's a survivor. Go, go read that tweet. It's pretty insane what he's yeah. been through and survived and uh, come out the other side much better. Uh, and he talked about like being aware of your surroundings, even in public. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's something that I learned way back in my prison days. Always keep your fucking head. Do not assume you're safe walking around anywhere, anywhere, yeah. anywhere. Uh, and it keeps you uh, from going through something as horrible as that. So uh, I'm glad you made it. Disco Cobra, 2013 for $50. <laughs> this just shows how you creatively, uh, just how creatively bankrupt Hollywood is when 95% of your movies are either sequels or remakes. Same with Gaming World. Sure, some are good, but what happened to innovation? Wokeness has infected all. Almost everything alternate yep. media for the win. Could not agree more. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Welcome gamers to the culture war. Yeah, yeah. Dan Vasca, <laughs> Dan Vasca announced that uh, the gaming culture war finally hit the gaming industry in yeah. 2023. Oh wow, so. huh. yeah, that's, <laughs> that's interesting. Huh. That's very that? insightful, Dan. <laughs> very insightful. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, in in probably 2029, Dan's gonna be like. Man, the culture war finally hit Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> it's like movie games. It's, it's right around the time when Eric July realizes Sean Connery's passed away. <laughs> <laughs> Dan's in the chat and yeah. says, listen, I'm Brazilian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Leave him alone. He's in a yeah. third world country. Yeah. Well, uh, new travel's slow there. Mr. So. Slime for $49.99. <laughs> Here's to another great year of FNT. I'm one of those extra weird comic guys who actually likes Aquaman. So the new movie makes me sad. At this point, Jason Momoa definitely doesn't feel like uh, Peter David's Aquaman, let alone Jeff John's take. No, no, not at all. 
He's fucking Lobo. He's Bro Lobo playing Aquaman. It's not. He's Peter low bro. Yeah. He's low bro. Low there bro. you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, Grendel Vivat has gifted ten, 20 Nergrotic memberships for $100. Thank you. And the members, the new members, thank you. You can watch a preview of my new video, which will be out Sunday. Buster Nut Smash for $250. Damn. Wow, wow, wow. Damn. Woo. Thank you all for another great year of FNT. Rest in peace, as I'll fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for the kind words. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, David Smart for $50. And uh, back to Buster real quick. Uh, yeah, there's hopefully we can top this year. Uh, maybe we'll plan something once. That's my goal next year is to plan something once and follow through on it. We tried a list. We tried a list, and most everybody had a list. So, I mean, it's progress, not perfection here. That's that's yeah. kind of our, our <laughs> They were motto. all different lists based our off motto. of different <laughs> parameters, lists. but hey. Yeah. Uh, that, that gave a lot of different viewpoints. I enjoyed it. It did. It did. Uh, I, I love you guys. What was that? I prefer an echo chamber. <laughs> <laughs> or an echo chamberlain. Oh. <laughs> Multiple times. <thumbs up. laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to be nice to Chrissy because she I so hard on that joke earlier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's Aww, gone. Poor Chrissy. <laughs> <laughs> Those who try the most fail the most, Chrissy. How many times do I gotta say that? It's good. It's good. You're you're yeah, not afraid to Yeah. How do you think try. I got pregnant? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> practice, practice, practice. I, I like just the practice, simple practice, fact practice. that practice. just the simple fact that Gary says that. Those who try the most fail the most. How many times do I have to tell you that, Chrissy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be uh, supportive by being like really condescending. Uh, David Smart. <laughs> You just try growing a man inside you who's taking 95% of your brain. Oh, man. Baby brain is a thing. It yeah. Is. Sure it is. Yeah, it's called being a woman. <laughs> it's called it's called being a Zika baby. <laughs> David Smart for $50 says, I love you guys. My friend Edward Zeeland told me about all of you because he was sick of me praising John Campia because he was a he was a fake, and all of you is the real deal. And after listening to this show, I never go back. Love you. Happy New Year. Hey, you can go back oh, to yeah. Campy. It's fine. You know, last time I checked, he's hunting for stuff. Right? <laughs> <laughs> just loves himself some Toby Maguire's dick. Yep. Mm -hmm. It just goes to show you, though, the authentic voices do rise to the surface. Sure. So. Absolutely. And, and and if he was, then you'd find out he doesn't know very much about movies. But uh, and uh, robs the entire show. Hail RMB, by the way. Hope you yep. succeed against uh, Alec Peters. Oh, that's a rabbit hole, man. I'll explain it on a noon or someday. But uh, Robert's getting. Uh, I think he's getting sued, and he's counter suing over a copyright claim over uh, exposing a uh, a guy who oh, did the Axonar fan film. Yeah. Uh, guy initially back because I just thought he was a fan, but then you know, more facts came to light, and it's not somebody I would have anything to do with ever. Uh, but Axonar, Prelude to Axonar, good shit. It's actually really good. Uh, Jamie eight seven one nine on the Streamlab side for fifty dollars. <laughs> started listening a few months ago, and I love the uh, the reviews. Thanks to this group. I'll be spending my ninth anniversary tomorrow watching the Lord of the Rings trilogy extended edition with my wife. Oh, that's a keeper. Yep. By yep. the way, Alamo uh, Warner Brothers must have listened to us, and they're doing some 20th anniversary screenings oh. in January. Yeah. Fucking idiots. Fucking idiots. I, 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 I'm just glad it's happening, okay? I'm glad it's yeah. happening. To be, to, be, to be fair, considering they have, they released three movies at the same fucking time at the end of the year, their December yeah, was pretty I, packed. I mean, I'll go see it if it's in theaters. Oh, it's at the Alamo Draft Hell House. Yeah. Uh, comics already bought our tickets. So <clears throat> Sweet. Alamo nice. Draft House. Uh, I think it's the Alamo Draft House like throughout the country. So if there's an Alamo Draft House near you, it's on uh, 18th and 19th of January, Return of the King. Uh, Return of the King. So uh, go see it. 
Uh, hey, have you announced who, you, who you're replacing on uh, your show with Adam Krigler after his Lord of the Rings take? Have you announced uh, that? Not yet. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking, okay. you know, like Adam would be such little of a loss that maybe it was just me and Garrett and X Ray. <laughs> we just <laughs> cut him right out. Just cut him right out. I mean, you know, I could pluck another male model who knows how to duck lip and play guitar. <laughs> So for those, Dan, yeah, he, so he, Dan, Dan what a colossally in, bad take. He, he, tweet, he tweeted out Sorry, that bro, he prefers you, the uh, re regular uh, cut of Lord of the Rings over the extended editions. He honestly wasn't being like, it, it, it was a fair take. <laughs> yeah, I don't I, agree I, with him. I don't actually, agree with him. This just, it's in, fair, this just in, I have his replacement, Ian Crossland. And now he's planning your demise. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this you is demonic. Least, you have to at least do like you have to at least do like a funeral so someone can you Googleize him. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> The strangest uh, bit that he says, I prefer the original with knowledge of the extended. So it's like, so you do prefer the extended then? Yeah, but you must, yeah. I, I had to have watched it one yeah. time and only ever watched the short one after that. And yes, uh, I watch just, it every laziness. single time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> extended. Can I tell you guys a cool Lord of the Rings story? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. No. When they were uh, making it, uh, Peter Jackson, he wanted to get the sound of the Orc army. So before a rugby match, like, you know, a New Zealand version of football, he went into this, this the, the big stadium with like 40,000 people in it, and he just got everyone with a loud hailer and just said, okay, and he marched out the movements, and he got 40,000 people to go... <laughs> and they recorded that as the audio... Uh, really? Sound. Oh, that is cool. Yeah. That is Thank awesome. You. One yeah. of the many reasons why that is a superior franchise, and uh, a Critical Drinker's video on that being like probably the last like epic is truly, mm, I think, so just good. so spot on. Yeah. 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 And stra strangely enough, that... Uh, Trilogy has a um, higher than 37% completion rate. So go figure. Well, that, wow. That's yeah. more than Ryan. That's more than mm. Ryan. I was... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yellow Flash is in the chat and says Adam is right. So now. Uh... Get out of here, Yellow <laughs> Flash. You're delusional. No, hey, I'm watching listen. extended, extended I, it, edition. What you guys don't realize is that yes. Lofty hacked Flash's account. So he's, he's in the no, chat. No, Lofty wouldn't up. agree with that. No. Uh, yeah, no, no. Well, this is, no hold on. Oh, this is all oh, spamming. Oh. This is all stemming from Yellow Flash's Christmas movie tier list where he put a Muppet's Christmas Carol in the in horrible. horrible, horrible. What? Yes. Yo. What? Yes. Oh, no, no, no. This is the guy who said. That Bla is horrendous. No, no. no. That's a heresy. travesty. That's heresy. This is, this is the guy who said Blade Runner's overrated, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. That's fine. Which I'll version? Take, I'll take. Uh, which version? Because that's a legitimate question, <laughs> if it's depending on the version. All the versions. Theatrical. Uh, Theatrical not, is not overrated. It's fucking the best. The theatrical version with the narration is the best version of no. Blade Runner. Mm. It spoon feeds everything to you, dude. Uh, it I like makes the director's version. No, no, no but, wrong. But 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 with Flash, Harrison Ford adding his very over the very yes. <laughs> very low energy. Absolutely, yeah, like, it's the best. I was version. asked to come and do extra. There's like a hybrid version with that. That it's the best version. It's like the international version. That's the best okay, version. Yeah. That's the fucking best version. Ah, uh, Final Cut, man. Well, as, Flash as, Final. One of the only yeah. people who saw it in a the theater on this fucking panel. And this echo <laughs> just because right, you're, you're old doesn't okay, mean you're, you're right. right. Exactly. Yeah, well, you're one of the when only I was a kid, I saw sure. that in the theaters. Let's be fair. You're one of the only people that saw it in the theater, period. Nobody went out to see that's fucking true. Blade Runner. That's true. That's, right. <laughs> that's true because my mom took me. And she, the she, my, my mom took me, but she read a book while the movie was on. She had a lot of time on. read a book. Didn't fucking look at the movie. It was me and my friend Doug Johnson, if he's out there in the chat. What's up, Doug? I'm never going to let this whole thing go with Flash's uh, Christmas tier movie. That's list. crazy. <laughs> that is Muppets crazy. Christmas Carol in the horrible tier. No, horrible. Wow. How wow. high was uh, Jingle All the Way? I saw the, the conversation. Jingle All the Way that. was in the, the second tier, I believe, down. Okay. So you had like That's where Die Hard. Uh, was like Die Hard was in the top. Yes. What else was did he have up there? He had. Did he have Santa Claus 1? What about in the, Elf? In the top no. tier? What about It's a Wonderful Life? Elf should be in there. Uh, it's a Wonderful Life was in the Should low, it was in the terrible. What? <laughs> okay, even more so. That's I, I kind of oh. agree with that. I don't like that movie. It's, it's a it's Wonderful Life. Like three hours like, long. I hate oh. you. It's, so it's a Wonderful Life was trash, like the terrible, the lowest tier. And then oh. uh, Mir was Miracle on 34th Street, I think, was on the tier above on like the terrible list. Yeah. That's better. What about Love Actually? 
Love I actually was on, on that. there. I think that was on there. Was I would it? put it. I put I, the second, the second t- from the top tier. I put Love Actually. I watched some debate. Here it is. Yeah. Here it is. Gremlins <laughs> was a fucking Christmas movie. Hashtag, Home Alone two in the horrible tier. Oh my gosh! Cancel what? Flash. We should have done a tier flash. list for this year. <laughs> oh. To to come to Flash's defense, it was a group effort on Flashcast, and they were really so, drunk. They were really fucking. Yeah. Drunk. You put Medea <laughs> in the same category. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Medea is the same as like Miracle. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, I wouldn't agree with okay. that. Guys, I guys, agree guys, Die Hard 2? Die Hard 2 is not a fucking Christmas movie. It's not. Really? really? Die Hard 1 is not a Christmas movie Die either. Hard 2 is not. No, it is. Die Hard 2 is not. Die Hard 1, yes. Die Hard 2, no. Even though they're traveling for Christmas, Die Hard 2, I don't really consider it one. Yeah, they get into Christmas for the first 10 minutes, and then it's just a fucking airport movie. And by the way, they're both based on books. You know, those things you read. But That's true, yeah. See, but I don't even think like I don't. Words. I don't have Batman. Or I don't think Batman Returns is a Christmas movie either. Same. It's not yeah, a it Christmas is. movie for the same reasons that it, Die Hard is. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oswald exactly. Cobblepot was born during Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> and the whole movie takes okay, so place ba- during Batman Christmas. Batman Returns. I, I'll, I'll, I'll. I'll. You know. I'm. It's Christmas movie to it's me. It's debatable on say, that one. It's really debatable. Die Hard is not debatable. It has absolutely it, it, got yeah. every hit. Every it hits every beat of a Christmas movie. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. It, it, it starts Christmas-y. out. It starts out it heavily, actually, heavily Christmas. Well, except in the early being Christmassy. Uh, dude, yeah, or, or in the early no, 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 beginning, no, no, but the no, middle, no. the middle of the movie where all the meat is, there's very little to anything Bullshit. to do with Christmas. There's music in the background. They're singing songs, and then there's the imagery. Oh, oh, oh. Then oh the, I have a machine gun. I have a machine yeah. gun. Yeah. Then there's Christmas tree. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Nobody. This literally a quote from Santa. Claus. <laughs> but but hold, what, what does make it what does make it Christmas is the entire reason John is there is to have yes. this yeah, again there he's there to Chris try to reunite with his family and throughout the course of this thing both he and his wife realize that the most important thing is not the fucking bickering not how they got here but going home like together and reuniting their family mm-hmm. like that's what is yes. most important mm-hmm. that's what they get at the very end it's in the DNA um, of the yeah. entire you could, you wait, could wait, wait, change it's, the period it no. could have happened in Easter you can, and it's the you same can movie say, you can say that about no. a lot of these fucking yeah. movies if you want to he's got the I, gun taped the, with packing tape with Christmas packing tape I don't see it starts with her. Christmas so, mu- music. We don't see it ends Santa. With we don't music. see an elf. Wait, wait. Is that, is that, is that Christmas ain't Anna. about Santa. The chat says <laughs> it's a Christmas <laughs> movie overwhelmingly. Yes. Oh, 100%. Yeah. The chat I think this to, debate is dumb. Nine. We have, it, we need to stop debating this. No, it this, is. No, 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 no. It's really debate, not this, it's really this, not a debate in terms of the discussion because you're going to overwhelmingly it's going to be like 90% well, of people I love are I love yes. how you called because it trendy. Right. Jeremy, you called it trendy. This is yes, a debate that's been happening is. since the day after it came out so. in 19 <laughs> fucking 88. Okay. He knows trendy. he was there. He, he was, was there. there, man. He was there. No, what it's I'm been trendy since it came out in July. Of, like in, in July of fucking what I got in July. It came out in July. What, it was immediately called a Christmas movie. Immediately. What, what I'm saying I, is that it's overwhelmingly, if you sit here and say, I personally don't consider Die Hard a Christmas movie, but if you do, that's okay. You're fucking wrong! And it's like, bro, I, what the fuck? Okay, You're, okay. It's fine if you think it's a Christmas movie. I fucking don't. I hate pineapple yeah. on pizza. Uh, but hold Jeremy, on, that's Jeremy, not, Jeremy. That's not what Chad said. Like, Chad's like, I don't personally consider it a Christmas movie. Chad's like, it has none of the things that's making a Christmas movie. You're right. Fair, you think fair. it's a Christmas movie, you are wrong. To be fair, Chad is only responding to the constant, like, fuck you if you don't think hey, so. Hey, and it's like, Okay, that's fine. Let's let's agree to disagree, but we can all agree Adam Adam Krigler is fucking retarded. Yeah, he's fucking wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Crazy, craziness. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not letting. No. Fuck that. Yellow Flash is retarded for that tier list. All right? That's not where go. Yeah. I stand with Adam before I'll stand with Muppet <laughs> Christmas Carol. Being in, in horrible? Oh, horrible? In horrible? Like, yeah, I'll, horrible. Even you, I'll even give you... I'll leave... Home Alone 2 is top tier for me, but I'll give you that it's one because so it's literally the same movie in a different yeah. setting that is Home Alone. So I think the wanna, gags are better. In so, um, but I, I do not accept Muppets Christmas Carol being a horrible tier. I don't. Yeah, that's it. insane. Oh, that's and, insane. And, and, no, I, I agree with you. Oh, no, no, no. D Day Cobra, I agree with you, sir. On there. there we go. It, it might be see, Michael Caine's see. best performance. It's really in good. Well, dude, it's I mean, really, dude, really good. How many Michael Caine yeah. movies have you seen? <laughs> okay, like he's really I'm, fucking around good. ten. I don't, I don't okay. fucking know. All right, Matt, Mr. Caine, we need you to to play a fun character. All right, I'm gonna play this thing super serious. <laughs> you got it, bud. <laughs> got so, it. Uh, WG really is uh, on the Streamlabs side has donated one hundred dollars. WG. WG. <laughs> 
I'm just gonna say it. W WG sent me a PS5 for Christmas. What? Wow. Wow. Yeah, it was WG. Seems like seems like a waste, but hey. Uh, we're gonna get Gary on. We're gonna, we're wow. gonna get Gary on some gaming. I'm actually year. it's hooked up to my home theater, bro. Like it's not even in my gaming room. It's in the home theater, and I'm gonna play like one of the two games you can buy for it. You know, uh, <laughs> Spider Man. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Hey, Miles Morales. Morales. No, I'm not gonna yeah, play Miles. Morales. Morales. I'm not gonna play fuck God of War. Get the God Dude, of War. I'm, play, getting, I'm gonna get Gary girl, on Fortnite. You get I'm to play. Fortnite. I'm getting <laughs> Gary on Fortnite. I'm getting Gary on Fortnite. Oh, it's gonna happen. You just want the lower MMO. If we live in New Christmas. I Dude, if, it, what's if I get Gary to play Fortnite, we're gonna win every <laughs> 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 because it's gonna be Gary lobby. He's running into a tree. <laughs> uh, I'll be gaming this week. Uh, you know what? You hey, folks are all right. Happy New Year, says WG. <laughs> hey, you, thanks, bro. You're all Thank right, you. brother. Hey, uh, just for this will make you happy, but I'm playing the finals tonight for the first time, so I have oh, not it yet. So hey, if you need a third. I'll play. I've, got, I've already got three, and I've got a couple backups. But if depending on how long we go, I'll hit you up if you want to hop. Because I know you love this game, because you yeah. apparently think it's amazing, and it is. Uh, it's awesome. I can't, I can't wait to play it. So yeah, it's gonna be the first time I've played it. It's the most fun I've had in years. Um, it really, it it, it harkens back to um, like Bad Company Two kind of days of FPS rather than oh, more yeah. modern stuff. So really, oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Echo Chamberlain, do you play Fortnite? No, I don't, I don't play any type of computer games because I know that if I start, I'll just go down a rabbit hole and end up chronically addicted <laughs> and sad and lame. <laughs> like me! Like me! <laughs> no, I'm, I'm even worse than Gary. I, I can't even open doors and I get really frustrated with the basics of gameplay, so it's not for me. Well, Gary has trouble opening doors in video games too, so... <laughs> I was I was pretty <laughs> good. Well, if just if nice. my friend Scott's out there, he might disagree, but I got pretty good at Diablo, but that was because I was going through a divorce, so... That's great motivation to just shut everything out and just play a video game and get lost. No gamers are born. Yes. Although if it if it does make my money as a revenue stream, then I will strip naked and play video games live. Hell yeah! There we just go. put the bars over. But Twitch put the is bars like in the wrong That's place. All you gotta do. Put like a bar over your eyes or something like that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, Neil Oakley for two hundred British pounds. That's proper money. Ooh. Damn. Just a token of gesture of thanks to you all for the brilliant Friday nights, the videos that tell it like it is, and for being on the front line for all of us. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Neil. Thank you. And to you, the fellowship. Uh, LDG hashtag free the net has gifted 50 neurotic memberships for $250. Holy shit. Retro Meister. Retro Meister for $50. Hail Gary and FNT crew. <laughs> I'm at work tonight, but wanted to wish you all a happy and productive and prosperous new year ahead. Can't wait to see what happens next on FNT. Hail to the fellowship and the 199. Wow. Hail the 199. 99. Nine. Uh, ben Wellborn for $49.99. <laughs> I'm moving to Texas. <clears throat> I won't miss my old ranger job. Remember the misbehaving bear I had uh, to relocate? Uh, she towed away in the moving truck, and now my wife is missing. Did you know mama bears have six boobs? Not just two. Life is good. Okay. Wow. <laughs> wow. All right. <clears throat> Ronan the Crusader in two parts for $100. Ronan. Hail hey. and tea. This year has been quite the white pill in terms of entertainment. Hollywood burns to the ground while foreign and indie media media rises to the occasion. And I love how Godzilla is becoming the cultural behemoth he truly is. Best film of 2023. And I may, and I and many others here appreciate you all having to trek through the absolute garbage that exists so we don't have to. Hail to the Fellowship. Hail to the Ripperverse. Hail to the Iron Age. Hail the King of Monsters. Have a happy new year, and God bless. God bless to you, too. Aww. Robert McDonald for $50 says, best thing I saw this year was, well, uh, Garrett, are you reading this? You're oh, right. um, uh, the clip. That's probably the Elon. 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 Go <laughs> yourself. Is that clear? I, I hope it is. 
Hey, Bob. <laughs> Epic. <laughs> Absolutely. Best clip of the year. And there's there's a lot. Like, looking back, there's a lot of fucking... Cr- uh, there's stuff we completely... Like, Velma. I just yeah. completely forgot about Velma on my... <laughs> Velma, but, Witcher. Witcher we put in. There's lots of honorable yeah. mentions. But there was... You could have easily made a top 20 woke disasters. E- easily. Like with these, um, this there's I, been no year like this, N- none. Yes, I, I knew the Witcher. I knew the Witcher is bad when my, even my wife, who is usually very oblivious to the culture war stuff, said this show sucks now. <laughs> 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 like from the episode of All is not as, as it seems. seems. Like literally, we're just singing it back and forth to each other because of how. And, and you're like, hey, I wonder if uh, Null is uh, not all is that as it seems. I wonder if they're <laughs> no, right? tricking us, right? <laughs> Wait, that's what we were saying. It was like, hey, I wonder if not as all as it seems right now. Oh, oh, okay. Weird. Totally weird. Huh. Hey, I wonder if that random guy Galadriel met his Sauron in the very beginning of Rings of Power. <laughs> 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 oh, wow. Well, that was painfully obvious. And hey, it, we got a because... Sauron of color now. So, is your interpret? I, I got to go in a little bit, but is your interpretation of that, that the, um, that that is going to be like before? Like the original, original version of Sauron that before is he's like cast out. Possibility that that is Sauron in his original form would be like fucking energy for one. So well, that's right, what right, right. human form. <laughs> yes. And uh, that could still be interpreted as as Anatar. I don't think they're going to do Anatar because they kind of did that story already. They, they did do that's the thing that's oh there you go uh, <laughs> that's the thing i don't understand is because they already fucked up anatar's story but if this is supposed to be imagine how fucking retarded they would be for Celebrimbor. like after getting tricked into making them another random person comes in and is like hey you ever thought about making more and he's like oh it's a good idea <laughs> like <laughs> I, I can see them doing it but it just doesn't make if, any if sense if it's a guy like in a costume if they if they have his original form and it's some kind of ethereal thing it still needs to look elven and angelic and and fair right. that's that's largely that, is, he, that guy is not fair that guy is um, not fair okay yeah by the description maybe the he's descript- just word you know like snow white you know yeah but yeah if, exactly. but if they have him like yeah. in the sauron costume as sauron with the big fucking helmet like right here I, that's fine i don't care but yeah, um and they're not gonna do that they're not gonna do um, that this is gonna be sauron. do they even have the rights to 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 the word anatar though do they even have the rights to that no 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 so they that's don't. the thing no not really so they, they only they, have the they, appendices, right? They don't have the right. rights to Elrond. They had to purchase that from Warner Brothers. <laughs> wow. They don't have the rights to Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> if they if they want if they want to call the stranger Gandalf, they would have to lease that or rent it from Warner Brothers. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. I don't think, think they're ever going to say who he is. I think they're just going to drop recognizable lines and let everyone assume. Yeah. 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 Otherwise, mm-hmm. why not put it? There's no logical reason you wouldn't call him fucking Gandalf in season one at the end. Mm. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it like, hey, we want to get normies. This is Gandalf. We're not going to call him Gandalf. They can't call him Gandalf. That's how fucking retarded this is. They're working with nothing. They're working with mm-hmm. absolutely nothing. They're going to make it all up. Well, there's certain things in the appendices they don't have the complete rights to because they're sharing it with Warner Brothers. Um, I got, they tried to explain, intellectual property law is the most murky. If anybody figures it out, then you figured out the the hard hardest form of physics there is in, in this reality. If you figure out intellectual property law, then the simulation will start breaking down. That's, that's how <laughs> fucking murky and weird it is. Um, well, it was done out of greed. It's like with songs. There's a sync license, then there's one for the lyrics, then there's one for the music. So they split it up into so many different parts just to make more money so they can resell it multiple times. It's yeah. basically a scam from the original company. Absolutely. But well, you know how, uh, you know how weird loophole. patents and intellectual property... So you notice how all the menus are different on your streaming services? And some of them are kind of a pain in the ass. You can't find the start over mm-hmm. button as easy. Mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and it's because Netflix owns most of the patents to all the fucking menus. Wow. <laughs> so they have to make the menus different. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's really bizarre. And it's not... In, you know, like Amazon <clears throat> Prime's kind of got a shitty... Uh, th- th- there's... 
fuck. Every time I'm like finished watching something and it goes to previously watched, it's something I watched seven months ago. And the mm-hmm. and uh, I even went to Netflix and uh, Rebel Moon didn't pop up right away. <laughs> I was like, oh, I shit. had to search for it to yeah. find it in the first place. Maybe that's for the best. You know? oh, I, on Prime Video, I had to mm-hmm. fucking search for Reacher on the night it came out. I had to mm-hmm. search for Reacher. It, well, they had they had like an issue with that one because it yeah. did get like it got showed, but it, well, you weren't able to like watch it, so there was an issue with that. Sure. And uh, that happened to Rings of Power a couple times. I think uh, Max is okay. Max there's some weird good, stuff yeah. with Rings of Power. Well, too, remember right? when they the second episode? Uh-huh. You you might remember this disbrew. They stopped the episode like 15 minutes in and played some yep. commercial. Yeah, you had to rewatch it, and then you had to restart the fucking episode. Uh, that was shady as hell. Counts as two views. Yeah. Two views, baby. Mm-hmm. It, it's uh, so but, pointless, though. It's like, who do they think they're kidding? It doesn't improve their bottom line. You're literally just making a number go up to make yourself feel better. Yep. So it's pointless well, lie evidence. It's just or, yourself. Well, no, or to make it's shareholders success. feel better. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's exactly like Disney did. When, that's how Disney was able to fucking trick the market. They announced all these things during the lockdown. We're doing this streaming service. We're going to have 10 Star Wars <laughs> shows. We're going to have 10 Marvel <laughs> shows, blah, blah, blah. And everyone's like, wow, Disney's really going to take over streaming. And their stock shot up. And none of that was real. Oh. None of those things were real. All the subs were fake. All the subs were fucking, ver- not fake, but they were like, hey, look at all these Verizon customers get access to it for free. All this shit, all that shit. That's Same sure. thing they did with this $1.99 deal at the end of this fiscal year where, they, hey, look, guys, we got a 4 million subscriber bump. Yeah, because you almost gave it away, but it was enough to trick shareholders How about, into thinking, well, I guess things aren't too bad. You're right, Ryan. How about the, uh, I forgot, Tom retweeted one. And I forgot who retweeted the other, but uh, oh, it was Jack Beers. So one was like Star Trek uh, Four was supposed to release on December twenty second, two thousand twenty three, and he's like, "I'm gonna go out and see Star Trek." And then uh, Rogue Squadron was like the same day, right, or within one day. Wasn't Blade? I think Blade was originally supposed yes. to come out like in December or November, back when Kevin Feige initially brought Marashala Ali up there to be like, "Hey, look, we got another black story for you," but that that hasn't worked out so well. Yeah. But How'd you say his name? Said, Mahershala Ali. <laughs> um, but no, I, I got I to gotta bounce, though, guys. It's been awesome. Last FNT of 2023 in the books. I guess we'll, we'll be back next year, probably. I guess we'll be back. That's, Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Ring the endorsement. Maybe. Thank you, Ryan. Maybe. Maybe. Ryan. Maybe we'll all go skydiving. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. All right. I'll talk later, to you later. Yeah. Uh, New Year, Ryan. Take care. All right. Um, we got with two the, more. With, it, with Indian Sauron, uh, is that the first time they've actually race swapped a character in the middle of a show? <laughs> well, it's <laughs> another version of. of the character. So it's, but yes, technically, I think it, no, no. I, I bet you there's an example of a show recasting somebody and changing the race right in the middle. It's got to be recent. Chat will. Or machine got darker. Yeah, because, that's maybe because the actor died or something. But this is like okay, we're just doing this now. <laughs> War it's, yeah. it's got darker. The original, it's the original Doctor Who thing because they did say in the <laughs> Fellowship of Fans uh, original reporting of it, they said that um, it was the ethereal guy. So in Doctor Who, they went back and said, well, actually, Doctor Who's daughter is a little black girl. It's the same with Sauron. Well, originally, this is what he looked like. Uh-huh. So the, now what, the one yeah. you've seen now, the one you're used to, is actually the wrong one. And the first original one was this guy. Mm-hmm. It, it's the, <laughs> Davis doing uh, Imagine Garrett. History, how it would be better. That's right. War Machine got darker, but strangely less black. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> Terrence Howard. Uh, Terrence Howard Terrence was, so much was a better roadie. Yeah. He, was, okay. he was far better. Should have paid him more. Better. Marvel should have paid him more. Yeah. Um. <laughs> hey, I, I I know you got a few more to go. I got to get ready for Cobra Cast. So, love you, F and T. Happy New Year to everybody out there. Um. I hope you go get as drunk as hell if if that's what you're into. I'll just be playing a Fortnite. So that's all I'll be doing. <laughs> so, um. But I appreciate all of you and. uh Hail, Hail Jeremy. Go watch Cobra Cast. Bye, Jeremy. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, Jeremy. Bye, Jeremy. Bye, Jeremy. War Eagle. War Eagle. Bye. All right. We got uh, two more, but uh, since Odin decided to grace us with his presence at the end of the fucking show, <laughs> do you have your top five? Better late than never. Uh, so I was very confused because I saw some people doing top five movies, but then others like doing top five like culture moments. 
It could be top five, whatever. Whatever That's, you want. Whatever you want. My, my what top I movies said, are... always default to what I say in the tweet, okay. which is top five, whatever. Just fucking make a list. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so for, for me, I, I still haven't made the order complete yet, but mm. Iron Claw right now is up there for one of my favorite films of the year. The Holdovers, the film I just recently watched with Paul Giamatti, also fantastic. Tetris, which unfortunately is only available on Apple TV, but it's a very, very good film. Godzilla Minus One is also up there in my top five, and I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what's going to make it into the other spots, but I have also Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 up there, John Wick Chapter 4, uh, Nefarious, The Covenant, Sound of Freedom, amongst others. That was your top? Those are my tops. You have your bottom? Oh, I completely agree. I, I was able to catch a little bit of it earlier with Shad uh, uh, with uh, Barbie being the worst. Oh, thank you. By it wasn't for worst. you. It, was, uh, <laughs> it wasn't paid for anyone, it seems. Um, but I liked it. Barbie was awful. Idiot Jones was awful. Ghosted, a film also on Apple TV, was, was garbage. The Flash, Marvel's Wish, Renfield, Quantumania, pretty much anything from the DC. Uh, as far as like the biggest cultural losses, though, Disney, $1.5 billion in financial losses from this past year is atrocious and i cannot wait to find out what the actual losses are when they release that information oh, i am waiting to hear what the losses are from the strike yeah which we have not heard we've heard like local uh, economic losses but we haven't heard losses from the companies and right now do you think we ever will no no yeah. they'll, they'll hide it all because a, a really healthy industry needs to hide their numbers trick people and play a shell game uh, because the only prop, but th there was multiple articles just in the last uh, forty eight hours. Uh, Netflix won the streaming wars because they're the only ones that made fucking money off of streaming. <laughs> they're the only yep. company. So we did all this for nothing. That mm -hmm. consistently, and and it's the banks have come out and said, uh, yeah, streaming will never, and I repeat, never be as lucrative as broadcast television, like ever. They and they wow. know it. So now it's time to contract good luck and you know where ads like do pretty fucking well youtube <laughs> people are used to them <laughs> or they block them whatever whatever you want to do that's fine with me i don't care uh aaron c for 49.99 <laughs> hello friday night tights this is the money i would have spent on beer in a few days instead i'll let fnt take it i'll be in rehab voluntarily good on wow. uh, on the first, my beautiful boys and my wife deserve the best mm. husband and father, and that's Aww. what they'll get. Love, love you. All. Hell yeah. Big good good job, shout man. out to Aaron. Good job. Funny story, Aaron. Ten years ago today, I was kicked out of my house <laughs> and sent, sent to sober living environment. I was. Uh, well, no, it was a few days ago. And uh, not today. Because at 10 years ago, two days was my sober date. So on the 27th, it's been 10 years and two days. 10 years and two days. Got my ass kicked out of the house, went to a sober living environment. And we're coming up on, strangely enough, the 10th anniversary of this channel. Of this channel. Wow. Janu it's the day I know it's the day after January 6th. I know people are a little hungover from their January 6th celebrations, but. Uh, <laughs> we all yeah. have a January 6th. We all have our own personal January 6th. Mm hmm. Yes, uh, Buster Nut Smash for fifty dollars will be the last one tonight. Boot book title. Why did I say boot? Boot. What are you talking about? The X-ray girl. Thank you. What a boot it. You a became boot. Canadian for a second. Uh, yeah. A boot. Book title. Neurotic. Why it's okay to eat pineapple on pizza. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> You're good enough, and you're smart enough, and doggone it, people like you. Remember Stuart Smalley? Too bad he turned out to be a shitty oh, yeah. politician. But, uh, mm. ah, yeah. Uh, hey, it's been a fun show. Uh, we're going to have to have Echo Chamberlain back because he's awesome. Thank you for coming oh, on. Thank uh, you. No, it's been great. My, my debut. My longest stream I think I've ever done. Oh, wow. There you go. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. You should, you should hop on and eat sometime. But yeah, yeah Mahler will see that as a challenge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mahler takes notes. <laughs> uh, so let's go around the horn here, and we'll start out with. I'm going to start with Shad. Thanks for sending me a big stack of beautiful, beautiful looking books. Look, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, hang on, hang on. Very nice. Very look nice. Look at the interiors here. 
Like Does it eggs. smell good? Oh, I love smell it. Smell. Smell it. Smell it. it smells fucking wonderful. It's, mm. It smells like uh, there's. It's the second best smell in the world. Leather bound books. It's, it's the skin of the emus, I think. The front of them is far more complex than I was expecting. I was I was thinking it'd be um, sort of like Brandon Sanderson's ones, where it's just more of a symbol. I didn't mm -hmm. think you'd do the whole picture on it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it actually costs a lot more putting uh, that yeah. that graphic on on the front cover like that, but it looked too. Looks awesome. great though. Yeah, yeah. It looks oh, fucking. So happy. No, these things are brilliant. They're absolutely brilliant. Well done, sir. So thanks. What do you got uh, coming up, Shad? Well, I mean, we're working on uh, Shadow of the Conqueror Volume 2, and so we hope to launch that, uh, I don't know when, but we'll get, we're working on it, so that'll be good. And other than that, just, you know, spend time with the family. It's been the Christmas kind of short break that I have. New Year's is coming up, and um, my son is having a birthday in January, and we're just going to be watching boy movies, you know? Yeah. We're going to watch Aliens for yes. the first time with him. And it's going like, to be out in 4K. Oh, it's going to be out in 4K, if not... Ooh, not already it? yeah it's coming out Ooh. in 4k steel box <laughs> yes Ooh. all the james cameron movies are coming out in 4k uh but some controversy over the the transfers they're saying it's too clean uh you know we'll see but uh is it yeah. ai upscaled so i was yeah. seeing a lot of that stuff no, and it the, looks really bad all the upscaling is going to be ai and it's it's going to take time for it to get worked out oh. they, they, like if they're going to do that they, there's the technology needs to progress because the upscaling can work great if you do like an individual picture and you actually know how to get good results. If it's just going to be automated frame by frame. Mm. Yeah. I was seeing issues where it would it's taking like the bokeh that out of focus in the background and kind of making everything in focus and it's just yeah. messing yeah. with the... It's not a silver bullet. Everyone like... Yeah. Um, it actually it's a tool. Requires, it's, it's a exactly, tool. Yeah, exactly. exactly it. Exactly. Aliens right. has the scene of, of any film where it has a cutout scene. My favorite cutout scene is when they put those automated robot droids out in the corridor and mm -hmm. they're, they're blasting away the aliens. You see the aliens for make half a second and it just adds to that sense of claustrophobia and, and tension yeah. so much. If there's any scene that belonged in a film, it was that scene. Yep. I agree. I 100% agree. I agree. And I, got, I, got, I have Alien on 4K. I haven't watched it yet. I just got it. So... Uh, well, have fun with your son. Uh, oh, you know, my youngest, you know how I told you, like, he's, like, getting crazy into Batman? So everything that he, like, asked for is now bat something. If he wants a drink, he wants a bat drink. That's my dude. That way she wants a bat drink. That way she's like, awesome. oh, and so the other day, right, he farted, and he turned around and goes, Bat fart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're in now. I'm so proud, man. And like, he's just fat man obsessed. And yeah. like I said, he just chucked on the Dark Knight randomly. <laughs> and it's like, that's my boy. That's a good movie. <laughs> that's good. Uh, Quarter Black, what do you got coming up? Uh, we are working on a video. I'm working on a small part of it. Perry's making it. Top five uh, woke disasters. So look out for that. And on Sunday, we got Forbidden Frontier returning after the holiday break. Yeah. And that's it. Sunday fun. So far. Yeah, maybe without Adam Krigler being replaced by Ian yeah. Crosslin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Adam. Man. That's a New Year's Eve treat, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's cool. it. It's been a great year. It's been a really fun year. Love, Like I said, when we started the, the stream, great seeing everybody in the chat at all the meetups. And uh, that's my favorite part of doing this is mm -hmm. everybody and, and talking to them and hearing their stories. And then uh, watching Hollywood destroy itself is pretty entertaining as well. I'm oh, on the great. Shad train. Let's see it all go down. Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't feel bad about it at all. They yep. got themselves into it. And then after, we can see everything that grows out of that, out I've, of that fertile I've ground. That's it. opportunity exactly is what I'm, that is. Mm -hmm. yes. That's what I see. And I can't wait to see the new stuff that people are going yes. to make that gives opportunities to creative people. Uh, Ripperverse is taking off, and that's exactly the type of stuff I want to see. It's like independence rising, making the stuff that will replace the old crap, you know, corrupt. And it's Hollywood. happening in a lot of spheres, just out, you know, yeah. not just YouTube and comics, a lot of other places. Uh, super Late Odin. What's up? You can find me at OMB Reviews on YouTube, Odyssey, Rumble. Uh, I indeed was very late. Thank you all again for, for putting up with me as always. Uh, I had uh, sick sick kids around the house, so that just kind of delayed things a, a little bit. But looking forward to the new year, absolutely. And 
yeah, cannot wait to see what 2024 holds for all of us. <laughs> Won't be as much as 2023, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Comics Division. Uh, well, uh, you can obviously find me on my channel, and I will be on Peter Smitty's channel uh, tonight at 8 p.m. Central. Uh, so come check that out. Get the opportunity. Uh, uh, also, yeah. Happy New Year's, everybody. Panelist and the chat, hope you guys had a wonderful year, and I hope you have a very wonderful New Year as well. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Hey. Thank you. Uh, Exodus Girl. Ooh, uh, you can follow follow me on my channel, X Ray Girl. I play. I will be playing games like Genshin Impact, uh, Red Dead Redemption Two, uh, and on New Year's Day, I'm going to be playing Dead Space Remake again, which I'm nervous about. Um, but uh, yes, thank you everyone for an awesome year. I really feel like actually like so happy to be here and hang out with you guys every week. And this is a great job, fun. I get to hang out with friends and watch good movies. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> well, old, the old movies that are good. Old movies. But at least when you have to watch the bad ones, you watch them together. Get yeah. The on them together. We suffer together. Makes the homework bearable. Yeah. It does. <laughs> I love homework. <laughs> okay. That was a very Asian thing to say. I don't know what she's great. talking about. I love <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, it's hard for me to have a straight face when I was telling my kid, you got to do your homework. Out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same, Gary. Like, I hated homework in high school. And, like, year 12 in Australia, it's supposed to, like, it's so serious. Everyone is saying you get, you get so much homework and it's so important because your final score it determines if you can get into university and all that stuff. I didn't do a single scrap of homework all year 12. <laughs> wow. Like, stuff. No, I I, yeah, I I didn't really do any. But uh, the, the thing you have to embrace is being a, a you know when you're a parent is being a complete hypocrite, and I'm fine with it. So. <laughs> yeah, and look, <laughs> this is not me saying. Imagine. Yeah, I'm not trying to promote you know people not pursuing academic study or anything like that. No, work hard, learn, get educated. You don't necessarily need to do that through university. Education mm -hmm. can be free in so True. many places. Um, uh, and so, trust me, I work my ass off to learn skills, yeah. get better, to be able to you know stuff. I just really hated high school and, yeah. and yeah. hated homework. Yeah. University is a, a skill that you can learn how to be organized, do tests, and then memory dumps after. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All of education. What you really need is curiosity. That's, yeah. mm -hmm. it's, it suited me well in Doctor Who when he says, I got snowmanned. I'm like, that, that, that's, that sounds like another double meaning. I never look up that. That's, <laughs> that's not something you want to know. <laughs> now they're all wow. gonna. <laughs> is it worse or is it better or worse than blue waffle yeah or um, snowball snowballing <laughs> um, it, it's better than blue waffle um well it depends it depends how are we defining better i don't know well speaking of blue waffle chrissy what do you got coming up <laughs> yes uh we're doing a uh <laughs> I'm gonna get that checked out. By the way, don't show me the <laughs> pictures. Probably good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm gonna. We're gonna do a New Year's Eve simp cast. I think at 2 p.m. Eastern on Sunday. Uh, so tune in for that. I think we're gonna ring in the New Year for I don't know Ethiopia or whatever the fuck country <laughs> celebrates it then. Ga Ghana and or then, Guyana. <laughs> yeah. 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 Ghana Ria. Uh, and then I'll be <laughs> I'll be in San Diego next weekend. Um, January 5th and 6th, I'll be at the San Diego mic drop. Uh, and then I'll be in Dallas January 25th at Hyenas. Um, and then I'll be in Jersey February 24th at TIFFs in Morris Plains. And then they won't let me fly anymore because they don't want me to uh, give birth on the plane. <laughs> so uh, that's that. That's that. I'll see you in Dallas. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be yeah. fun. Uh, it will be fun. Uh, and if you're going to see Chrissy in San Diego, uh, if you go to that part of the uh, town earlier, just across the freeway is Southern California Comics. That's where you should go. See my friend Jamie. Ooh. Go to Southern California Comics and then go see Chrissy in, at night. Be good. So, Chrissy, have you gotten any uh, pregnancy superpowers uh, for any of those manifested? Back my wife pain? got a super, super <laughs> smell. <laughs> super smell? Super um, sense of super smell. Boobs. She could smell things that, mm -hmm. like, 
I was it like the radar. Off, she can track. Yeah, it, it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> she actually got a superpower while she was pregnant. It was crazy. I would say, yeah, tripping and falling. I've gotten really tripping. good at. <laughs> yeah. This is called being clumsy. Yeah, no, it's called being pregnant. I, yeah, There's, can't, I can't, you can't see, see your feet, you know. I can't wear like ninety eight percent of my shoes because they were all heels. Oh well, yep. that's safe. Oh. You know, Ryan says the same thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, in public, Disparu, what do you got coming up? Uh, yeah, Disparu on YouTube. Uh, thanks for having me on all month. All month, it's been uh, a blast. Thanks uh, for ex being except on. for what you made me watch. Like, I was never going to see Aquaman I'm not 2. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't need that in my life. Um, well, yeah, it's been a blast uh, talking about all the shows that have been on this month, especially Doctor Who. It is like, uh, there's not many other places that would have actually have watched it and known all the previous stuff. So it's, uh, it, it is very, it's, oh, what, what's the word? Gay. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't yes. where I was going, but it is that as well. Hey, the the latest Super one, I, I did wonder, I, I kind of wasn't expecting it to be, to be good. I was not expecting like the first 10 minutes just to be as blatant as it was. I, if there's one thing Davies can do, it, he's always can impress me in new and original ways <laughs> that I didn't see coming a mile off. So, yeah, um, I, yeah. I was under the false impression that they would try a little harder on that one. And they did. Disparu, and it was in all horrible. the wrong ways. It was fucking yeah. horrible. I mean, Gatwa did it. He did tell us. I just wasn't expecting it to be like him to be so on the nose and just blatant about it all. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's like he he was so much over the top. I didn't even really think about the companion because he just overshadowed her in every way, and she just mm -hmm. kind of existed for a bit. It was weird. It doesn't help that she's more masculine than he is, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, got me. There's three different people in that episode who watch the TARDIS vanish, and they're just like, oh, okay. You know, I see blue boxes disappear in the middle of the street all the time. It's like everyone had heard about the Doctor and was just like, oh, yeah, we all know that who the Doctor There's is by now. East Enders actress at the end. Like, none of nobody in America is going to fucking know. And I guess she's I married she to was. Brian May or something like that. And, oh. uh,. I mean, well, I've seen awesome, all the right? articles where it's like, what is it about her character? Is she a Time Lord? It's like, no, it's just badly written, and they didn't yeah. write in that she should be shocked and surprised that a box mm. had vanished in front of her eyes. But they all think she's a secret character coming back, and, oh, she's probably the master or whatever. <laughs> like, all the articles She's probably the master. Oh she's probably the fucking <clears throat> master. It's, a, it's an old Missy. That's what it is. Uh, thanks no, for I'm being pretty on. sure the drag queen's going to be the master in this they, one. Oh, probably. Uh, and uh, finally, our special guest tonight, Echo Chamberlain. Thanks for coming on for the first time. We'll have oh, you back. It's been, uh, I'm so, so uh, happy to have been put into the mix. So thanks, everyone. Um, good to hang out with all you fine folk. Uh, come, uh, the community, come check out my Echo Chamberlain YouTube channel. I think you're going to love the stuff. I got uh, a 50 Hollywood, Hollywood's 50 worst moments of 2023. I think really you good. Like that. Good video. And uh, the last one is an AI Walt Disney. Uh, imagining his company uh, in the year 2023. So if you like things a bit meta, you might like that too. Mm, uh, you got there's my also attention. got the, the, uh, the Echo Chamberlain live stream. We've got some cool folks like um, Dispot of Antrim and Greg Owen and Vex Electronica pop up. So it's a pretty cool hang. So be on the lookout for that too. And, you know, just to, just to back up Echo Chamberlain, look, look, even though he is a New Zealander, he's all right. You guys, you can yeah, ignore that. But, <laughs> I mean, I, I've been trying to, like, suppress my New Zealand bigotry for the whole street. <laughs> how, do you, how do you think I feel? It's <laughs> <laughs> in more emus. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's funny, though, because a lot of American billionaires are buying up property in New Zealand because they, if they think there's going to be an apocalypse, then we'll be the good bolt hole. So we're becoming like the world's panic room now. Yeah. So, yeah. So, oh, yeah. It's totally safe to go to the island with that huge fucking volcano. I mean, it's completely safe. <laughs> and what, why are so many of you guys moving over here and take, like, here? It's. Well, they're improving. Yeah. It's not like there's nothing worth nuking. Yeah. <laughs> All you guys <laughs> sound guy. weird, okay? Uh, New Zealand used to have those uh, what the, the salt, salt pillars. Right. There, there salt was some. Pillars. It was like one of the wonders oh, of the okay. world, and it was like uh, it was a geographic salt. It was like shells. Oh yeah, the, um, yeah, yeah. The, that the, blew the pink, up and uh, the pink something, and there was like the pink. huge, uh, yeah. Yeah, there pink were terraces. Big, That's right. Yeah, the pink terraces, and there were a big, a big uh, tourist attraction until the, the volcano mm -hmm. blew up and blew the shit out of them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, totally great place to build a bunker. Same with uh, Hawaii. That's a yeah. great place to build a bunker. Zuckerberg's doing that. Yeah, yeah he's got his uh, underground thing. I don't know. Down. Every apocalypse movie has Hawaii being consumed by volcanoes, so I'm not sure Hawaii is a good. Uh, yeah, maybe though, like, it's we don't. If you're going to have a Hawaii-based uh, post-apocalyptic bunker, then maybe don't put the like the the layout and the location on the internet. On the internet, <laughs> I don't know where it is. <laughs> the one well, thing you don't I mean, want to do, it's like, a the distraction. Vo the volcano going off will probably be put out by the thousand-foot tsunami. So, I mean, it's okay. it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It'll be diffused by that. All right. Uh, thanks for coming on, Echo. Uh, and most of all, thank you guys in the fellowship. Uh, thank you for being here and supporting us all year. Thanks to the Modrotics. It was great meeting so many of you across internationally. By the way, mm -hmm. the UK meetup was insane. But every meetup was insane. The fact that you people, you people, I just said you people. You people. Yeah. <laughs> what, do you mean, you people? what do you mean? You people. What do you mean? Come and see us people? for some reason. So just a bunch of, I mean, quite frankly, uh, a bunch of blithering idiots with our microphones retards. in our bedrooms. Yeah, yeah complete retards. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. uh, is uh, I I don't know why uh, I do, I don't feel uh, worthy of it, but uh, I'm eternally grateful. This is the best gig in the world. And yes, I said it in. Uh, a couple of videos ago, um, you know, uh, the message does separate, does divide. Good stories bring people together, and it turns out like really bad ones do too. And uh, we've made <laughs> we've made the best out of a horrible situation, and now we've turned it around and turned it into just abject mockery, which I think is bit, like this has been Hollywood's funniest year uh, mm -hmm. without producing a single good comedy. Yeah. Uh, it's all been unintentional and it's been great and it's because of you guys. So hang in there. You know, things are going to get better. I doubt they're going to get better for Hollywood, but it's not like we haven't tried to warn them for six years. Uh, mm -hmm. So have a good time. Uh, have fun. And I hope you have a great new year. And uh, maybe as they'll come back from the dead. Maybe not. We'll have to find out. Christmas miracle. Maybe. 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 Christmas so. is until January 6th, 12 days of Christmas. Don't, don't have to forget. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget hey. the January 6th sales. January 6th. Uh, you know, we, some King of these, Cake. King has, Cake starts January has somebody 6th. Done, Flip your Jan 6 tree. Has somebody done the 12 days of January 6th yet? They really need to do that. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Chrissy, no. there you funny. go. There's your idea. Do, there you the, go. do the 12 days of January 6th. Oh. Uh, uh, oh, Hayden has just dropped Hayden. the chat. Hayden. Hayden. Uh, Fifty dollars is giant meteor. Twenty twenty four. No, I don't want to no. die. No. <laughs> no, actually, that's twenty twenty nine when it's going to skirt our atmosphere. So uh, that one is coming. Yeah, watch out for that one. That that's one's, no, uh, life's too good, man. Afraid, man. Stop the black pill. We're all, yeah. a lot of things that are great. All right, you guys go outside. Your families, uh, tons of things that are really great. Don't get doom and gloom. That's my whole message yeah. now. It's just like, even though the, the media and everybody outside want to try to make you feel like it's the worst That's time in history, it is not. That's what they want you to feel. That's what they no, want exactly. you to feel. They're full of fucking shit. They're liars. Uh, go to each other. Go to, go to each other to find authenticity and the truth, and uh, you, we'll be okay. We'll be fine. I know you're joking, Hayden, though. We know you're joking. We love Hayden. It's my favorite meme. We like under him. every disaster on Twitter, someone just put post the meteor. <laughs> it's like I maybe I judge you too harshly. <laughs> uh, Smod, the sweet meteor of death. That's what everybody's uh, looking for. Is yeah. Oh. So uh, take care, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.
the song felt its worth and thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious world Let's go. 